Good morning everyone. We're here Va Vibes, one more live streaming of Va Vibes in partnership with the TNTV. We are live from Tahiti. We are in Pire. In my side here I have Scott Miller and I'm Andres Souza, Black Dog Peddler. We're gonna be doing the comments in English and Portuguese for the Vodafone Race Channel. Scott Good morning. Welcome, welcome again to the channel. Good morning. Welcome. One more transmission, buddy. Yeah, are one more transmission. This one? Yeah, this is going to be a great race today. We are, uh, as Andre said, we're here in Pire, which is a suburb of Papayete here in Tahiti, French Polynesia. We are excited to be part of this uh, Vodafone race. We have uh, juniors, we have women, and then of course the open men. Uh, we have two different courses today that we're going to be reporting on. All right, and we already have some follows from Brazil here following us. Uh, people still join the channel. Uh, Scott, I'm gonna uh, say something Portuguese for people in Brazil. Bom dia. Bom dia. <laughs> Bom dia. Bom dia. <laughs> Bom dia, pessoal. Aqui André Souza, Black Belt Peddler, uh, with Scott Miller. Uh, nós estamos aqui para fazer a transmissão da Vodafone Race Channel, uh, um evento maravilhoso aqui co co colocado pelo Patrick. O, quem roda a roda phone aqui é, no Tahiti. Estamos diretamente aqui do Tahiti. É uma, é uma transmissão em parceria com a TV Tahitiana, com a TNTV. Uh, e agora nós vamos estar cobrindo todas as divisões aqui: o feminino, júnior, masculino e open. Uh, está, uh, vai começar agora a prova do feminino. E vamos estar fazendo comentário em inglês e português. Mas. De, uh, Sintam-se à vontade aí para fazer o comentário uh, no chat aí. Scott, we are back in the race. Yep, they're getting ready. The flags are up. They're announcing the start. It's a very, very windy start. Ordinarily, the course is quite calm in the morning, but we've got a northeasterly wind. It's kicking in at about 16 or 17 knots solid. Uh, these paddlers are having a hard time keeping their boats straight on the line here. So once they get going, I'm sure they'll be relieved to leave the shore. It's quite quite a beautiful day here, sunny, cloudless. We're not expecting very much rain on the course today, but it is going to be quite windy. It's going to be a big downwind push once they clear the reef. So as we're heading out of the bay here in Pire, you'll see them make a left turn around the reef. They'll be heading out, and we're looking for a start any moment now. And this remember, guys, that this is a partnership with the Tahitian TV, so we have the feed for the channel. That's why you see the the commentators in uh, speaking in Tahitian French, and we are talking over the image here. It's a kindly partnership with the Tahitian TV, the TN, uh, TNTV. We're really thankful to TNTV. We're also thankful to, to Vodafone for their support today. When you see us later, you'll see we got some sweet threads from Vodafone. So thank you. It's their 10th anniversary. It's also the fourth anniversary of this race. So it's the first time women are allowed to compete in this race. So we're looking at a historic race today. Yeah, it's a historic race, uh, uh, Scott. As it, uh, I'm mentioning that for the first time in this race, we're going to have a team from South America competing him in the Yes, 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 yes. Six Brazilians, four Chileans. We are going to be seeing there are a bunch of nice guys. They bought out the entire Viper store yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's a paddle left on the island. <laughs> yeah. yeah, guys, back in Portuguese here. Uh, um momento histórico aí para a canoagem brasileira. Uh, eu estava falando aqui com o Scott que é a primeira vez que um time sul-americano vai estar tá fazendo parte e competindo dessa prova aqui. Uh, o pessoal, o time brasileiro que veio aí competir na De Aito, eles ficaram por aqui, o Fábio, o Léo, mais uma galera aí, são cinco brasileiros e quatro chilenos. Eles vão estar tá competindo na, com o barco famoso, a famosa Shelly, a V6 Matarrina Amarela da Shelva A. Uh, vai ser um momento histórico para a canalagem brasileira. Espero que todos estejam acompanhando aí e aproveitando uh, essa energia vinda aqui diretamente do Thaís. Uh, Scott, eu estava falando com meus amigos no Brasil que é um momento histórico para ter esses cinco brasileiros e quatro caras do Chile. Vai ser um time sul-americano, a primeira equipe sul-americana e eles vão usar o Shelly, a famosa V6 Matarina da Shelva. É realmente incrível. Eles estão fazendo um trabalho incrível. Nós vimos eles indo para o caminho. Os caminhos estão esperando. 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 
um, they're very excited to be here. They're um, they're super stoked. Of course, uh, Roberto is part of that crew. Um, Fabio Velango. We have a bunch of other um, fantastic paddlers. Um, it's it's a perfect opening moment for South America here on the world stage of Vara. Uh, yeah, you know, like uh, uh, having the chat here. We have Claudia Vidal, Claudia, Leo Felipe. Marcelo Amaral, Carajo Mona, Portugal. We have people from Portugal. Europe, Europe is looking at us right now. Oh boy, yeah. fantastic. It's the middle of the night there. <laughs> right. But people in love with the Vaha, man. Who loves Vaha? Why not? Wanna, wanna, wanna be in this environment, sharing this energy all the time. Hey, bom dia, Claudia. Claudia paddles with you in Florida, right? She does, she does. She also paddles down in Miami, so like she's a, she's a great paddler. We're happy to have her as part of our team. Yeah, Claudia Vidal, Claudia Vidal, famous paddler from Rio de Janeiro, now living in my in, in Florida. And paddling like a, for a long time, like a V1 mm. and OC1. Mm -hmm. I think she did Woods as well. Yep. Nationals, a lot of nationals in, in Brazil. Claudia, a big shout out for you. Minha amiga Claudia Vidal aí, um abraço para você. Grande remadora brasileira aí do Rio de Janeiro, vivendo agora na Flórida. Uh, rema aqui com meu, o com meu parceiro de comentários, o Scott Miller. Uh, Scott, I was telling here that paddles, uh, Claudia paddles with you and them, right? That's right. So we're we're pleased to have her. We're part, uh, our team is Aito Vaa. We're located up in Hollywood, Florida. But there are many great clubs there in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. We've got, of course, Lana Kilaiki who uh, helped us out of a bind moving a boat today. So we're very excited that they were there on hand to help us out. Also, we have uh, Kana Louie down in uh, the Florida paddling hui. We've got a lot of great clubs in Florida. We've got a lot of great clubs up and down the east coast of, of North America. But, you know, that's it's not it's not just American sport. It's a world sport. As we look here, we've got 59 boats on the line. And there they go. There they go. The steers people are, or Peperu are running for their boats. They're leaping in. Once they once they engage, these boats are going 59 boats off the line. Check them out. The yellow the yellow canoe is got who is using the shell for, huh? We've uh, got a we've got uh, a quick start. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very quick start. That's our that's your team from South America. Team South America. Yeah, and we have a little accident in the, in the, the start of the race. Uh, some collisions here of canoes uh, got stuck. You can see they're racing for the the opening of the pass. They're going to be heading out into the open ocean waters in a second. That's when the true downwind starts. But as you can see, look at the spray coming off these boats. 59 canoes leaving the beach. Utterly fantastic. Look at the image right now. Scott, Scott, tell me a little bit. The wind, like a... It's, it's, it's picking up really crazy right now. We, we, we wasn't like facing this wind. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday it was actually flat out here, comparatively speaking. The, now we've got a, a wind that's sort of shifted around out of the northeast. It's picked up. It's about 17. It's gusting up to about 20. And um, you're seeing you're seeing some big waves outside the reef. Once the once the boats get out there, they're going to be. Uh, you can see them starting to hit the ocean swell right now. It's. Um, this is the moment where if you're if you're going to make a move to head out head out the pack and and lead the lead the race this is where you're doing it you want to get out of the sort of carnage and the boil in the background and uh, make your way to the front of this pack make a clean turn outside you'll see uh, a divergence of the courses the juniors and the women are going to stick closer to the reef they're going to be following the reef down around to the southeast of the island around the airport down into the big cut southeast of the airport or southwest of the airport rather and then the the men are going to be heading directly west over to Morea. and it's important to as you said like to mention to be ahead of the pack and they start so you avoid collisions you avoid like you you create your you build your own line right exactly um part part of the issue is just getting clear of other boats we have so many boats on this line and everybody's aiming for the same point. You, you kind of have to expect the boats are going to bang a little bit. Um, I will say that, that uh, here in, in French Polynesia, people are pretty respectful, generally speaking, and they're not going to be uh, purposefully banging into one another, but, but they're going to make their move for, for the place that they want to be. So there's some aggressive paddling going on out there right now. Yeah, it's in inevitable, right? It's inevitable. It's, the wind is really strong right now. Yeah. I wonder how it would be, uh, how it's 
going to be this race uh, in the open ocean, like uh, open water, when you have those big swells. The, remember that the course for the women's is different from the men's. Uh, the women's are going to do a solo race, and men's are going to be racing nine men, right? Yes, that's right. So basically, the women are, are going iron for 32 kilometers this morning. Uh, the men have a change out. Um, there are specified change out zones uh, that they um, are able to take advantage of. It's a 50 kilometer race for the men today. Um, they'll be, as I said, heading over to the adjacent island Morea, beautiful island, and um, they'll make a turn there. They'll be heading back um, sort of south-southeast, back across to the same cut that the women will have gone through a little bit earlier as they're making their, their circuit. And what we see right now, the uh, shell canoe, shell? and what do you have on the side is ADT. Yeah, I believe it's ADT. ADT yep. and Shell already on the lead. And these are two of the premier teams here in Tahiti. Uh, I'm I'm telling you right now, do not discount paddling connection. This is a team that um, is also exceptional. This is a team that uh, uh, has come come back uh, from uh, Hoolies in the middle of, of the course and, and you know maintained like a second place position on the podium. So it's it's really not a fait accompli that uh, that Shell is going to be top of the podium. There are a lot of great teams out here, but team I mean, Air Tahiti too. Yeah, Team Air Tahiti is is out there. You've got Pire, which is uh, Stevie Boy's club. They, you've got. Um, Mataya Vaha coming out of Mataya, that's the George Constance Club. You've got a, a, a lot of great things. And we have on the screen right now uh, the president of the Polynesia, right? Yeah. French Polynesia. French Polynesia president here. It's a pleasure to meet him. Uh, yeah. We're going to we try to bring him here to maybe an interview. Sounds Let great. Um, I, met, I had an opportunity to meet him on Andreatea earlier in the week. and. Um, He's a, he's a graduate from a college in Florida, so... Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which college? Uh, in Florida uh, Institute of Technology in Orlando. He, he, oh. he attended there. He's a, he's a very nice fellow. It's, uh, it was an honor to meet him and talk about how much we love uh, French Polynesia. That's funny. That's interesting, right? Yeah. Two guys from Florida do a live stream <laughs> and speaking in uh, comments in English and, and Portuguese. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no. That, that's nice, that's nice. Yeah, we are also like, uh, before the race start, we talk to the Minister of Sports here from Tahiti. Uh, we're going to try to bring all those guys here. Uh, it sounds important, is important to not only the Fa culture, but the Tahitian culture as well, right? Exactly. That, that, that brings the Fa, brings this energy, this good vibe that we're feeling here, like for one week already, right? Well, listen. Yeah, E2, Vodafone now. Yeah, it, and the welcome that we've received here is um, not atypical of what we found last year. The, we were talking to the, the Minister of Sport, and we said, you know, as amazing as, as Tahiti and French Polynesia are, the, the heart of the, the sport is really the people and the welcome that we have obtained from the people, people here. I mean, you can't, you can't compare it to anything. It's so remarkable. Scott, what we have here on the screen, this canoe is Shelly, the, 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 yes. the Shelva team, they have two canoes, I think this is the one that they were, they were battling before, if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to say something wrong, but I, I think it would be the Brazilian team. Let's take a look here and see the number on the canoe. All right. Both both canoes, uh, the shell canoe and the and the Brazilian canoe look very similar. So we're gonna we just need to make sure of the number here. All right. Oh, well, we have more people from from Florida here. That's actually Florida shell right there. Uh, That's shell. That's Shell. So yep. That's Shell leading the, the back. So and this Shell boat, we have the two first place of the Aito. Yes. Breeze and Chow. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is that? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they train. They train hard in, in single boats to go to go fast in a in a team boat. That's really the the best thing you can say about it. They, but what you see right here, they're they're doing what they call the the huti, the huti pare. They're they're going long. They've got this following wind. They're allowing the swells to sort of carry them along. It's a long race for them. It's a 50 kilometer race. So you see there. Now they've got to push up the waves behind them. They're actually surfing. They're able to dip out a little bit. They're going to use the, the power of the waves to propel them all the way down this course yeah, over to Marea. They're already taking advantage of the swell. Yep. Oh, no, not paddling, just, just gliding and surfing. Yep. 
What's the big difference uh, uh, for a, be a team to be successful in this type of race? Is know to surf, save energy in those bumps. You know, use your energy in a smart way, right? You absolutely have to do it because the, what's going to happen once they get to Morea, they're going to be turning around and they're going to be facing into the wind, and then it's a totally different ball game. It's a, it's a. <laughs> It's a big push that they're going to be going against today as they go upwind, so they really are going to have to uh, uh, conserve as much energy as they can coming down downstream. There goes Va'a News right there. And if I'm not mistaken, this is Pire, and that's Stevie. You'll see Stevie in this boat somewhere. No, Steve, Steve, I talked to Steve uh, two days ago, and Steve, Steve is not paddling. Oh, he's not paddling today. No, he's doing, actually, he told me that he's doing a six-man big downwind from Morea to Bora Bora or no? Something like that. No, Bora Bora to Hayatea. Oh, Bora Bora to Hayatea. That's a, that's a quite a course too. That's a 31 kilometer downwind that he's talking about. And you can see right there, there's our leaders. You've got EDT coming out to a, a, a bit of an edge right now over Shell. Yeah, we have the, the Shell, Shell team and EDT battling uh, head to head for the, the, the beginning of the race. Yep. And, and on the image here we have the uh, Olivier and with the red shirt it's Patrick Moves is the man to put this race together. Exactly. He owns Vodafone here in the French Polynesia. Uh, he's a, uh, a young talent in promoting race. He, and he was, I was talking to Patrick uh, early this week and he said, Andre, my intent is to make the Vodafone race the number one race for six men in the world. Well, he certainly got a good start of it. Four, four years in a row, this is a pretty amazing race. And uh, especially because it's heading island to island, it's open ocean racing, uh, it's inside racing, you've got downwind, you've got upwind, you've got all conditions. It's, it's going to be a technical race for all of our paddlers. Ah, and I have comments from people here. We have Fabio Dascola, Fabio, my brother from Brazil. Uh, we have Marcelo Amaral. He says that uh, the VA is growing really fast in Portugal too. And we have my friend, from hey. our friend from Paulo, Paulo Emilio, yeah, coach, a, a nice, co a, a amazing coach. Uh, he coaches for Puakea, yep. and he runs the my club in in in. Florida, the Miami, paddling hui. Paddling hui. Paolo is here like telling how um, how relaxed they stay and saving energy in in those bumps. Pa Paolo is a uh, it's a badass uh, surfer. Yep. Uh, and uh, an amazing coach. Yeah, he Paolo, knows how to find a bump. It's nice to have you here during this comment. Uh, we're gonna be doing uh, some some great things in Florida together. Oh, and here I cannot forget Monica, Monica Diaz de Souza, the owner of ISC, Finite Source Communications Group, a uh, 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 marketing uh, company, also in Florida. Uh, she's commenting here that, uh, go Andre and Scott, amazing commentary. Thank you, Monica. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Now, we're going to be probably jumping back and forth between women's teams. We've got four junior teams out here. Um, We've got three, two from Tahiti, one from Morea, and then Kaluikai from Hawaii. The Hawaiians have, have brought uh, three boats. In the case of their uh, girls' teams, they're going to be racing with the open women because they would only have been racing against themselves otherwise. So, but Kaluikai is in the juniors, and then you'll see two, two boats also with the open women. We've got 27 boats in our senior senior men's category. We've got 11 boats in our veteran 40, and then veteran 50 class. We've got three boats. Yeah, we have, and we have a team from Bora Bora here. It's a strong team. This team from Bora Bora, uh, very strong team. I, I would say that this is like a top five for sure here in Tahiti. Yeah. They're a very good team. Beautiful boats too. These they're all paddling Matahina here. So the Matahina is built for these waters. It's got a lot of glide. Yeah, I was I was checking this earlier on here during uh, when I got here to the event. You only see Matahinas, no other boats in the That's water. Right. It's only Matahinas. It's all only. the teams have Matahinas yep. here. Check so them out. Tell, tell me about like is the surfing, uh, surfing different in this boat? Like uh, the guy nailed this design. Yes, surfing, right? and in fact. 
the Matahina, the original Matahina, the wood strip canoe, is here on the course today uh, with Mataya. They're, um, that's George Kronstadt's crew, and they are paddling that boat here today. So you'll see that boat out there somewhere as well. The original, the, the progenitor of all these boats is out there on the water. Look at these guys surf. Tail up out, out of the water in the air. They're catching some bumps. They're all the way down by the airport right now. You can see uh, behind them these, uh, these fuel tanks. That's down there. You're, you're looking at the uh, airport behind us. In, the, in this in this picture. Vini Va, another, another great team from here. So now, uh, Scott, uh, the route for this year is the same, or uh, they, they change a little bit. I uh, I was talking to Patrick, they, he's also told me that they changed the, the, the yes. route because it was too, uh, too long and some paddlers, like I was complaining that the race was Taking too, too long. long. I, I, I'm not sure if, if Patrick says that, he, I'm sure he has the inside scoop on that. I will say that it's a shorter race for the men at only 50 kilometers today. They are going to be heading across the channel. They are going to, um, they're going to be uh, heading off uh, to the uh, eastern, eastern shore where actually the ferry takes you. They'll make a turn around a buoy there and they'll be coming almost directly back. I wonder like when we're gonna have like an image from from the Brazilians here. People from <laughs> Brazil like already going crazy here. Yeah. They say, hey, I wanna see the Brazilians, I wanna see the Brazilians. We're gonna see them soon. Uh, Fabio Dascola is asking, do we know their average speed? I have to say that um, on waves like this, they're gonna be doing like 14 or 15 kilometers per hour. Yeah, on the bumps, I would say something like that. Absolutely. I would say something like Especially that. Especially these premier teams, you're looking at the the top two teams. You see Shell has slightly overtaken EDT right now. EDT is always a, a top competitor for these races. Uh, that's actually uh, sponsored by the electrical uh, company here in, in, in Papete. Yeah, check them out. Look at that. It's a beautiful surfing. And now we see Team Tahiti. Team at Tahiti. Uh, we know a lot of those paddlers. We know uh, Tane, uh, Tane, right. uh, uh, Coach Matahi, mm -hmm. uh, Coco. He he lives now uh, uh, in Florida. Excellent. We have Ray Ray Hayho and some other paddlers from from Team at Tahiti. Yeah. Another great team. Uh, this team actually is called. He beat Chow, Chow twice, I think, like the, the the past year, two or three times in two legs. Well, that's, that's, that's sort of the thing. You can't discount any of these teams. They are so many fantastic paddlers. All of the all of the excellent paddlers that we saw last week at Aito, you're going to be seeing them right here. Yeah, we have Kyle. Kyle Tadafau is in that in yeah. that boat. I mean, come on, few few better than that guy. Yeah, so we have here Hotu Poroi. Uh, Reho, Heho, Kyle Tanafu, Tane, yeah, the, all those like, I mean, and like a, I don't get tired to say all the like super humble people, super amazing people, all of them, you know. True. But we got really close to the team at Tahiti. Yeah. I uh, got really close to this guy. I was paddling with some some of those guys during the this last week here. Amazing paddlers. Yeah, they really, they really. Again, we'll we'll say it. We'll probably you'll get tired of hearing about it. But uh, oh, it's Hinarora. So it's now not have, EDT. Yeah. Okay, so Air Tahiti's third, Hinarora, and then Shell. So they're they're using an EDT boat. All right, all right, all right. And Scott, uh, tell me how important is in this in this race because we are leaving from Tahiti. We're going to another island called Morea. Yes. And the the Pimpero, the, the the steersman has to have like a an idea of like imaginary line, and he has to believe in that line that he's gonna be faster than that. Because sometimes you see an image that looks that he's leading, but he's not falling like a line hmm. that is gonna benefit his team, right? Well, I mean. Most of these people know these waters, they're familiar with them. If they're coming from islands like Bora Bora or Raiter, they are maybe not as familiar with them, but they certainly are acquainted with uh, paddling out in the ocean. This is uh, really, it's going to be a locals race in, in a lot of regards. Um, it's, it is important to understand the line, 
that you want to take and much like the, the Hawaiian races where uh, teams will take a certain line because they know the, the setup of the currents and the setup of the winds, the same thing is happening here. Yeah, and here we have Fatima Pirozolo from Brazil. Uh, she said, like, I, I'm, I'm cheering for the Brazilians. <laughs> Scott, I'm gonna say something for Portuguese for my fellows in Brazil. Pessoal, então, tá aí o início da prova. Nós já estamos aqui com aproximadamente 20 minutos de prova rolando. Uh, o time da Shell tá na liderança, seguido de perto aí por, por, por dois times. Um deles é o time da Team Erta Hiri, que é um time muito forte, é, que já venceu a Shell uh, acho que duas ou três vezes nesse, nesse último ano. Então pode esperar que essa prova aí vai estar. Tá decidida no final somente, é uma prova emocionante, eles mudaram o, 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 a distância da prova, que ela é uma prova muito longa, ela continua sendo longa, ela sai daqui do Tahiti, da, de Pire, vai para a ilha de Moréa e volta, uma prova maravilhosa aí, um time brasileiro com cinco brasileiros e quatro chilenos, nós estamos esperando, nós estamos é, compartilhando... Uh, essa imagem é uma imagem compartilhada generosamente pelo TNTV uh, e nós estamos fazendo um comentário em português e inglês. Uh, Sintam-se livres aí para mandar mensagem no, nos comentários, para chamar algum atleta favorito aí de vocês. Uh, nós vamos estar aqui uh, transmitindo essa prova por completo. Espalhe aí esse link para a galera do Brasil, porque é um momento histórico. O time brasileiro vai estar remando a canoa da, da Shell. And now back to English, Scott. All right, you're looking at the team from Bora Bora here, Popona Te Oye Mamo. These guys. What's important to realize, I think, in North America, we we sometimes lump everybody in French Polynesia and we just call them Tahitians, but but exactly. each, That's each, really important. each island is its own culture, is its own people, so people from Bora Bora, Bora Borans, people from Tahiti are Tahitians, people from, you know, from Manahi are Manahians, so you, you've got uh, five different archipelagos here in French Polynesia, exactly. everybody is unique, and so they all come together as a federated uh, conglomeration of states. Actually, this is really important what you're saying, uh, I had this conversation back in the days in, in California, uh, we uh, has this we talk, we tell them like a Tahitians, Tahitians, but honestly, they're Polynesians, right? They are. They're, they're all Polynesian. French Polynesians. We're trying to bring here the, the, the Minister of Sports from Tahiti. Yes. For a quick talk here with us. Oh. Right? She seems like she's walking walking somewhere else, so we'll try and get her a little bit. No, no problem. We can have her soon. And she's the daughter of a former uh, Minister of Sport, Reynald Temari that is now running the Aito. Uh, right. He was a former soccer player. Right. Friend, one of the few uh, Tahitians that play, uh, play in France. Oh, really? Yeah, only four, four Tahitians uh, originally play in the main league in France, and Reynald was one of them. We're looking at Vinny Va right here on the screen. A lot of these teams are sponsored uh, by local local uh, businesses. Vinny is, of course, a telecommunications yeah. company here in, in Tahiti. Look, look, look at them surf, man. Beautiful, right? Right? Beautiful. The better teams are going to be taking advantage of these of these bumps. They won't have to paddle as much on the downwind. The wind, as you can hear through our microphones, is just kicking up. It's it's kind of a crazy wind. Well, Scott, let me ask you something. Now that I'm watching this team, and they all look amazing, all look amazing. But I have that feeling when I see that yellow canoe, the Shelva canoe. They look so relaxed in the in their stroke. They look so relaxed. So. All of them, they battle V1, they mm -hmm. battle V1, mm -hmm. but we had the pleasure to visit Shell a few times uh, during this week, during this trip, and we know they battle V1, but they battle six men all the time. All the time. So, maybe that's the real difference between them, like this timing, this perfect time, they know each other so well, they, that they, they, they have a different glide. I have to say that this is sort of the genius of David Tabala 
and um, David is their their uh, peperu or their steers person. He's their coach, and um, he basically uh, the shell team does everything together. They run together. They come and they lift weights together at 4:30 a.m. They are. Um, they're doing a lot of timing drills. I mean, you would imagine a team that's world class like this doesn't need to do timing drills, but they're always out on the water doing timing drills together. All right, and here you have like a Nahima Temari doing talking to the to the TNTV. She's the minister of sports in in Tahiti and the French Polynesian. She's the daughter of Heinau Temari. And we're gonna try to put her here to we make will a have few her. words in English for us, for the fellows in in, in, in uh, Absolutely, US. she's a she's a big proponent of the sport. Obviously, it's the national sport here in Tahiti and in French Polynesia. We are um, we're excited to to have her on camera with you. So you see that with this drone image, they're surfing side by side. Indeed, and in S fact, this is Hinaroa. They are in fact from Raiatea. So, so this is a Raiatea team going head to head with a Tahitian team right here. Look at that! Look at that! They're taking full advantage of that bump. Oh, there goes Shell. That now they've launched. Ooh. And so that's it. Now we have like a, yeah. They, we we cannot say that who is leading because they're head to head. Uh, now we have another team popping up in third place. This is the Bora Bora team. Popora te hoi mano. That team is a really, really strong team. And so you can see, like, they're they're going to be trading off the lead here as they as they go side side by side on the bumps. But you see what I what I told you that how relaxed they look in the image. Indeed, indeed. And I, this all goes back to their to their stroke training. This team is from Morea. So those guys, they know the channel very, very like a uh, uh, particular, right? Like right. they know all the, the millimeters of this channel. Yeah, they're they're very well acquainted with the with the wind and the and the, the current that goes on out here. So from uh, Do I even know you? which which is the team lot that uh, George Kronstadt's paddling, Scott? He's uh, he's uh, he's down in Matae and he's a uh, uh, Mataya Va. So that's going to be a, a, a 40 a 40 year old veteran or masters team. We would call them masters in the, in the United States. So Mataya, and um, they are they are in the original Matahina. Oh, they are running the original Matahina. The, the boat from which all of the the molds for these boats have been popped. Oh, the original, the first one. The one. Oh. The the Mata, Matahina. It's a wood. Uh, wood a, a, wooden, a wooden canoe, but they race it at the Heva. They race it in these races. There's nothing wrong with that boat. That is, it's a fantastic boat. And the thing about these boats is they all have to meet the same weight requirement. So oh. if they're a little bit lighter because of coming out of the mold a little lighter, they have to carry weight. The weight is tied in. Uh, of course, if you come across the line and your boat is underweight, you'll be, you'll be disqualified. This might have happened to me years and years ago, so I learned that lesson the hard way. But these guys, um, I was here yesterday as they were preparing their boats, and everybody's making sure that the weight is fully uh, tied into the boats. And oh, this is Monteo that's Mion. The boat that that's the, 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 the boat there it is. Talk. There it is. That's the boat that you're talking about. Yeah, the original Ma one. Matea, this is a senior 40 boat. Another another perfect perfect example of just because you've hit 40 or 50 or even 60 years old, you can still continue this sport. And he's the uh, steersman for this boat. Uh, I want to say that I saw Mat uh, Manateo Mion's name. They might have have him steering this boat. I felt like a George Constant's name. And George is George is always going to be probably up front one seat one or seat two. He's such a strong paddler. Take a look at, you can see the white caps on this water. The wind is just killing it out there. Another, another great team here on the image. Tamarai Araiva. Beautiful canoe. From Beautiful. Australia. Team for Australia? Yep. Oh, oh yeah, Australia. Yep, Rorutu. A lot of international paddlers in this race. No, I, I, 
I don't think it will be a team from Australia, Scott, because I was talking to to to. Oh, you know what? Maybe the boat from Australia. Patrick, uh, early before, and he felt like the only foreign team. I think is. Is oh, you're South right. America, you're yeah. right. You're right. My fault. This is a team from Rurutu. But yeah, as you said. All those beautiful canoes with their sponsors, like uh, perfect canoes for surfing. And you see how how they take those canoes to the limit. You can see you can see that Peperu here is actually paddling too. This is key to the success. You can't just poke the whole time. You can't be a you can't be a passenger. You have to be a participant. Yeah, you have to add to the team, right? Steers and paddle. That that's really important. Uh, really important comment, Scott. That's what makes a great Pepperoni. Yeah, yeah. You'll see right now they're only poking on the on the left side of the boat. This is to take advantage of the wind. And he's only going to be out for a couple strokes, and he's going to keep keep supporting his paddlers. The thing about uh, paddling with uh, Polynesians, if you ever have the chance, uh, in the United States, there's a lot of very loud calling that goes on in the boat. There's a lot of sort of chatter that happens in the boat. It's almost dead silent when you're in the boat with uh, with Polynesians. There'll be just the, the caller in seat three. His call is going to be very, very um, quiet. And that's to take advantage of uh, being in position next to another team. You don't want the other team to hear what you're doing. I wonder how many uh, how many kilometers or miles they already uh, go to. We re re almost on 30 minutes. That's right. Well, you can see they're starting to leave the island of Tahiti behind. So that's a good indicator that they're heading out in the main channel in between the two islands. Yeah. So this island, in the back, it's Tahiti, guys. They are running to the island of Morea right now, crossing this channel, and Shalva is still in the lead. Still in the lead, but right behind them, Hinorarea from Raiatea. And I'll tell you, we were we were out uh, paddling the other day. These guys were out practicing with us. They're a very fast team, as you can see. Oh yeah, this team from Ohio there. Yep. No, you can see to be head to head with uh, Shell. Yep. In those bumps, they surf really good. I would say they, they all surf good. Uh, uh, it's difficult to say like <laughs> you know who is the baddest steersman or. They, I think they all they all surf amazing. Yep. And, and, you know. It's just a matter of like uh, training together more, getting getting this perfect time. It, it really comes down to what your training regimen is and how you train together. The the idea of tahoi, the idea of unity in the boat, that's really really huge. And here's EDT. Here's EDT. EDT. And you see that he's doing his hy hydration already in the beginning with 30 minutes of race. Uh, tell me more about this, uh, how important it is to keep your body hydrate in a long distance race like that in the middle of the ocean that you're facing, you know, splashing salt water and the, the sun is it's hard in your face. Well, I mean, obviously it's, it's, um, it's key. It's very dry here. Uh, we're, we're starting into winter, the winter months here for French Polynesia, so it's, it's drying out. It's not as hot as it is earlier, earlier in the year, but um, this is a change race. Um, so they'll be able to also exchange uh, uh, fuel, if you will, in terms of their liquid. But they're able to carry about two liters. Um, there's a canister inside these boats that holds a, a big igloo cooler, and so you've got you've got an igloo cooler right in front of you, and that's where that's where they're taking their their refreshment. This is Bora Bora Nui, senior. Another senior, senior man, Bora Bora Nui. Yeah, boat 349 coming out of Bora Bora. And it's different. Uh, it's interesting how they change the the stroke rate for the during those bumps, right? Wait, absolutely. You 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 have to sort of sprint to catch the bump, and then they'll they'll lengthen out to to remain on it. They're they're looking to find the next bump ahead of them. They're looking to connect those bumps. Um, you can see the spray kind of coming off the front of their their boat as they do so. These guys are paddling quite a bit. Um, what you're going to see from the lead boats is a little less paddling as they as they connect on those bumps and they're actually able to surf.
yeah, it's, and shows how important your cardio, your fit, fitness has to be, because even that is a long distance race, you constantly like shooting like sprints, quick sprints, uh, and this like uh, if you're not trained for that, you're just training for a long distance race. It's true. You're gonna suffer. Yeah, you will. Look at this here. You see the the, the patented long stroke of shell. They've got this long, long stroke, and I mean. We're, we're really talking about a unity in the boat that you you see rarely. I was I was talking with some of those guys early on, uh, Scott, and they they were telling me uh, because people usually talk about boat weight and boat uh, uh, dimensions and this boat and that boat. They said that like earlier they they prefer they prefer this boat the weight of this boat because match with the, the type of uh, uh, paddling technique that they use right. this long uh, 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 long stroke in the water right. that keeps the glide when right. you have that boat moving then in the inertia keeps the mover uh, gliding 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 exactly so we're talking to them like if, if the boat is too too light uh, they have to keep a, a, a different stroke rate mm -hmm. uh, so it's just a matter of adapting to your canoe right exactly I mean the these boats were built, as, as we've said earlier, they're built for this water, and they're built for the type of paddling that they're doing here, this longer stroke rating. So it's it's kind of amazing to, to see them in action here. We earlier had a, a little picture uh, as the drone is coming in behind the boats here. You'll see Morea in the distance. Um, it's about 24 kilometers over to Morea and, and then back again, a little bit less because they're coming to the closer side. And the beautiful canoe of Team Air Tahiti. Air Tahiti. Keeping their long hours, a long pace. You can see that long stroke. It almost looks like they're out for a Sunday paddle, but we know different. And they're pretty close to Shelva and uh, the second team of there. There's Morea in the distance. That's Morea. You can see Morea. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Scott. Thanks for for letting letting us know. Yep. It's yes. a beautiful here, day guys, here. Beautiful day here in Tahiti. Va Vibes, Black Dog Paddler. I'm Andres Souza. We do the, the streaming of the Vodafone channel race. Uh, I have on my side here is Scott Miller, the new voice of the Va community. <laughs> what was wrong with the old voice of the Va community? I don't know about the old voice, but everyone is talking about the new voice of the Va community, okay. Scott Miller. All right. Well, let's let's stop talking about that. We'll start talking about, about Va. <laughs> hey, Scott. Tell me about like uh, the, the 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 girls uh, because we have to acknowledge the girls here. Yes. You yeah. know we, we have some people from that is not Tahitians paddling here. Your wife is one of them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, she's about as not Tahitian as you can get. Um, she's actually in a boat uh, from Rayatea. She's in the the district boat of uh, the Rayatea, and they're they're taking a different course than the men. You're seeing you're seeing the men out here in the open ocean. You're seeing them really beautifully surfing. I mean, it's, it's like this is a master class in surfing. Let me give uh, some knowledge to people because you're being very humble. She's not just paddling, but she's steering the Hanatea team, you know? That's true. Team, yeah? She's the peparu uh, for the Hanatea team. They, uh, one of their paddlers had to had to drop out, and so she's... Um, we have friends on Reate, we we're spending time time there and, and so she was able to jump in the boat and um, she told me yesterday that um, she's been in a lot of canoes but she never felt power like she felt in that boat. So um, we were watching them surf yesterday and it was so it was a fast, fast canoe. I talked to her now early in the morning, she was so only smiles, she was super happy. Yeah. She was super happy with the team. Uh, we have other team uh, another uh, paddler from Hawaii. Elizabeth Kalama. Yes. That she's paddling. She's sharing the boat with Ilohe Chen. Yes. And yeah. Miti Mahoney. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Tell me about these teams. Uh, team. Ilani. Ilani Vaha. That is a super strong team. I mean, we're looking at, at amazing women's teams across the board, but Ilani is, you know, you've got the you've got the Tarito champion. You've got the Tarito number three. You've got, uh, you know, the 12th. Um, place from Aito, you've got a lot of really strong paddlers in there. Uh, again, you've got a lot of local knowledge with Vaimiti. She's gonna, she's from Pire, right around the corner, and um, she's gonna be. Uh, it's that's gonna be a force to reckon with. 
Look they surfing. Look they surfing. Just surfing. <laughs> and see, they can take their paddles out and rest just right. a little bit. They, bump. they need to rest as much as they can because I'll tell you what, when they come back into this wind, it's going to be a grind. They are going to be grinding the whole way back across the channel. So right now it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun for these guys that know how to surf. You can see how much farther they are. You look at all the chase boats. There were about 30 or 40 chase boats in the bay here when they left. That's a good point that you bring in the chase boats, uh, Scott. Uh, huh? This is a nine-man race. Mm -hmm. uh, for people, most of the people like paddlers, they know what a nine-man race is. But for you guys that just start paddling, uh, this canoe fits six people, but have nine men. Three of them are going in a chase boat, and really soon you're gonna see they're doing the change, right? Yeah, we very, dropped three, very two, shortly. one or two, three men in the water. Tell me more about how this works. It's a decision of the captain of the team, or you have to change three, or you can change only one. They've already mapped out their, their strategy for change outs. They've, they've, they've discussed this yesterday, and they know exactly where and who they're going to change. Um, each, each person um, has an idea of where this is going to happen. It's going to, and again, the change zones are, are specified by the race uh, directors here. You can't just change any place. It has to happen in a certain area. This is so that the other chase boats understand what's occurring in front of them, that you don't have any potential accidents occurring. But what will happen is the chase boat will lead the canoe and it will drop three people in the water. They're going to be basically in an alignment in terms of their seat order. And as the canoe comes up, that's the Ama and the, the Yakos are going to ride over them. Uh, the paddlers will jump out the opposite side, the off Ama side, and at the same time, the new paddlers will come into the boat. And here's Edi Te Va'a. Yeah, the these are the juniors. Juniors, strong Juniors. Hey, listen, it is no slouch to be a junior paddler here in French Polynesia. Right. <laughs> Well, we just saw this weekend uh, the junior female, 17 years old, second place of in the, the open class. On the open class. Right, right. So, and I think it's her last year to race junior, and she decided to race open anyway. I would bet that this is paddling connection. Oh, no, and Vito Po, no, that's not paddling connection. What's our boat number there? We're gonna have this information right Beautiful now. Beautiful surf. And we have more comments from Florida and Brazil. Here are uh, Elizabeth Corso Ruiz. Lizzie. Lizzie. Oh, Lizzie. Oh, yeah. Look at that form. What's the average speed? Yeah, Lizzie, as Scott was mentioned before, uh, I, we don't have this information, but I would bet around like 14 14, 14, 14 to 16. Yeah. Especially on a wave like this. So Lizzie would love this because she's a good downwinder. Yeah. She does like a kite surfing, yeah. uh, paddling. Uh, Lizzie's a complete at that. And Sheila França from Brazil, Itaipu Surf Hole. So Sheila, um abraço aí pro pessoal da Ita Itaipu Surf Hole. O brasileiro de de Vaá estava acontecendo agora de manhã. Estava acompanhando uh, uma transmissão maravilhosa aí do Alô Spirit. Sheila. Dá uma espalhada aí para o pessoal do Brasil para acompanhar essa prova, que nós temos aqui cinco brasileiros correndo essa prova, um momento histórico aí da canoagem brasileira. I was telling Sheila uh, from Brazil that now, early in the morning, I was following the Brazilian nationals for V6. Oh, right. Brazil, yeah. So a lot of uh, people from Brazil competing in those V6, and I was telling her that we have five Brazilians competing uh, here with uh, a team from South America. Right, right. This is Invitopo, another team from Tahiti. What's, it's sort of interesting, Andre, as you're here in Tahiti, you realize how much this sport is in the fabric of, of the island and as um, you know, a national sport. You, you can't believe the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of canoes that there are. I mean, it's sort of a rarity to see an OC6 or a V6 or whatever in our area. You know, it's not the normal thing. We're sort of used to the, the small numbers of canoes. You'll come around a corner here and you'll see seven V6s and about 30 or 40 V1s on a rack and, and they're just ready to paddle. More people in the comments here. André Prates, 
he's a para-athlete from Brazil. He runs the world, one of the top para-athletes in the world. Awesome. Now, André Prates, um abraço aí. Uh, um dos nomes, um dos maiores uh, nomes da canoagem para atleta no, no, no mundo. Obrigado por estar acompanhando a gente aí. André, do mesmo jeito que eu falei para a Sheila França aí, espalha para a galera, para a galera começar a assistir essa transmissão. A hora que acabar o, o brasileiro aí de Vaja, a galera já muda para começar a assistir a transmissão, que é um momento histórico aí para a canoagem brasileira. And now back to English, Scott. Uh, we still have Shell Vaja in the lead. We do. We're looking at another boat here, but Shell is Shell is uh, doing their normal uh, go out, go out fast early, hang on to the lead, and just sort of grind the competition. Although uh, Hino Rorea is giving them a real run for their money. And Team Air Tahiti too. Oh, absolutely. And then you got the Bora Bora team. There is the. You see the nose dip into the wave in the front. That front wave is actually pulling them along. The tail is up on the, the wave and back. And here are the lead boats. And they're not letting shell no, no, open no. again. No, no, no. It's going to be, it's, I'll tell you where I, I feel like the any sort of gap is going to open up is once we make the turn around and go up into the wind, then you'll see real training kind of come into, into um, its own. And um, there's actually, as much sprinting as they're doing to get onto these waves, they're also relaxing. Yeah, look, look at them. Look Paddles at out. They're just riding. And there's David Tipava in the back. If there's a better Peperu in the world, I want to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I don't think there is. David Tipava is an amazing guy. And yep. you, can see, you can see in the, in the uh, all the way ahead, you uh, see the island of Morea. See, Paddling Connection has come up to number four. This is a very typical move for them. In the middle of a race, they will they will start to, to bring it on. There are some amazing paddlers. My friend T is on that boat. T is on the boat. He's not on the boat today, but that he's typically seat four in that boat, and um, he's uh, he's quite quite a, a a physical paddler. As are they all. Paddling connection, uh, quite a force here in Tahiti. Our friend T. Yep. Uh, He's but like I, a half Hawaiian, half Tahitian, yeah, living in Florida. I think he's like half cyborg. He's right. amazing. <laughs> strong dude. Yeah, strong dude. I've, I've seen a lot of strong paddlers. Nothing like that guy. And uh, now we have an image from the boat, from the chasing boat. Uh, and it's got the chasing boat. He has any decision on the route or, or, or is the decision of the the paper uh, not a decision but like they can have instructions get instructions or, or, or comments from the chasing boat they will be the actually interesting question thank you that um, the coaches are on these chase boats and the coaches will be relaying messages back to the paper and, and we here you see a change out Shelba. oh no for yeah changing for no for the team on the second this is Hino Rorea okay, and there the they go over the side Seat one, You're going to see it's only going to be about three or four seconds. Five. Three and to four it. seconds for that change, and now they're back on the water. Not aware, team, they, they, they did the first change already. And now the, cha the, the chase boat is going to pick up those three that, that went out. That's an interesting move because you can see Shell didn't. We're probably going to see a movement Actually, for Shell right now. Oh, they did already because I saw a guy that is looks like a really, really came off the out of the water and, and I think the formation already changed. Forty six minutes into the race. This is gonna be a three hour race. I, I would I would uh, I would check like uh, if we have the junior paddling for Shelva because he was training Keoni. Oh yeah. We didn't know if he was gonna be in this team. Another change out here. Oh I think, Scott, that this is the Brazilian team. I agree with you. No. It's Shelva that just changed. The other yellow canoe that was before... Was that was the Brazilian, the Brazilian team. team. Yeah, that was the, the guy Brazilian with the long team. hair. Yeah. We just saw... In a there we go. But look at this. Right look back on a wave. Right back on a wave. And this is Shelva leading the race men's open division 
We have more people here from Brazil. Laila Rocha. Laila Rocha is an amazing paddler from Brazil yeah. also. And now she lives in, 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 in Florida. Oh, really? That's yeah, fantastic. It's a fantastic paddler from Brazil. Laila. Here's the Brazilian. Shout out to me. And here's the Brazilian. Team South America. Team South America. This is like making history. The first uh, uh, foreign team competing in this in this race. Yep. A shout out for for my people in Brazil. Um abraço aí pro pessoal do Brasil. Momento histórico para canoagem brasileira. Um time sul-americano competindo pela primeira vez nessa prova da Vodafone. São cinco brasileiros e quatro chilenos nesse barco. Nós temos aí o Léo, temos o, o, o Fábio Valongo, hum. uma delegação enorme que veio do Brasil para competir na prova da Aito. E a prova foi no, no, no final de, nesse final de semana que passou. E o que aconteceu é que eles tiveram um convite para participar, sendo o primeiro time da, da América do Sul a competir nessa prova, uma das provas mais importantes da canoagem mundial. E eles estão usando a famosa canoa amarela da Shell, a Shelly. Uh, momento histórico para a canoagem brasileira. Scott, I was telling my fellow, my fellows in Brazil that this is a historic moment. What we see in the, on the TV right now, yep. it's, yep. it's uh, Brazil, Brazil, the South America making history here, using the Shelva canoe. First time South American people paddling this race here. It's like a, an amazing dream come true for a lot of them. It's, a, it's an incredible moment. It's an incredible moment. I was talking with those guys yesterday and they were um, they're really, really fantastic people. They're, they're so excited to be here and they're really excited that they're getting to use this boat. And One of them was joking around hoping that the boat was going to drag them out to the front. First change for the Brazilian team. Nice change, Very Team good. South America, Team South America, so just uh, I ran in mind, it's five Brazilian and four guys from Chile, right. one of them, one of them, one of those uh, those guys from Chile lives in, Mor lives in Morea. And here they are again, Team South America. This is, this is Brazil and Chile making history right now. Let's also talk about this is the first first uh, event where women have been able to paddle as well for Vodafone, and so um, history being made there. So you've got you've got South America as well as women uh, paddling in in the Vodafone race. That's an amazing point, uh, Scott. And here we have the team, the uh, team. Air Tahiti Ba. I I think. Uh, Look I, at that! Look at that! You saw the energy as they came off the crest of that wave. Look at them go! It's just hammer, 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 and now taking full advantage of the glide of that wave. That tail is out of the back. A very strong team. Beautiful, uh, beautiful those, sight. Those four teams leading this race. Any one of them, like a. <laughs> It's, it's too it's too early to, to see to tell that like a who already <laughs> the, the race is decided. It's right? true. You you may find that Pire sneaks up and makes it into the top three. You may find that uh, Mataya is, is also going to do the same thing. It's just you can't discount a team from French Polynesia no matter where they're from. That's true. And I think I saw on C four or C three that my, my my friend Ray Ro. Ray Holdin from Team Air Tahiti. Tane is also in this boat. Kyle Tarafo is in this Kyle boat. Kyle Tarafo is in that boat. Kyle is a, like a... He's a monster. It's, it's a monster. He raced in, in California, the Vaha California Series. He's one of the, the Polynesians that went to California to race against uh, the USA guys. Yep. And he finished the third race in the second position behind Stevie Boy, but it's he's a monster. This is a perfect example of watching the Peperu right here. He was like hammering hard on the right side and then steering the boat, making sure it stays on that wa wave on the left. You will see the Peperu poke on the, on the right from time to time. It's a dangerous move, but uh, they do it. But look here, now they're just long, long, long waiting for the next push. And then he'll call that push. And there we go. There's the Roa. 
and it's quite a little bit more in Portuguese because people are going crazy here in the comments, <laughs> right? He's saying like the he's saying that the Shalva it's it's a luxury for Brazil to paddle that canoe. What a moment! Uh, Andre Prati saying uh, uh, congratulations Brazil making history and the the, the live transmissions is it's, uh, we are doing good doing, doing the live transmission. Excellent. Pessoal do Brasil aí momento histórico para canoagem brasileira e nós temos nessa canoa aí os brasileiros competindo nessa prova. Fábio Valongo. Fábio tem 12 anos de vá. Ele é, compete na Master 40, é um cara que tem 47 anos, já compete muitos anos na VA. Ele compete pelo, ele representa o Itaipu Surf Ho. Nós temos o Leonardo Pirozolo, 7 anos de VA, compete na Open também do mesmo clube da Itaipu Surf Ho. O Gustavo Jacó, 10 anos de VA, Master 40, 44 anos. Ele representa a escola de V1 Jacob. O André Gerbatin. 11 anos de VAA, Master 40, 40 anos também da clube Itaipu Surf Roll. E, o nosso, e também o nosso campeão, campeão brasileiro de V1, o fenômeno Robert Almeida, 27 anos. O Robert aí que, que para quem não sabe ainda, finalizou a Ito. A Ito esse ano foram, foi diferente, foram duas provas. E na somatória das duas provas, ele finalizou aí. Uh, top 100 se eu não me engano ele foi posição 88 ou 86 e, o que isso significa é um, ele está na elite da, do, do esporte mundial quando você uh, alcança o top 100 aí na, na Deaito realmente você está na elite da, 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 da V1 no mundo, ele já está automaticamente classificado para competir na Super Aito Tá? Então quem estiver assistindo aí é, essa transmissão, os, os patrocinadores é, estão de parabéns e o pessoal dá um suporte aí para o Robert, não só para o Robert, mas todos esses nomes que vieram competir aqui, o André, o Gustavo, o Leonardo, o Fabinho, é, tem mais nomes que não estão aqui nessa prova hoje, mas competiram também, todos esses brasileiros que vieram para cá. É, especialmente vamos dar um suporte aí para ver se a gente consegue manter o Robert para co correr a prova da, da Super Aito, que é muito importante. É, são, esses são os cinco brasileiros competindo nessa canoa da Shell. E junto com eles são quatro chilenos aí. O Juan Bostelman, que ele compete na Open, 32 anos, ele mora em Moré, ele vive aqui no Tahiti. O Fernando Zegers, Master 46, mora no Chile. Bruno Zalatar Júnior, 18 anos, é, vai ficar aqui em Samoa. E o Martins Ortega de Túlio, de 32 anos, é o coach, no, é um coach nesse time de Chile. Uh, now back to English, Scott. I was just telling people from Brazil how amazing it is to have this team here. And I have the names all of them. You have here like Fabio Valongo that has 12 years of uh, paddling VA. Oh, yeah. He's a master 40. He's 47 years old and he battles for Itaipu, Surf Hoi. We have Leonardo Pirozolo. He also battles for the same team. Gustavo Jacob. Uh, he battles for the V1 Jacob. Uh, André Gerbatin. Same club. Same club, Itaipu, Surf Hoi. In our uh, Brazilian national champion, oh, yeah. Robert Almeida Dias. This guy is a phantom. And I was telling people that the Aito was different this year and they, they did two races. Two, it's a series and, race this year. And uh, uh, calculating the points, put the points together, he finished top 100 wow. and he's already uh, Super Aito. qualified for the Super Aito. Fantastic. And I was telling how important for the sponsors, that's the whole intention of this channel. It's like uh, help the community, the VAA community, help those peddlers that wake up early in the morning and put so much dedication. Mm. Like, um, like if you're a sponsor and you will help those guys to keep here, keep peddling, like participate of the super, this is very important, right Scott? Right, in, indeed. We're looking at some video here of Shell last year. Oh, that's the end of the race. They won the last year, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, and remind also here, uh, uh, Scott, the four, the four um, Chileans. Yeah, people from Chile here. We cannot forget that. No, 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 not at uh, all. Juan Bostelman, he lives here in Morea. Fernando Zegers lives in Chile. 
Bruno Zalatan, he's a junior. No and kidding. He's going to stay here practicing. In, and he's going to stay in some more. He's going support. to get good. And Marx, Mar Matias Ortega, 32 years old. So this is the result from last year. You yep. see the shell var. Shell. You had money heat. You had Hino Rorea, which is uh, from right there again. Hino Rorea in second second position right now. Although that's always provisional. Anything can happen in these races. And I think I think we can we, we can tell that we the, we have a gap around. We have a little bit of a gap, but like like everything, don't let that fool you. There may be a gap at the moment. But uh, there we go. There's our friends from Paddling Connection sneaking on up. So I have another comment here, Scott. That like uh, Paulo Roberto Gatti, he says, Quanto aos taitianos, uh, sempre uma aula nas mudanças de ritmo. So he's telling here, like, talking about the Tahitians, we're going to say Tahitians, we're going to say Polynesians. Polynesians, yeah. It's always like... A, uh, uh, class for us, like, we, like a school. We go it to is. school to learn how they 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 change the rhythm do, during the race, right? We are talking about this, doing uh, how important to have those changes to be able to catch a bump, right, during the race. I was uh, talking with George Kronstadt. Uh, actually, this is last year, but basically he was saying you can't you can't stay in just one rhythm, whether it's in the V1 or the V6. You have to um, change your rhythms according to what's happening around you. You have to, you have to, oh, this looks like Kevin. Yeah, that's paddling connection. And, and uh, from what I see, Kevin CJ is steering is that steering, boat. steering, is steering paddling connection. Um, yeah, the, the, the thing is, um, if you're going to stay in one rhythm, you're going to, you're going to miss opportunities out in the water. You're going to, um, you're basically going to settle and you need to, uh, to make sure that you, um, keep your energy levels up um, there's that tap 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 of the sprint that uh, needs to occur on a wave and then also when you're heading back upwind you can't you can't let it grind you down so he's battling senior yeah Kevin CJ what do you know well, that's what do you know yeah daddy here on the screen there he is Kevin CJ world world champion world sprint champion Kevin CJ that's a that's the guy I want in my boat. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to tell which title he doesn't have. He had world sprints. He had world long distance. He won the Aito. He won Super the Aito. Aito. Right? Have, he had ever won the Molokai? I don't know if he did Molokai. I know Steve Stevie Dejotata did did Molokai. I don't know if Kevin ever made it to Molokai. Look at that though. Look at the tail up on that boat. You can still see Shell is, is building its lead over the other boats, but you can see the other chase boats close behind. If those chase boats are there, that means their canoes are right there. So that's not that much of a lead. And talking about Shell Vaa, Scott, Shell Vaa is going to be in California. Oh, that's right. That's right. He's gonna be, they're going to be racing California. For the, uh, for the Catalina race. The Catalina race. Yeah, uh, I was talking to them already doing the, the arrangements because it's a bit of a, a lot of logistics. But yeah, they're confirmed for the Catalina race. So people in the U.S. Uh, follow the Catalina race to see Shelva competing against the, the great teams in California. The we best, have great teams, the best teams in California, the best teams across the nation. They, they all go to Catalina. It's a change race there too. It's a little bit colder water there. Cold water, very cold, <laughs> very water, cold water. Great white sharks. Oh yeah, this is this is Uskan. This is a, a Tahitian team. This is a a Master 40 team. And here is interesting how like uh, the stroker. Uh, tell me about this. Uh, uh, each position it's important in the canoe. The the seat one is the stroker. But now that I was. I saw that he stopped to hydrate. How important this connection with the seat two to keep the boat in the same pace? Right? Absolutely, you've got your second position stroker there in seat two, seat one. Seat one is in constant communication with the caller in seat three. Seat three is going to set the pace for the boat. He's going to be making the calls for for pick it up or or lengthen out or go deep, go long. Um, and you can see now. 
you can just see the difference as they've as they've gone a little bit longer here, but then you'll see them kind of pick up the pace, and that's going to be called from seat three. Here we have Shell at Tahiti. Oh, Gina Tahiti make that movement. And as now Hina Rorea in third, paddling connection still in fourth. You've got the Bora Bora team, Belpora uh, Tehoi Mamu, uh, Manihi coming out from uh, out of nowhere. I mean, you've, Vini in number nine, Envarapo ten, Mihari in seven. You've got a lot of great crews there. So yeah, and Gina Tahiti is coming from for Shell. Where they're coming. They're coming. They they got a lot of work ahead of them. It's a strong team, uh, Scott. Very strong Very team. But look, you can team. see how unified they are. The b the best teams are going to have most unity between all the paddlers. It's uh it's really impressive to be in a boat with them and watch them make their changes to 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 see. Uh, we had we had an opportunity to paddle with some of the Reatans, uh this week in their in their sixes and. Um, it's really kind of a startling thing to watch them communicate. It's a it's a fluidity of, of motion and a fluidity of change that you just and, can't beat. And here, Scott, your favorite canoe. Oh yeah, Mataya. There it is. The <laughs> the the. There we go. Oh, Johan Krastet, Manateo Mion's in that boat. Hiramana Flores is in that boat. Rete Eb is in that boat. Oh my oh God. Oh my God. You've got. What yes. Is your team? <laughs> yes. Yo Johan uh, is George's brother. Yeah. It's, I mean any of these guys are, are just going to make this boat go but look at the beautiful i mean there it is there it is the matahina that's the original one that right? is the original boat it's a wood matahina and uh, those guys are making it fly an hour into this race we've got two hours to come in this race yeah pessoal esse é o time mataia é um time tradicional daqui, temos grandes nomes nesse time aí, o Manu Temion, o Jorge Kronstedt, que é um multicampeão aqui, hoje ele compete na, na, na Master 40, ganho, destruiu a, a Master 40, e eu estava conversando com o Scott, essa é a canoa favorita do Scott, do meu amigo Scott, é a canoa... É a matarrina original. Foi, foi, a, 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 todas as matarrinas foram feitas a partir dessa daí. É uma canoa original de madeira. A matarrina de madeira. Lembrando que todas as canoas aqui, ela tem que, elas têm que ter o mesmo peso. Então, se você tem uma diferença aí de, de peso entre uma canoa e outra, eles têm que botar um lastro na canoa. Tá? Essa é a matarrina original. É, é, é até um, é uma, é um, é um orgulho para eles estar tá, tá remando, para alguns remadores ser convidados para remar nesse time e participar, remar nessa canoa original aí, ver quanto eles se divertem na água, surfando essas ondas aí. Lembrando que essa prova, ela sai do Tahiti, né, é, e vai para uma outra ilha aqui da Polinésia Francesa, que é bem em frente aqui do Tahiti, a ilha de Moréa, que vocês conseguem, estão vendo aí na imagem é, do lado direito, Moréa ao fundo, você bate em Moréa, entra no canal e volta para o Tahiti. Tá? É uma prova longa, é, 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 você cruza o canal entre, 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 entre a ilha de Tahiti e Moreia. Tá? Now back to English, Scott, I was just telling you that, uh, that this is your favorite canoe, and what is like a, to be invited to, to paddle this canoe, it's a privilege. I, I would think so, I would think so. The thing about this canoe too is that uh, this is the... This is the blueprint for all the other matahinas that are out here. It's probably the only one that didn't have to add weight because this is the, bo the boat that has its own weight. So, as you can see, it's uh, a wood strip canoe, and um, but still, like they keep their boats so beautifully. Um, you, if you go down to Mataea, if you're heading on your way to Chopo, it's on on the way there. You can you can actually go into the club and see this boat. Um, it's they take it out, they paddle it for Heva, they're clearly paddling it for this race, the Vodafone. It's an active canoe. It's not It's not a relic. And look the chasing boat. Uh, Scott, let me ask you this. Uh, how this affects the, the paddlers, the, the canoes behind? So because you have like, a, each boat has the, the chasing team, the chase boat. It, uh, each canoe has a chasing boat, but also you have the, the live transmission. You have people that like just following the the the, the, organi the organizer of the race. So these wakes, those wakes, uh, they affect or they don't affect? Oh no, or don't. they affect affect only like a flat water because. 
No, there, there's gonna there's gonna be effect, especially if you're further back and you're catching all the cross wakes from all these boats. You know, obviously Shell is out front right now, and so they have clean water ahead of them. Uh, but um, you know, you might be able to take some advantage of some of the the motorboat wakes, but you're also dealing with ocean waves out there. So, I mean, it it's to your advantage not to be back in the boil behind the motorboats. It's to your advantage to get out in front as far as you can. Here we're getting a, a live view of the map to show you exactly how far they are. As we saw earlier, they're about midway in the channel right now. Midway. Uh, Morea is getting clearer and clearer. Yeah, 17, 17, <laughs> 17 kilometers in. That's pretty amazing. In one hour. In one, one hour. hour. And seven minutes. So there we go, right around what we were talking about earlier. How fast are these boats going? They're going about 70 kilometers an hour. <laughs> yeah, 17 kilometers an hour, guys. That's it. Aí, pra, pra quem fez a pergunta aí, pra o quanto o pessoal tava perguntando aqui nos comentários, qual era a média uh, uh, desses boats, desses barcos, uh, uh, average speed, né? E é isso aí, é o que vocês viram, são foi uma hora, uma hora e sete minutos de prova, são 17 km e meio, então essa média é de 16, entre 16 e 17 km por hora que eles estão uh, fazendo, mantendo nessa, na travessia do canal, eles estão na metade do canal agora, entre Tahiti e Moréa. I was explaining to fellows in Brazil the, the average speed, we, how, like, we have 17 km. So we're looking at a senior boat here, Parahi. Again, just because it's a master's or a senior boat doesn't mean it's a slow boat. These these guys are out there oh, killing no. it right now. Oh no. I wonder if we're gonna if we're gonna have image from the girls. I would love to see I would the, love to see them as the well. Competition and the and the women's division. I would I would love to see that as well. I don't know if that's gonna be possible today, uh, but uh, You know, our thoughts are with them as they're heading around the coast. Um, they've got a little bit uh, less of a push. They're going to be actually coming up into what is clearly developing into a really stiff headwind as they come through the through the lagoon. Um, once they clear the final bridge, um, which you'll see later in this race, uh, it's just pretty much straight in your face, 70 kilometer hour winds. As you said, Scott, we were, talk, uh, we were talking earlier like about the women conquer their space in the VA community, in the sport. They are fighting to be recognized equal as men, to do the same distance, to the same race. Yep. Like today, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to see them race, uh, doing this race. The course it's a little bit shorter for the women, and they are doing solo. Right? 32 kilometers, and they're doing an iron race. That's correct. Yeah, so, so in some ways, it's going to be a little bit harder for them because they're doing 32 kilometers exactly. with no with change no outs. Change. No change. No change. What, what 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 would be the three main teams that you would bet for the women's division? Oh boy, I don't know, but I I mean, Ilani is uh, going to be fantastic. Um, You've got the district of Rayatea, you've got Team Bora Bora out there. Kalahui Kai actually has two junior uh, women's teams out there. Wow. They're going to be strong. You know, EDT has a, has a women's team also. Air Tahiti Nui has a, has a I mean, there are a lot of strong boats in, in that category. There's 14 total. Now that you bring this, it's called Kalahui Kai, a team from Hawaii. Yes. Uh -huh. Team from Hawaii. You have like a three canoes. They're competing with three canoes here, right? Right. Two for uh, two in the women, but those are juniors. Those are juniors competing in the open women class, and then you've got one in the in the the junior men class, and so you've got you know, interestingly, that's going to be sort of age. They're going to be going up against one another in the same age bracket. These are these are juniors going up against some C's and women teams, especially that Ilani and that Rayatea boat. Those are some killer boats. Like a, a, a strong team from Hawaii, right? The, uh, oh, very, very. They came here to compete on uh, Hawaii Kinui. Right. With, uh, Ryland. They put a, a, a big team together with Ryland, Ryland Danny Hart. Team and everything. Yep. They did good in the first leg. They had a problem with the canoe. Ah. I don't know if they finished top 10, but they, they do like average top 10 between, uh, uh, on the second race. Right. Right. I mean, strong, strong boat out of Hawaii, strong team out of Hawaii. There are amazing paddlers in Hawaii, as we all know, uh, as we look at Popora Tehoe Mamu.
and talk up talk about uh, Hawaii. Let's uh, say a shout out for Chase. Our, oh, Chase. Our boy We're missing Chase you, buddy. On the Big Island. Chase, if That's you right. hear the live transmission, it was nice to spend some time with you and learn with you the the surfing legend, the V1 surfing legend, Chase. That's Chase right. Boy. That's right. He's, uh, it's funny, he was talking to me and he says, I've never been so happy to be 81st in a race in my entire life. Yeah, yeah. And, and as Paolo Amedio here is like reminding us on the, on the comments that a lot of those guys will be racing Hilo to 24. That's right, for the sprints. Yeah. If you've never seen a V6 sprint, it's, it's a sight to behold. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, especially the way that they make the turns. Yeah. Paolo actually is the coach the head coach. For the head coach from Team USA. For the US. Team USA. So shout like out to Team USA and shout Paolo. Shout out to Team USA and Paolo. If you wanna, if you wanna be in Hilo, Paolo is the guy to talk to. So and he mentioned here, they are able to shift from distance to sprint. Uh, Scott, we see a lot of those guys. Tupuria King is one one of them that we can mention. It's a very well known paddler, especially Correct. in the Brazilian community. Right. Everyone loves Tupuria. And they like a how to train for sprints and and a long distance race. Like uh, Tupuria does this really good. He's able to perform in both. And now you see Manutea Mion that it, it's true. I think he broke. I don't know. He broke the record. He did 157 on right. the 500 meters. Right. I Kevin, don't know if that same. time was recognized as a world a record. But he's there. Yeah. <laughs> he did it. Yeah. Right. Kevin's so, the same way. I mean, the thing about it is, so much of so much of this kind of racing is sprinting to the next point. You are, I mean, you are sprinting to get down a wave. You are you are sprinting to to get to the next point, and then you have to open up and relax and go long. So, the, I mean, <laughs> there's an intense amount of cardio that's that's going into the training for these guys. And, and I had a lot of uh, talk. Uh, with Paolo in Florida and we talk a lot and we are explaining, he was explaining like basically the training is similar right that zone 2 with like some sprint shots uh, uh, it's just an adaptation you do that train for the whole season and when you have the sprint come a uh, sprint race come you just adapt a little bit of your training for that type of race because you use your cardio even if, the, if a 500 meters race you have to have your 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 pace set up you're not absolutely gonna be absolutely true but i mean a lot of these a lot of these paddlers will be training for that first mile as a full-on sprint you know they need to the, the if you think back to the start here today or the start at Taito, you saw how hard they were sprinting out of the block and they they make that continue for three quarters of a mile so they're they're going to be up there in a high zone level and then they'll settle and here you, here you see the... the Here's Aramoana Hoi. They're from Tahiti. Oh, I thought it was the ADT Juniors, man. No? No, this is a senior boat. Senior boat? Mm-hmm. This is an open boat. So and you see you see the, the, the TNT being on top of them. Maybe they're leading the senior division? I think they're one of the top ten. But definitely beautiful paddling right there. Okay, here's some information about uh Milton Laughlin. Milton Laughlin. He was the guy that was late for Teito, remember? And he had to oh, paddle. That's that the guy. So we watched this guy basically sprint across the bay to get his paperwork in, run to, to do it, run back to his canoe, sprint back to the finish, and he still came in top ten at Teito. <laughs> yeah, but when you say sprint, it's like a it, a good, a good, let's say, a good three mile. Three mile battery. sprint. So, <laughs> if you worry about your warm up being too long, maybe you should stop worrying because this was the biggest warm up I ever saw, and he still ended up like top fifteen, top ten. Honestly, I think it was more than three miles, Scott. Yeah, it, it was. It was a pretty long way, and I mean, he he just didn't. <laughs> that was insane. I, I and kept he thinking, also, he likes sweating and no, no, back. no. All I, all I could think was, oh, how is this guy going to do when he's got all of this battling that's happening before him? He did really well. That's how he did. <laughs> so we passed half of the crossing already. Yep. Not half of the race, but half, half of and the first crossing. Here's and Shell. Shell 
is heading here, toward Joe, that. As, and you can as see as they're leading. still taking full advantage of the wind right here, Andre. Look at them. Just gliding. Just and then their gliding. caller will will tell them to dip back, dip back in, and there they go. And so they're that long, long, long. It looks relaxed, but I'll tell you, they're putting incredible power on that blade. Tell me about this is this is steersman, this pepper, David Tapaba. David Tapaba. Um, there's a great interview with him. I recommend it to anybody who's interested in, in learning about Shell. Um, and um, they interviewed him, and apparently what happened was um, they came to uh, the Molokai, and it was about 16 or 17 years ago, and um, they were crushed. Um, this this team and David Tababa basically took it upon himself. He 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 vowed that never would that happen again. Never would would he or his team enter into a race and get crushed. And so he's the one who promotes this idea of them being together for everything. They eat together. They train together. They run together in the morning. They're up at 4:30. They're running up into the mountains. Talk about a cardio workout. Um, they are you know. If they go to the store, they're going together. And so he's really focused them into just almost like a machine. Uh, if, you ever, if you ever get a chance to see that interview, you will see intensity embodied in David Tapava. He is, he is a master. He was a, a champion V1 paddler before, and now he's like the, the most amazing steers person I've ever seen. Yeah, you're totally right, and you can see this very clear. And when you talk to him and share uh, share his knowledge, that he's about the team. He's not about the paddler. He basically doesn't care if like you, if a strong paddler, if right. you're the champion of no. the world. He he wants people who's gonna give a hundred percent up for the team. It's you true. Know, you can you can be an amazing paddler, a world champion, but doesn't fit to that team. He, he, he wants to make sure that the blend is perfect and he wants to make sure that, that I mean, we saw that yesterday at the weigh-in. There are there were former paddlers on Shell that were still here acting as a part of the team. They, you know... It's it, a big family. It, it's, it is like a big family in a way. We saw paddlers that are not active in the boat anymore, but but uh, like Damas Ami, he was here yesterday carrying the boat, working, and I mean, it's it's clear that they that they generate this sort of notion, the what the Polynesians call tahoi, the unity, and that it, that is embodied in Shell. And man, can you see it when they paddle? And the respect that the team has for W. Right? Yeah. They yeah. respect the V like as a father, right? Yeah. All those those are like young paddlers, most of them. Uh, Keone, the junior champion, paddles for Sheva with yep. uh, the main guys. Yep. So beautiful surfing. Beautiful surfing. Beautiful surfing. And you this race in Molokai, they got crushed because of surfing. Yes. Yeah. Because of surfing. That's true. Because they were they leading the race and got, when got to the surfing point, they were smash. Right. They say, hey, we need to get better and surf. Learn to surf. Well, cle now. clearly they've learned how to surf now. <laughs> <laughs> now they teach how to surf. Hey, right? shout out to Gino Kokomir. Oh. Hey, Gino. Gino, my guy, Gino. That's right. The surf ski legend surf from ski. Florida. A shout out for all the surf skis guys, the, the surf ski foundation. So Omar is doing a great job of the surf ski foundation. Omar Chacon. My, my, one of my best friends, uh, Kevin, Kevin, like yeah. uh, the lifeguard. Yeah, yeah. A surf ski guy and now a uh, uh, outrigger guy also. Oh boy. Kevin. All my friends, like a uh, shout out for all my friends in, in Florida. Mark Cornwell. Same here. Uh, it's, got, it's good to, to recognize that this, this transmission, this amazing transmission that we're doing here, this wouldn't be possible without the support and help of a lot of people. A lot of people in the U.S., a lot of people in Florida, definitely like some good friends. Uh, uh, Mark Cornwell is, man, Mark, if you listen to me, uh, thank you, guy. Thank you, man, for, for your help, your support. I wish you'd be here with us, hopefully for next year. Absolutely. Don, Don, you know Don? Don Tickner. Don Tickner, our, our guy, Don. <laughs> uh, all these people who pedal for the, the, the hui. 
the the Canalui team, Christian, yes. uh, all these people who the amazing people who paddle. For, forget, uh, forgive me if I, uh, if I forget your name, Paolo Amelio, uh, Conrad and Anna, the famous couple from from Florida. Right. You know, you and and Pam, the the pioneers of the V1 in Florida, basically. Yeah, that's true. So thank, thank you guys, thank all of you guys for your support, uh, for supporting this channel, for supporting me uh, with this last and believing me, believing in this in this dream. Well, and in particular, we also want to thank TNTV for allowing us to jump on their feed. This is a remarkable uh, thing to partner with them. They're they've been very generous uh, at at Teato again here for Vodafone. We're looking at Toa Tai Vaha. This is a, a 50 year old and over team. Ooh, still fast. Man. Part of my generation. Yeah. <laughs> Your generation. Yeah, that's right. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Yeah, well. I'm almost there. I'm still in the 40s. I'm, look, I'm, looking at, I'm almost looking at the senior 60 category. <laughs> When you, you change the vision uh, when you're 50, right? You got the, That's the, right. The, the, so I have one more year. That's right. You have one more year. I've only one got a couple year. more years in this division, but actually, it's so strong. You're looking at. I mean, look at this paddling. And these are people who have been paddling here since they were four, or five years old. We were we were seeing a bunch of seven or eight year olds uh, paddle uh, V1s the other day, and it's just. It, it, it's it's a normal thing. It's a normal thing for them here to paddle since they're small. Yeah. Little pickup on the wave right here. And surf, surf, surf. Look how connected is this team. All of them, all of them. You don't, you don't. You, the time is always perfect. The difference that you see from one team for the other is like a, the stroke rate, maybe a little bit. For the it depends. These these guys have a higher rating than maybe like a shell. You saw a lower rating for shell. They're really, really going deep and long in the water. They're doing the puti pare, puti pare, which means uh, long and deep. Here you have like a Renato Ferro. He was talking about this. Renato is a, he's asking, quantas remadas por minuto? How many? Uh, uh, what's the stroke rate for those guys? It depends entirely on the. It can be as low as like a, a 45. They can bring it all the way up to uh, like a 65, 70. From what I see, what we see right now, it changed, right? We're looking at slightly more than 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 60 here. Yeah. It all depends entirely on where you are on the wave. You'll see when they come into the wind that their rating is going to rate up a little bit more because they need to keep the boat going. É, Renato, uh, que, como o Scott estava aqui, a gente estava comentando, quantas remadas por minuto? Isso uh, diferença, uh, varia muito, especialmente numa travessia de canal dessa daí, que você tem que estar tá atacando o tempo inteiro, você não fica com aquela remada longa uh, por muito tempo, uh, você tem que atacar e aumentar o, o, o stroke rate para entrar no bump. Mas aí a gente fala de uma remada aí de... 40, entre 47 e, 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 e quase 60 quando eles, eles sprintam para entrar no, 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 na onda. Was explaining in Portuguese uh, what you're just saying about the stroke rate. For well, you, you saw here Air, Te Air Tahiti. They sprint down the, the wave face and then now they've lengthened out again. It's a beautiful canoe. I like this white canoe. Also very relaxed. Very relaxed. Very, very relaxed. relaxed. Is in second position right now. Team Air Tahiti. Air Tahiti Va. Looking beautiful. We got a lot of racing to go though. Here an, another image from the drone chasing boats and I think would be the Team Air Tahiti. And we can see ahead the and distance from Shell. You see how close they're getting to Morea here. So yep, you're right. Air Tahiti still in second. Paddle of Connections made its way up to third place now. That's something interesting. We're getting close to Morea. We're gonna get in the in the lagoon. The conditions are gonna change. Well, actually, what they're going to do here is they're gonna make a, a quick turn around a buoy, and then they're gonna head straight back out into the ocean again, into the waves. 
So the buoy is not on the lagoon? It, it is close to the lagoon. It's basically at, a, at an open mouth over there. There's a, uh, this is where the, um, the Aramiti ferry takes you. It's, um, it, you go into the lagoon, out again. It's, it's going to be a quick turnaround. They're going to have very little lagoon paddling there. So it's, it, enjoy so the ride right now, guys, because it's going to be full on headwind. You can see now that the back, the, the gap is big right now. We're talking about, uh, let's say here, I would say, I would bet like uh, around 200 meters or 300 meters, let's talk, uh, let's say, right, 400, almost half a mile. Almost, almost half a mile lead that they built up right here. I think you're going to see some of this gap close a little bit in the uh, in the upwind, um, especially with some of these stronger teams like Air Tahiti, Paddling Connection. Um, again, you just can't discount the teams that are are behind. <laughs> I would I would be hard pressed to keep ahead of a of a Paddling Connection or or Air Tahiti or even Manihi or Hinaroa. These are really really strong teams. Here, here the Bank of Polynesia team, the Bank of Polynesia. Bank de Polynesia. A veteran, veteran 40. That's right. So you said something interesting, uh, Scott. They're going to turn in Morea and they're going to head back to Tahiti. Correct. Basically, uh, hardcore upwind. Right. So that's where we're going to start to see and a definition, we can say that, like a definition on the race, because that's going to, uh, like, fitness, requires, like, a lot of level. power, frequency, timing, uh, and, like, uh, yep. make the canoe glide against the tide, against the wind. Yep. Fitness level is going to be a huge factor in the upwind. Fitness level, I mean... You see how long that, that channel is from one island to the other. It's one thing to be pushed there by the wind. It's another thing to go upwind. And they're also it's going to be a quartering wind because they have to head a little bit further south to make the pass into the lagoon on the Tahitian side. Looking at Bank de Polynesi right here. These are 40, 40 years old and above, so your age class. My age class. That's my age class. That's right. You're totally right. Totally right. Look do at the speed, though. They've got good boat speed. Do we know who is leading this division? I don't right now. I don't think we have any indication on the on the 40 and above where we stand. And guys, we are here. Va vibes. Black belt peddler. Andrea Souza and Scott Miller doing the live streaming of the Vodafone channel race, race channel uh, 2023. We are, this race happens in the, uh, from leaving, departs from Tahiti, goes to Moray and comes back to Tahiti. All the divisions start at the same time, the women's and the juniors, the... We're doing. We're looking at uh, 18 boats that are doing 32 kilometers. They are doing 32 kilometers, right? So that's still, and, and that's all iron. So there's no changeouts for 32 kilometers for the women or for the for the juniors. In terms of the the open men and the masters 40, masters 50, that's a changeout race, but that's a 50 kilometer race. And Shalva still lead the yep. group, lead the race, very relaxed doing an amazing surf, beautiful beautiful saving energy for this upwind well they're gonna need it they're gonna need it it's a it's a it's a grind coming back and here you see in the inset that's David Tababa their their peperu or their steers person he's also uh, the mouthpiece of Shelva in a lot of ways you always see him interviewed he's um, he's the one who de has developed this strategy and what a winning strategy it is He's the one that basically built this team, uh, made this Shelva a winning team, right? We can say that. Yeah, I would say so. Interesting thing, they used to be um, sponsored by Shell Oil, but Shell Oil left the French Polynesia and now it's uh, Pacific Energy. So, But they kept the name Shell. They asked Shell if they could use the logo, and um, Shell rather smartly said, 
you're the winningest team in, in ever. Of course, you can use our logo. So that's why, why? that's why, why they continue to use it. And you can see how close we are coming into the island of Morea here. You can see the reef, the break on the reef right there. Um, this boat is coming in for a quick turnaround. It's not going to be, um, as I say, if they go inside the reef, they're they're not going to be in there very long because they got to they got to go in, make a turn, come back right back out again. I think you can see the other pass just a little bit to the further south there. So. Um, and the thing is, they're going to be ha they're going to have a side wind as they take this part of the course. So they're not getting in the lagoon, right? Uh, maybe just a little bit. Because I see some boats ahead and right. something that there looks like a buoy. There may be a turn buoy right here at this pass. Well, we're gonna we're gonna know in seconds because they're going super fast and they're gonna reach right. the buoy right in seconds. And you'll see a master class in turning a, a V6 around into the wind. So here. Uh, Scott, we have another guy from Brazil, Eduardo oh. Pirazolo Pinto. He's asking here. Change out for shell. Visão de, de quanto tempo de prova? So, o Eduardo está perguntando quanto tempo de prova aí que a gente Eduardo from Brazil, he's asking, do can we expect how long this race is going to be? Like for how long? It's roughly. A, oh, see, they are going to have a little bit of of lagoon paddle here, but not very much. Um, we're talking about a, a roughly a three, three and a half hour race. It depends entirely on how fast they go back up into the wind. Um, but you can see how fast they've, they've made it across the channel. We're looking at an hour and a half, an hour and a half to go from island to island. And that's, that's our fastest boat, Shell. So we're basically roughly, roughly halfway at well, this point. We, we have to think about that now, the other way back is going to be upwind, so... Exactly. So it's going to be... be average no, 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 no. The, the speed is going to go way down, but we'll so see I again... I would say like a three hours and a half. Probably three and a half hours. hours. Yeah. yeah. The the total race time for all co all competitors is five hours. They give everybody five hours to complete. If you can't complete in five hours, you're disqualified. Here we have, you see them coming inside, they're now well in the pass, they're going to be on the back side of that reef, all of that green water, green, greenish whitish water, that's some seriously, seriously shallow water, there's a lot of coral heads in that water, we experienced that a little bit last, <laughs> last <stuck>. week, <laughs> yeah we might have gotten stuck a little bit in a motorboat, but right. uh, it wasn't like the Titanic. <laughs> I would have let you on the door. <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. Good point. Good point. Yep. So here they come in the pass. They're still getting a push right here. You can see the waves coming in. They build up a little bit more here because it's a little shallower. But some of these passes are about a hundred feet deep. I was looking the results from last year, and they did this race. I think it was like almost five hours. Yeah. Uh, but the race was a little bit longer, right? It was longer because they let their um, their team owner. Um, paddle five for the last 20 minutes of the so basically the owner of the the team got to to paddle a, at the end so they slowed it down a little bit so it was, uh, was almost five hours right? it was it was they had significantly hairier conditions last year okay although i don't know this wind is picking up here we may be looking at a five hour race here yeah. Let me, let me explain for the people in, in Brazil. Então, pessoal, aí, respondendo a pergunta do Eduardo Pirozolo uh, sobre o tempo de prova. Então, Eduardo, uh, como o Scott estava comentando, a gente estava comentando aqui, essa prova, ela mudou do ano, pra, do, do ano anterior para esse ano. Ela diminuiu, eles diminuíram o tamanho da prova, porque... Uh, alguns amadores mencionaram que a prova estava muito longa. Essa prova no ano passado ela, terminaram com mais de 5 horas. Tá? Se você, para ter uma ideia, a gente não tem uma ideia de quanto tempo essa prova uh, certamente vai terminar, porque sempre depende das condições. E o vento subiu bastante agora. O vento está bem forte, não estava assim de manhã, o vento subiu bastante. E para você ter uma ideia, a gente está com 1 hora e 30 minutos, 1 hora e 36 minutos agora de prova. E eles cruzaram, terminaram de cruzar o canal agora para Moré, acabaram de chegar em Moré, estão entrando na lagoa, vamos fazer esse contorno aí na lagoa. Os, os times que estão liderando, que é a Shell Vai e o time Ertaíri, com 1 hora e meia, vamos dizer que eles chegaram em Moré. 
Uh, mas a gente tem que lembrar que eles estavam num downwind forte, então o, o, a velocidade dessas canoas estava uma velocidade alta e eles vão fazer esse caminho de volta, então vai ser um upwind brutal pra, pra, voltando para o Tahiti. Então eles vão pegar toda essa condição que estava a favor deles contra uma remada que vai, 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 vai requerer muito do cardio de, desse pessoal. Se eu tivesse que apostar. Eu ia apostaria que essa prova, apesar de ela estar tá menor que a prova do ano passado, se o vento continuar assim, nós estamos aí falando com, com certeza com mais de 4 horas de prova, com certeza, com certeza. Se fizeram uma hora e meia pra, com downwind, vamos contar aí uh, facilmente mais, uma, mais umas duas horas para voltar. Já, ser, já seriam três horas e meia, com certeza mais de quatro horas de prova aí, beirando se bobear as cinco horas de prova aí uh, para terminar essa prova. Mas fica de olho na transmissão aí, eu já peço para vocês aí, eu sei que hoje estava tendo o Campeonato Brasileiro de Vá, espalhe esse link para pro, os amigos aí uh, do Brasil, aí vocês estão vendo a Pedling Connection, que é um time muito forte aqui do Tahiti, é, com remadores muito experientes, o Kevin CJ aí, um multicampeão, tá fazendo o leme desse time, é um momento histórico do Brasil, vamos aumentar o número de visualizações aí, vamos, vamos, vamos espalhar esse link para a galera do Brasil, dar esse suporte para os remadores brasileiros que estão participando aqui no Tahiti, estão fazendo história, é, é um momento histórico, nunca teve um time brasileiro, um time com brasileiros competindo aqui, um time, para falar a verdade, de fora, um time do exterior, é o primeiro time de fora sem ser taitiano competindo nessa prova aí, tá? Peço para vocês que estão assistindo essa prova aí no Brasil, espalhe esse link aí para a galera a, a, aproveitar essa transmissão. Esse canal é feito aí para ajudar a comunidade da VAA. Então vamos, vamos espalhar isso, continua uh, interagindo nos comentários. Uh, Scott, I was telling people in Brazil it, uh, what we talk about the timing, mm. uh, the, the, how this race is gonna end up. I would, be, I would bet for sure more than four hours. I would think so I too. I would bet for sure more than I four so hours. I think so too. And uh, people to join. And if you guys see this, this, this transmission, please share this link. This, this is to help the VAC community overall around the world to grow, help the peddlers, Uh, find more sponsors and let's let's share this link and, and uh, let's increase the, the, the visibility. So this is actually inside. You're looking inside the lagoon right here. You see all those those channel markers. You see the reef on their on their left side right there. That was the my pals from Mataya in the original in the original Matahina, they're already inside, so they're actually well up in the in the pack, they're you know, all, they're, all, they're well up in the pack. Um, we don't have any kind of official time for them because... Top 10 for sure. Oh, well, for sure, but uh, we're counting the open class, you're looking at Palin Connection uh, coming up at third, Air Tahiti in second, and Shell still in first. Um, there's a lot more racing to come. It's an hour 40 right here. I think you're right, we're looking at about a four hour, four, four hour yeah. and 30 minute race. Yeah, I would bet if they did one hour and 30 minutes just to get in the channel, I think they're if it gonna was go inside the channel and like, a, let's say, if they go fast, do two hours, like that's put 30 minutes more to go an upwind that what I think would be more than that, we are almost close to four hours. Yeah. For sure, they're gonna pedal inside the channel here as well. So yeah, we're talking you know, like a, four to five hours race if the wind continues like like that the, the wind the only picks up during better, the day here yeah that's the thing about racing here generally speaking the, the the winds are at their at their least um in the morning and they just continue to pick up and pick up and pick up and then they'll die off in the evening but uh it we are definitely in a, in a stiffer wind condition now than we were before And we have Ed, Ed Ecker here participating of the comments. Ed, who used usually to run the race in in New York. In New York, that's yeah. right, Liberty. Ed Acker. Ed, Ed Acker was in our uh, in our boat steering us when we we did a submarine impression. Exactly. It was not Ed Acker's fault. It was <laughs> it was conditions fault. No, it was crazy. By the way, an amazing steersman. An amazing steersman. Yeah, he's a great. He's a great guy, great steersman. If you ever get a chance to go up to New Jersey and paddle with Ed and his crew, they're fantastic. 
We are waiting for you back in Florida, Ed. That's right. It's warm in Florida, Ed. It's warm where you are now, too. Right? Yeah, and we see here teams like hydrating and they stop uh, to eat something. We already talked before the importance of keep hydrating right. and feed yourself during this race. It's very, very dry it's here today. Brut, it's a brutal race. The weather, the weather is like a insane. Like it's very hot, very windy. It's it's a big challenge, Scott. It is. I think I think what we're going to see here is um, some of these teams that may not paddle together as much and maybe aren't quite as fit as a shell or a paddling connection or an air Tahiti. They're going to drop well back. Um, it's just a matter of um, also the the synchronicity of the crews. We see some of these crews; they look good, but they're but they're a little bit off. Um, that's going to really tell on them as they head up into the wind. And again, this is this is live streaming. It's a partnership with Our Vibes and the TNTV. They kindly provide the feed for us what's like really nice really amazing and we're just doing the comments in English and Portuguese to the Vibe channel right we're very fortunate to work with TNTV we'd like to thank them we'd like to thank Olivier again uh, for being so generous and of course uh, Patrick from Vodafone and there's more coming soon can coming soon Scott I'm excited inviter Paul right there People from Brazil here still comment. Uh, thanks for the, the answer. Thanks for the comment. You guys doing a great job. Uh, what's the name of the team that the Brazilian are paddling? Uh, oh, so that's, that's Team yeah, South America. Team South America. Team, team South, South America. America. Uh, people say, let's go Brazil. Yeah, the, 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 the VA community in Brazil, it's really strong. It's a really strong and very passionate. They want to be here. They want to be enjoying uh, this. That's why I'm telling you, share, share this for more people to be around this environment. You know, come here, come to Tahiti, come, come participate of those races. You can be here. It's not a big deal. You it's, can be here. It's, it's amazing how welcoming the paddling community is here. Um, how they will put you in a boat with them and 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 you just go it's a it it almost feels like your family immediately uh, we were talking to the minister of sport earlier this morning we were talking about how amazing the hospitality of of the Polynesian people is it's really the reason that um, this is such a jewel of a community and the paddling community is the same it doesn't matter the the, the level of the paddler or the or you know whether they're world champion or just a local paddler you're going to get the same welcome from all of them so um if you haven't thought about coming to french polynesia i encourage you to put it on your bucket list because it's really just an amazing place yeah and now uh scott you in can portuguese i'm gonna go uh, ahead tell people what we're talking in english aí pro pessoal aí do brasil uh já só fazendo um um alô, essa transmissão é uma parceria da Ava Vibes, esse canal que a gente criou aqui fazem dois, três meses para divulgar a cultura da Ava no mundo. Uh, é, desculpa pelo, pelo brabo, o barulho ao redor aqui, que tem muito, muita pessoa torcendo ao redor aqui. E é um, é um canal feito para divulgar a cultura uh, da canoa no mundo. É, o nome aí do, do time brasileiro é um time sul-americano. É a primeira vez que um time não taitiano compete nessa prova. É um time sul-americano. Esse time é formado aí por cinco brasileiros que vieram competir aqui no, no começo da no final de semana na, na Aito e por quatro chilenos. E a gente tiveram uma reunião aí com, com, com o organizador da prova, foram convidados para participar dessa prova. Então estão tendo o privilégio de remar uma das canoas da Shelva A, Pacific Energy. É, e o nome desse time é Team, Team South America. Ah, são quatro brasileiros, cinco brasileiros e, e, quatro, e, e quatro chilenos nesse time, tá? 
uh, fazendo história, fazendo história aqui no, no, no Tahiti. Aí a imagem que vocês têm aí, eles já saíram do Tahiti, entraram aí, chegaram na ilha de Moré, entraram na lagoa e o time líder que está liderando essa prova, que é o time da Shelva A, já está saindo da lagoa para voltar para o Tahiti. Agora eles vão estar tá num upwind brutal, brutal. Eles estavam surfando aí numa média aí de, de estavam fazendo uma média de 16 km por hora, 17 km por hora quase. Agora eles vão ter que pegar essas condições de vento no upwind. Vai ser um upwind brutal aí. Fica acompanhando essa prova. Espalha pro pessoal do Brasil aí para acompanhar esses brasileiros aqui que estão fazendo bonito aqui. Nós temos aí o Fabinho Valongo tá nessa canoa, o Robert Almeida Dias tá nessa canoa. Se vocês conhecem esses atletas, espalha para a família deles, espalha para os amigos. É importante dar esse suporte. Uh, estão aqui representando o nosso país, representando o Brasil, né, a bandeira brasileira, uh, fazendo isso aí para que a VA continue crescendo no Brasil. O Brasil que é hoje, sem dúvida nenhuma, o país que mais tem atletas competindo na VA, o país que mais cresce na VA, com certeza é o Brasil. É importante para essa transmissão estar tá chegando em mais pessoas no Brasil, para que tenham mais brasileiros participando dessa prova no ano que vem. E, e a gente tenha um time 100% brasileiro competindo aqui, não só na, na Ito, mas na Vodafone e outras provas aqui no Tahiti. Então espalha esse link aí para a galera no Brasil. Vamos, vamos, vamos dar esse suporte para os remadores brasileiros aqui no Tahiti. Uh, Scott, we're back to English. Uh, we saw that Shelva is already leaving, leaving right. the, the, the They've left the, the shelter of the, some, somewhat shelter of the lagoon. You see the, what the lagoon paddling is in here uh, looking like. It's actually, they've got a nice little side shop in that, in that uh, lagoon area. But now Shell has, has made the turn and is headed back to Tahiti. The, the difference being that it's not going to be purely upwind, it's going to be a slightly quartering wind out of about 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, uh, and um, so they're going to have to deal with a little bit of side chop as they head into this wind. The wind, as you can probably hear over our microphones, is pretty brutal. It's um, just sitting here, it's, it's, it's a little blowy, so um, it's going to be a, a very, very tough fight coming back to Tahiti now. Yeah, and now, now, as you said, it's a brutal conditions to go back to Tahiti. Absolutely. As you mentioned before, the the fitness condition right now is going to make the difference. This is what's going to tell the tale uh, when you see when you see the level of fitness that these paddlers have, and, and that really is, um, I think, across the board. If we were to, to look last week at at uh, Aito, uh, top 100, these are fit fit individuals. They have cardio they've got aerobic fitness like you just can't believe and and i mean they put miles and miles and miles on their canoes so th what we're going to see here is um ah there's george kronstadt talking about mataya right there and that's the original uh original mataya crew so um and as we said like with scott we talk about the aito uh, earlier and it's insane the level And, and it's amazing to see how that race performs. Basically, if you get like a, the 60 first paddlers, they can win that race. Like the champion from last year finished uh, 40, top 40. 40 yeah. yeah. So it's always changing. Like any anyone that finished that race in the top 60 basically can win the the, the Aito. You you dare. It's just a, a matter of detail, right? And this detail is gonna make difference now in the upwind. Absolutely. To, so Absolutely. we can have like a this race is started having a, a definition who's gonna be who uh, uh, fin in, the, in the finish line, right? It's, it's all gonna sort itself out right here, right now. By the time they make the pass uh, southwest of the airport in Faa, it's going to be uh, It's going to be almost a done deal. It would be almost impossible to overcome. So anybody who wants to make a move, this is their opportunity right now in the upwind. Um, as you see them exiting the, the very short uh, turnaround in the, in the lagoon at Morea right there. Beautiful Morea in the background. Uh, actually, um, a great place to visit, great for snorkeling. And um, this is apparently where whales will come to calf for the winter, the humpback whales in Morea. Thanks for letting me know. I'm gonna be there tomorrow. Okay, take pictures. <laughs> you said you said about uh, making their movement, and we saw 
a very strong start for a lot of teams. If all the teams are like a strong start, Shelva took the lead right away. But we had some change on the second and third position. The first part of the downwind, teams were like going hard and were head, head to head with Shell. Mm -hmm. And on the second part of the downwind, getting close to Morera, we saw that this movement that you're talking about, we saw Team Air Tahiti moving and we saw paddling connection come from behind also as well. Correct. Like now, if I'm not mistaken, we have Shelva, Team Air Tahiti right away and paddling connection. Yes. So, how, how important it is to have a, a more relaxed, not relaxed in a way that easy, but control your rhythm and be experienced in the beginning of the race to save energy for this upwind. The well, this is true. The this is true. And you saw Shell conserving energy on a lot of those downwind portions. They would catch a wave and they call their paddlers out of the water. They let them let them rest as much as they possibly can given it's a race condition. The fact is though that they've got that long stroke. They've really perfected the boat glide. Even in, oh wow, check them out going into the waves. You saw that boat launch itself wow. into the air. That's the kind of speed that they're generating off these paddles. There's a lot of kick off the back of the paddle and they are going to, like, they apply their pressure all the way through the stroke and the boat shoots over the waves. And let me ask you, they're going to be, be performing the changes also on the upwind, right? Absolutely. How, how this the, uh, is different from doing the same change during the downwind when you like, a, for the steersman, he has to calculate uh, how the speed that he's going maybe he has to slow down the boat a little bit for the the paddlers to come back uh, a little bit i mean you have to slow the boat a little bit the other thing is you know he's he's basically now weather veining into this wind so he has to make sure the boat isn't going sideways and look at the waves that they're that they're taking over the bow here that's that's what they're going to be fighting the entire way back Andre. And these are, if I'm not mistaken, steamer Tahiti yeah, hammering, Air Tahiti. That's coming right. really strong. So it's got, they look like a... And then just behind them is Hino Rorea from Reitea. And then we've got, and then we've got paddling, paddling connection in this mix. So as I say, fitness is going to, and see how their stroke rating has increased. They're going up into the wind, so they have to actually increase their rating. They're going to try and surf the back of these waves as much as they can. Um, it's a little bit of a hard, hard thing to do simply because you've got such a stiff, stiff headwind that you're going into. But um, the, the, the Polynesians have perfect, perfected this form of paddling. Yeah, and Scott, they come really strong in this upwind. And right behind them, like another team, like they're attacking and attacking. That's the part of the race that is the brutal for is brutal for your body. So this is, maybe we're gonna be more see more changes in this part of the race. Two or two two pro changes. Probably. probably so. To keep that rating going and to keep your boat proceeding in, at that pace, it's. I mean, yeah, you've got a you've got a tight race. See exactly what we were talking about. We've got closure happening right here. We've got um, one boat's nose to the butt of the other, and we we're gonna we're gonna see a little. He's coming right up the tailpipe of that of that boat. Hopefully, in this this in this. Uh, oh, I think I think we have another movement here, uh, Scott. From the color of the boat, this blue boat looks like a, a looks the paddling connection boat. Might be. They're terrific in an upwind. They're absolutely terrific in an upwind so condition. So if if it's paddling connection here in this, might have taken a, overtaken Air maybe, Tahiti. Maybe, maybe. And, uh, and we saw that the white boat behind them was being catch up by the the red boat. Yep. So I wonder if this drone image can keep keep like a pushing so we can see the the gap see where the, the shell, shell is. Yeah. He is. Uh, my hat's off to the drone driver in this wind. Oh yeah. That it's always a deep. It's always a challenge uh, to do this type of coverage, guys. Uh, it's a very challenge. I was looking the um, the. Our nationals this early morning in Brazil, they were doing a great a great job over there. And it's challenging, even like a, we, we, now we have the privilege to work with TNTV, that they're doing this amazing job. This is a, a multi-million dollars production. Right. Uh, but you see that even though 
it's quite challenging to, because in the middle of the ch uh, channel uh, streaming point to point uh, from one island to, uh, to another this is a uh, pretty remarkable footage though you can see that first chase boat trailing the canoe there and then but yep. you can see some closure in the gap right there as well look you've got these that's yeah. right we see this yellow chase boat we don't looks like would be the shell yells uh, shell, the shells is the is yellow, boat. yellow the canoe is not yellow so no. i wouldn't say that shell probably no. that's canoe. see and here we go if you look at these two canoes on the screen right here this one by is is starting to overtake the other clearly we're dealing with a crew that's got some serious fitness I want to say that that is the team from Bora Bora that is getting ready to overtake Air Tahiti right there. That's their canoe. That's Bora Bora team is a really strong team and like they were way behind and now they're passing. Well, and if they do Hawaii Nui, they're used to being used to being in open water conditions. They go from island to island for the Hawaii Nui. It's a three-stage race. And you can see right here this is a fantastic opportunity for this one boat to overtake the other. I wonder if there's a steam at Tahiti, maybe not, Scott. I don't see the red logo on the side of the canoe. No. I think that's Hino Rorea. Yeah. I think that's the Riotan team. Yeah. That's true, that's I can't, true. I can't see a number, but that so looks like them. I think I would bet right now that Look this, this team though. is getting now the fourth position yep. on yep. the race. Yep, but look at this, look at this. Oh. What a beautiful image of the drone. Absolutely so beautiful racing right here. Guys, for you guys that are like uh, just joined the transmission right now, they are going in a brutal upwind going back to Tahiti, from Morea to Tahiti. Uh, the conditions are like really, really challenging. The wind is really strong, really strong wind. The weather is like super hot. So these people has to be hydrating and, and um, getting some any type of food we're gonna be looking for changes soon because it's being really hard and being brutal to those athletes right now absolutely but you can see how they picked up their pace here this is this is just utterly brutal going into wind like this and just as a reminder Scott we have the the women's race happening right now Unfortunately, we don't have image from the women's the the, the women's race. It's a different uh, it's route, a different, a different course. course that they are doing, but they are doing that race. Uh, it's a 32 kilometer race, 32 and, km and basically we're we're expecting them. Right now, it's uh, an hour and 59 minutes uh, since the launch of all the boats. The, the first teams we'll probably see in about 30 minutes from the women's. And uh, only six people, no change. That's right, iron. That was Team Manahi. Manahi is from the Tuamotu group, so basically they are they are out to the east of us here. Um, Manahi is, is a, also a, a stop on the Te Aito tour. So there's a, there's a Te Aito uh, challenge race that happens there, and, and winners of that get to compete. Yeah. And for you guys, almost, that almost two hours into the race here. Two hours of race already. Two hours of the race, and they didn't even get the middle of the channel going back to Tahiti. So yeah, definitely we're talking about uh, more uh, than four It's going to be race. at least a four, four and a half hour race, yeah. for sure, for sure, especially in these conditions. Nunuiva, another uh, veteran 14. Nunuiva from Bora Bora. Another team from Bora Bora. Lots of lots of strong paddlers on some of these other islands. Manateo Owen, the perennial champion, is in this boat. Second place on the the Aito this year. In the Aito uh, for the uh, 40 and over. Manateo Owen. Manateo Owen. Just finished behind uh, George Cronston. Aí o pessoal do Brasil que está acompanhando essa prova maravilhosa aí da Vodafone, Brasil fazendo história, cinco remadores brasileiros nessa prova, quatro remadores do Chile representando o time da, da América do Sul, tá? uh, temos nesse, nesse time aí o, o, o Fábio Valongo, o Robert Almeida Dias, uh, outros nomes da canoagem brasileira, uh, a prova, temos duas horas de prova, 
é uma prova que sai da, do Tahiti, da ilha de Tahiti, vai para a ilha de Moreia e volta para o Tahiti, entra no canal aqui, termina aqui no, no, em Pirê. Uh, nós já fizemos a primeira parte da prova aí, completamos a primeira parte da prova, o, down, o primeiro downwind da prova. Agora eles estão fazendo esse upwind brutal, as condições de vento é, muito forte, muito forte aqui. O pessoal está necessitando muita hidratação e comida durante essa prova, porque as condições estão bem desafiadoras para essa prova aí. Mas aí, temos o time brasileiro, um time brasileiro, um time sul-americano. Uh, para falar a verdade, é um time, é o primeiro time não, tá, não uh, polinésio uh, que está participando dessa prova. Tá? Uh, Brasil, Chile fazendo história aí. Estão remando na canoa da Shell, famosa Shelly, canoa amarela da Shell, uh, fazendo história aqui no Tahiti. Vamos dar um suporte para esse time aí. Vamos dar um, continuar assistindo o pessoal espalhar esse link, link aí. Fátima Pirozolo que está acompanhando a gente desde o começo da transmissão. Uh, um abraço para todos vocês aí no Brasil, para a comunidade da Vale do Brasil. Uh, Scott, we see here. Manihi. Manihi. Manihi Barra. From the Tuamotus, Manihi is a is a an atoll. So basically, they have a very large uh, uh, lagoon, um, and their island is a ring around the lagoon. So in fact, they they paddle miles across an open water lagoon, and um, they're used to wind out there. It's a low lying island, and um, Tuamotus are very different from from where we are in the Society Islands right here. Society Islands, as you saw. Uh, with Morea and then as we're coming back to Tahiti, these are large volcanoes. They still rise well above the ocean level. The Tuamoto group, uh, these are, are coral atolls and they are um, ring, ring islands basically and, and very, very low to the water, very windswept, not a lot of cover from, from the land. I think you don't Mihere have right here. Island. What's that? I don't think you have cars. You're gonna never see cars in those islands. Uh, actually, they're boats. they're they're big enough that there's yeah. some cars in, uh, on them for sure. Uh, not as many as you might find. But even in the society islands here, as you get further and further away from the larger islands, um, we were on uh, Taha'a the other day. Taha'a only has about uh, 6,000 people living on it. One road that circumnavigates, and very few roads that go e even remotely into the interior of the island. So very few vehicles out there. But even there, on the motus outside of uh, Taha'a, there were houses. Now, that's a long distance to go for groceries. <laughs> uh, you know, it's um, if you're out of laundry detergent, you might you might <laughs> you might have a problem. Here we have Team Mahere. And you see, that's why I feel comfortable doing this live transmission with you. The, guys, you're listening here, the new voice of the VAA community is Scott Miller. <laughs> Scott Miller now is considered for, for a, a lot of people the new voice of the VAA community. I, I think you're talking about my mother and father, <laughs> the, if, that, if they count as a lot of people. Comments from Portugal, Scott. Marcelo Amaral, Carrano Moana, Portugal. Great transmission. Oh, Great fantastic. Transmission. Pessoal do Porto de Portugal aí, meus amigos de Portugal. Uh, obrigado aí, Marcelo, pelo suporte aí, uh, tá acompanhando a transmissão ao vivo aí. Meu papai aí é português, eu tenho sangue português aqui também. Uh, vamos continuar crescendo a, a comunidade da VAI em Portugal. Espalhe esse link aí para a maioria dos portugueses aí para par, uh, par, uh, participarem dessa transmissão. E quem sabe a gente tem um time português aqui competindo no Tahiti ano que vem. Tem mais novidades vindo aí, provas de V1 na Flórida, nos Estados Unidos, no Brasil. As provas não param. Vai para o Brasil, que tu, não, uma prova atrás do outro, todo final de semana você tem prova lá. Mas Marcelo, desde já obrigado aí pelo, pela, pelo suporte, aí por estar acompanhando essa transmissão aí de Portugal. Nossos irmãos portugueses aí. I was just giving a shout out for my Portuguese community. That's fantastic. We speak, all the, we speak the same language. My father is Portuguese, uh, uh, actually. I didn't know that. So I have the Portuguese blood. Here there you go. Yeah. There you go. We're here. We're looking at Hino Horrea. They're from Reitea. Doing very well. Battling the, uh, the upwind. Looking very, very strong. Very, very strong. You got to battle, uh, battle with those blades deep, boys. 
absolutely beautiful paddling though here. It's going to be consistency of paddling and strength that's going to win this race. So this was the team that was in second position in the beginning of the, the race? Absolutely. This was the team that was duking it out in, in the early stages of the downwind uh, with Shell. But as you can see, they still look very strong. They've got a very, very consistent stroke. We were on the water with these with these gentlemen uh, the other day, and uh, they were... Uh, <laughs> they were out in the middle of a thunderstorm. Actually, it was kind of it was a little bananas. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna give them props for for practicing as much as they possibly could to try and win this race. And they're doing a very great job right now. They were in fourth place uh, up until recently, and here we see the leader, leader Sh Shelva. Shell. The thing about it is, though, the wind that the the pursuers are having to deal with, Shell has to deal with the exact same thing. It's all about the training, but look at the look at the rating. See how much their rating has come up, and the consistency as they as they uh, take their changes. It's pretty amazing. And now, and we, and we can see that the gap is getting uh, bigger. Oh yeah, yeah. Shell is Shell is king for a reason. The Tahitian TV here interviewing a uh, jiu-jitsu fighter. It's a brown belt. Oh, uh, this is the MMA? Yeah, it's a... Uh, Sorry, we had an MMA competition here. Check out Shell, though. Their, their rating has increased considerably. They're going to take full advantage of, of the, the, the speed and the strength of their paddlers. Um, they change out their, their, their crews almost on an annual basis. It's not a lock. If you're on Shell this year, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be on shell next year that's true um you know they're they're looking for the 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 premier paddler who can blend with their crew and practice with them and and uh become part of the unified team that's true that's true that's true and you have some here like this event that patrick put put together He's he's putting more uh, more uh, modalities, more more different sports for this event. You have MMA, you have Jiu Jitsu, uh, you have dance, you have Polynesian dance okay. here. Yeah. So Patrick is like a it's a guy that lives for the sport. He's a, a passionate uh, by sport, and he's doing a great job with the Vodafone race. Yeah, absolutely. This is a this is a premier event strongly recommend you come out here and, and see these events and participate in them for yourself this is the kind of uh this is the kind of thing if you if you love outrigger if you love ah then you really need to uh to make your way out here to the middle of the pacific and and see it firsthand you'll be impressed i think is the the very least amount of what you'll feel here that's true it's a totally yeah. different vibe out here and we have here what I would say that Team El Tahiri right now. That's Very Team strong. Team El Tahiri, uh, I would bet they're in the second position. Yeah, Team yep. El Tahiri still second position, paddling connection right after. Popora Tehoi Mamu from, from Bora Bora has, uh, over, as we saw them overtaking Ororea from Rayetea. Manihi pulling up into the sixth position. Look at that. EDT dropping down to 10 there. All of these boats incredibly strong. All of these boats are are uh, just of a world-class caliber. So it's a uh, it's looking more and more like Shell's race. But honestly, any of the top three, top four boats could probably pull it out. So once we make that final turn into the into the lagoon here on Tahiti, you'll have a real sense of of where things stack up. But right now. Uh, we're just going to enjoy the show. Yeah. And, and uh, Scott, we have more people joining the transmission right now. Uh, as I was telling you before, we have the nationals in Brazil. Some of the paddlers that are joining right now was racing the, oh. the, the, the V6 earlier in Rio de Janeiro. Hey, congratulations. And we have a, see, uh, like, we have Andre Mota giving a shout out for Fabinho, Léo, André, Gustavo, Surf Ho in Brazil. So I'm just going to jump to Portuguese sure. a little bit. Então, pessoal aí do Brasil, eu tava falando com o Scott aqui, momento histórico. O André Mota aí, ó. Bora, Fabinho, Léo, André, Gustavo, Surf Ho in Brazil. Lembrando que o, os, os atletas brasileiros, cinco atletas brasileiros, estão participando dessa prova. É a primeira vez que um time não taitiano, um time não polinésio rema nessa prova da Vodafone eles estão remando a canoa a famosa Shell, a canoa da Shell 
uh, fazendo história aqui, são cinco brasileiros e quatro chilenos, é, é um time que veio para competir na DAI, que foi convidado para participar dessa prova. Uh, nós temos nessa prova aí o Fábio Valongo, uh, representando a Itaipu Surf Roy, o Leonardo Pir uh, Pirozolo, também da Itaipu Surf Roy, o Gustav Jacob, da escola de V1 Jacob, o André Gerbatin, da Itaipu Surf Roy, e o Robert Almeida Dias, nosso campeão brasileiro de V1, que é, terminou top 100 da, da, da Aito e está classificado para a Super Aito. E aí, juntando aqui na transmissão, uh, nós temos aqui o Cauê Serra, meu amigo pessoal, Cauê Serra do Brasil. O Cauê, eu falo para muitos aí, uh, bom, eu não vou falar para quem não conhece o Cauê, porque todo mundo aí no Brasil deve que se você faz parte da, da, da V1 e da, da, da VA no Brasil, seja OC1, V1... Você deve conhecer o meu Cauê, se não conhece, meu amigo, faz uma pesquisa aí, porque o cara, eu falo para todos aqui, é o maior representante e divulgador da cultura taitiana no Brasil. Tá? Aqui eu acho que temos amigos aqui, o Leo, Leandro Pirozolo, bora Léo Pirozolo, Aloha Surf Roy, a Jade Fox, mandando um abraço para os brasileiros. Pessoal aí, parabéns para vocês que tão, muitos estavam competindo hoje na prova uh, no campeonato brasileiro de Vaá que eu estava acompanhando essa prova aí, a transmissão dessa prova peço para vocês desde já que estão juntando estão cansados acabaram de sair mas divulga esse canal para dar um suporte para esses brasileiros que estão aqui no Tahiti fazendo parte fazendo história como muitos que já fizeram história aqui o, Bra o Cauê aí por exemplo foi um dos primeiros se não foi o primeiro a estar tá remando a De Aito um grande nome da canoagem meu amigo Cauê Cauê, muito legal de ver você aqui, muito obrigado por estar divulgando a cultura taitiana aí no Brasil, Cauê, um abraço. Eu vou estar voltando aqui para o inglês, mas manda os comentários em português aí e espalha esse link para o máximo de pessoas para a gente ter um suporte aí uh, para esses atletas do Brasil aqui. Scott, I was telling my fellows in Brazil that some big names of the sport are joined the transmission, uh, one of them is Cauê Serra. Cauê Serra... Uh, for people who doesn't know him, he was one of the first South American paddlers to race the Aito back in the days. Cauê Serra is by far the most passionate and the people who most spread the Tahitian culture in Brazil. Fantastic. A V1 paddler, uh, uh, Cauê Serra, uh, also uh, has a support from, from Evolution Canoes, a paddle team in, in Brazil. So a uh, shout out for Cauê Serra, uh, my, it's my, from my city, it's from Santos. Nice, nice. Well, welcome, welcome to everyone who's listening to the broadcast, both in Brazil, as well as the United States and Portugal and anywhere else that uh, you find yourself uh, streaming with us here on uh, Vibes, uh, Black Belt Paddler, Andre uh, Zouza right next to me here. So, uh, shout out to our friends at TNTV who are assisting us with this broadcast. You see Aroe Va right here. And uh, look at this. This is some amazing paddling with this, uh, this team. Not top 10, but battling it out into the waves, launching that nose over the wave tops. Serious power coming off the back of the paddle. And we, ca we cannot forget to mention the names of the four guys from Chile. No, no. This canoe is not a 100% Brazilian canoe. It's a South American team. You have uh, four people from Chile, four paddlers from Chile. One Bostelman, Fernando Zegers, Bruno Zalatar, and Matias Ortega. So if you know someone from Chile who knows those guys, please join the, tell them to join the streaming and, and participate and give this support because they are making history as well here a true well. international boat a, a, true, international a true international boat, boat here uh you know representing all of south america all of the 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 portuguese and the spanish cultures uh there there in south america we're excited to see them and uh, what a pleasure is to paddle that shell vaca no? oh my gosh yes yeah they were very excited about that yesterday extremely excited about that <laughs> Aixa Ramos, who's that? Aixa, Aixa, great paddler, great dragon boat and, and, and six man paddler from, from Miami. Exactly. A, Welcome a, big to the name, a big name, a big name of the Florida paddling community. Welcome to the transmission, Aixa. 
Good to see you here, Aiza. Thanks for the support. Here you see a little team. You might you might have heard of them, uh, Shelva. Look at their rating. They've increased their rating into the wind. This is all part of their strategy. You s remember how long and fluid they were downwind. Now they're increased their rating, but still the smoothness of this crew as they head up into this brutal wind, the battering of the waves of, over the, the nose of their boat. It's just a, it's a testimony to their fitness. It's a testimony to their training as a group, how well they're doing. And people from Panama, people from Panama following us here, joining the, the, the transmission. Angie Whitmore, Korea from Panama. Fantastic. The paddling is growing in Panama right now. I think Paolo was visiting Panama. Hey, I see Anna Turnova, a former teammate of mine on Team USA. Hello, Anna. Hello from the Hui. We just saw a change out for, for Shell right there. And off they go again. That's like a three second turnaround in that boat. Yeah. Takes me three seconds to get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Takes me more than that. <laughs> <laughs> so Anna is the Russian fan. Of That's that. right. It's a very strong dragon boat. Yeah, she's there. a she's an excellent dragon boater, excellent paddler. We're excited to see you on Anna. Here, Shell leading this race, following by Team Tahiti. The gap is considered big right now. Yeah, and I think they're just doing nothing but increasing it. I think you're seeing you're seeing their training kind of uh, really. It's like the the training will out. They're they're really doing incredibly well here. And another thing, is Scott, uh, I talk by uh, experience. Like uh, I, wh how I feel when I'm paddling, and it's difficult when you try to follow someone. You're coming from behind. Sometimes you have that. If you see that you're catching up, you have that. The spiritual power that mm. comes like you know right but in this case i think the great difference was the start of the shelva right away they took the lead yes so right away they started putting the, their pace so for the other boats it's more comparing the seven try to pursue exactly Shelvaa. that's when usually you get out of timing a little bit of time shell shell basically makes everybody race their race and it's a it's a great strategy. It's worked for them for about the past 16 years. They've they've won multiple Molokai Hoys. They've won multiple Vodafone races. They're just they're they're a dominant force. Um, you know, I think a team that probably rivals them in some ways is is Paddling Connection. Um, they they have a fitness level that's equivalent to to Shell, and uh, they also have. Uh, uh, a great coach in Wilfredo Amin and so they they, they also have kind of a, a sensibility that's similar to to a shell but I just when you look at shell and the way they paddle they just they really there's they're, they're second they're second to none they're really second to none yeah it, it's different they are so timing is perfect they are so relaxed in the water they know each other for each one so well as you were saying they paddle as a fan they do. I want to point out something too with the shell boat. If you look at it here, look at how much their peperu, their steers person, is paddling. He's paddling almost as much as the as the main body of the boat. There's very little poking going on here. Occasionally, a little bit here on the right, a little bit there on the left. But I mean, if you look at this, look at how many strokes he's putting in. He's putting in just as many strokes. When six people paddle a boat, it goes faster than when five pa people paddle a boat. Regular steersman, yep. and zoom someone who is like a different. So when you have the, the pepperoni paddling, you basically have another man in the canoe putting power in the canoe, making the canoe go. Right, right. Another change here in the same time. This is the team from Rurutu Tamarai Araiva. So they're they're up there in the hunt. Another quick change in and out of the boat. Seats one, three, and five. Another thing here, Scott, they were going to tell, like, people uh, around the world, they have, like, a, uh, different setups of command in their canoes. For an example, usually I see a lot of teams have the steersman as the, as the captain, but 
when I enjoy some time in Brazil that year, it actually means more uh, Tahitian style that the captains, the sea trees, the captain. Right. That's what we see here in the Polynesian uh, islands. The sea trees, the one is the captain of right. the world, right? Right. All of the calling is happening there. Um, when you're in a boat, seat three is going to keep sort of a running commentary, if you will. Um, it's a little difficult if you don't speak French and Polynesian to sort of keep up with them. So as a as a non-French, non-Polynesian speaker, I'm I'm just sort of looking at the paddle cues and 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 picking up when they pick up and going long when they go long. But but um, as I said before, it's a very very quiet commentary that happens in that boat. Seat three is talking to seats one and two all the time he he's indicating to them what he wants or what she wants and they will they will just with inflection in their voice they'll indicate that they want it up or they want a long or they want it to be a, a hutipare or a roa or whatever it is that they're about to do so so it's really impressive to see how quietly they're able to affect the cadence in, in the canoe and make uh, seats one and two perform and then the rest of the boat follows so occasionally peperu will talk occasionally occasionally but most of the conversation is as you say coming from seat captain in three it's about the intonation it's also about the, it's all, always about the sound right yes yeah i mean it's the difference between it i mean their their change call we do the we do the hut or we do the hut ho in 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 north america but they'll say something like hip and that's all you will hear but that's that's your indication that that you need to do it but if you hear a hip ah uh, then it's a then it's a, a quick change we have Fatima Pirozolo here. She's the mom of Leo, Leo Leonardo. Oh, right on. She's following the, the, the transmission since the beginning. Fatima, um abraço aí. Obrigado por estar acompanhando aí o filhão desde o começo da prova aí. Um abraço. Um abraço para a família. Yes, you can see here, Scott. Team Air Tahiti. On the pursuit. Shalva A. Yep. They also have picked up their rating, as you can see. Very strong team. Very strong team, and they still have have weight coming off the back of the boat that shows the speed even into this wind that they're that they're doing. And they have a big gap for paddling connection as well. Yeah, they do. I have to say, I'm curious to see as as time elapses here, and we're coming into two and a half hours when the first women's teams are going to start coming into the into the little bay here in Pere. We're at uh, Park Aretini Hall right here in Pire, in Papayete, Tahiti, French Polynesia. It's a utterly beautiful day, but super windy, super, super windy. No feed. We have no feed for the women, so we're 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 in the same, <laughs> quite literally the same boat as you all. We're waiting to see them. Basically, we're waiting to see them come around the corner, and once they come, we'll we'll try and give you at least a, an audio of what's happening there. Here's Air Tahiti Va'a right here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stroke. Same thing happening here. The Peperu is is paddling. Strong team. Very strong team. Kyle Tarafau is on this team. Kyle Tarafau, we have a Hengo team, we have Tani. Tani is on this team. Hosu he, is in this team. He's an amazing paddler. It's a very strong team that like I mean this past year, I think they beat Shelva in two or three races. So it's like, I would say now that this is their main contender. Like a Probably so. In years past, it's been OPT, it's been EDT. We see we see EDT in the top ten. They were at tenth place uh, last time we checked. OPT, I have not seen in this race. Was always in the past was the EDT, the OPT, and paddling connection. Yep. Yep. Those were the top four. Paddling connection is still in it, obviously. A great, great team. But yeah, they're looking like a freight train right here. Very 
US but is here people uh, you guys let me know if you guys can hear me actually the comments here then I don't know I can hear you now just give me a feedback on the comments if you're able to hear the comments I don't think they can hear you Andre I think we have a Let's see if we we're yeah, going to change out a mic for Andre. Audio right now. Ronaldo Conforto, o áudio do André está muito baixo. Let me know, me avisa aí se melhorou o áudio aí, oh, oh, Ronaldo. Yeah, there. Uh, uh, we got our friend Norman Solo. James who just who just popped up here. Surfer. Norman James has just joined us here. Norman James. Norman who, James, who boat captain, the, boat captain extraordinaire, boat captain who took us out to Chopo and uh, we we're checking out some surfing last week. He has his famous channel called The Taboo Time with Norman James. <laughs> <laughs> If you ever come to Tahiti, you got to look up Norman because he knows he knows everybody here and uh, he's actually um, If he can hook you up with some of his pineapple, holy moly, that is some good stuff right there. Yeah, Joe Norman James is a Hawaiian living here in Tahiti for a lot of years. He knows everything here. If you come into Tahiti, look for this guy. He can help you here, give you any assistance that you need uh, here in, in Tahiti. Here we got Vinny Vao on the screen. You can see again. Uh, they've brought their rating up to accommodate for this this headwind. It's a it, it's just a matter of course. You cannot continue with that super long stroke like you had in the downwind. You can see that there's that they're trying to take advantage of the back end of the waves too. You know, downhill is downhill no matter which way the wave is going. But it's a harder course when you're heading right into this vicious vicious headwind. Okay, looks like looks like my audio is better right now. People are saying. So we back in action. Yep. Aí o Fernando Teixeira, o Fernando Teixeira, Ronaldo Conforte, mais pessoas de da, do Brasil aí juntando a, a transmissão uh, e com, vamos 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 espalhar esse link aí para o máximo de pessoas possível para a gente dar esse suporte para os atletas brasileiros aí competindo na competindo na, na prova aqui no, uh, no Tahiti. Uh, now now we're talking here Scott to people to join the transmission uh, and also if you know someone who is here in Tahiti and, and in the race tell them to come here and, and give a shout out for us we are here with the TNTV transmission come here we're gonna pitch you in camera we're gonna we want to hear from you guys if you want to talk about your favorite pedra or whatever o pessoal do brasil aí se você tem algum brasileiro que está aqui no Tahiti agora que está assistindo essa prova aqui pede para ele vir aqui para eles virem aqui na mesa uh, participar dessa transmissão dá um alô para gente aqui nós estamos aqui do lado do, da, da tv tahitiana do fazendo essa transmissão em parceria com eles uh, aí vocês podem ver aí que eles já saíram do Tahiti entraram uh, no canal de Moreia já passaram por esse canal com uma hora e meia de prova e agora eles estão fazendo o trajeto de volta num, num upwind aí brutal e já quase chegando no para entrar no canal do do não essa essa imagem geral do que vai ser a prova é. então nós estamos aí falando em duas horas e meia de prova já eu, eu, eu iria apostar que essa prova vai demorar mais de quatro horas Scott I was just giving a, a shout out for people in Brazil in Portuguese uh, to join the transmission if they have any Brazilian here or any other people around the world if you're here in Tahiti and watching this race come here It will be a pleasure to have you guys here with us participating uh, uh, on the comments. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's great. It's great to hear from everybody back in the United States, back from Brazil. And now we go back to the action. I think the key to some of these teams, too, is the smoothness of their changes. You'll see it's like that was a beautiful change right there. Unified. The whole boat working together. 
This is the team from Bora Bora. Okay, from let's see if this image is gonna give us where where we are in the course right now. now. Yeah. So somewhere in the middle of the channel. In the middle of the channel. With Thirty-six kilometers complete right now. So just a quick calculating here. They were one hour and a half when they got to the channel in Morea. Right. So we took one more hour to go back to the middle of the channel. The middle of the channel. We so probably have another hour at least to get to the at island. At least another 45 minutes, 15 right. minutes to reach the, the, the Tahiti. So we're going to be talking about more than three hours and a half, three hours and a half. Yeah. I would, I would bet it would be like... Uh, four and a half probably. Yeah. Four and a half. Not more than four and a half. Yeah. For shell. Yeah, here we are in the middle of the channel with the team from Bora Bora. You can see that they're like dealing with this headwind. <laughs> the waves don't stop just because you're going into the wind now. You've got to deal with them heading back. And in this image you can see the drone getting like an image. I would say this blue canoe is paddling connection. Let's take a look here. It may be Hino Rao. Rao. Well, this Hino is Scott, Scott Miller here. He's, he knows everything here. No, no, no. He knows all the teams. He's no, no, no. so knowledgeable. It's good to have a guy doing the transmission. I feel comfortable. I already told you that. I'm glad you... That's because of the chair you're sitting in. You feel yeah, so comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Scott Miller, the new voice of the VAR community. Listen, we've got, we've got amazing paddlers here. Uh, anybody, anybody who has watched paddling for any, any amount of time knows these knows these paddlers has seen them competing over the past past 10 15 years this is a truly remarkable opportunity to be here with them live from french polynesia and uh, seeing them seeing them out on a course like this a world-class course world-class waters um, I, I'm, I'm hoping in the future we're going to see more paddlers from Hawaii, more paddlers from North America, South America, even from Europe. They do the Vandeva. They've got um, some. Where you go now? That's right. Some paddlers. Uh, Iloha Eshen from from France. She's here. Here's the amazing team from uh, Bora Bora again. You, we saw them overtake Hino Rorea earlier, uh, right as they were coming out of the pass. They took full advantage of the fact that uh, they had the power to overtake, and, and now that's where we are. And let's see where we are. Oh, Paddling Connection has snuck up to, to fourth place, Matea, in fifth. Way to go, Mataya. Hino Rorea dropping to six. Manihi is moving up to seventh place. EDT strong EDT at ten. Right now in ten. Yeah, Shell still preeminent. Air Tahiti is uh, probably the team that's uh, going to give them the, the biggest uh, bump, but uh, Popora Tehoi Mamu is uh, from Bora Bora. They're looking very strong there in the middle of the channel. So it's. Uh, it's anybody's race still, but uh, Shell is, is kind of locking it up a little bit here. And, and Scott, more people from Brazil joined the transmission. Cal Carol Policarpo mentioned like the surf hold. The, the Brazilian community is very passionate for their, their clubs, right? Yes, yes. And we have like paddlers from Surf Ho or Hoi paddling today. Uh, we have the doctora, Dr. Priscilla Valongo. I wonder if it's, she is the wife or a, a might family be, member might from be a relation Fabio Valongo. Of, of Fabio Valongo. And Andre Mota, he says here, this route, the way back, the upwind, it's really brutal. Oh my gosh, he's so correct. Right. Even here in this little bay here in Pire, we're looking at, at waves rolling into the, into the little bay here. That would be a problem for most paddlers. What these, what these guys are dealing with outside is uh, truly remarkable. Yeah, and now in Portuguese here, it's called O pessoal que tá juntando aí a Carol Policarpo da Surf Roy, representando a Surf Roy Surf Roy que tem, meu, aqui, se eu não me engano, três atletas nessa prova Itaipu Surf Roy A doutora Priscila Valongo, doutora Priscila Valongo Eu suponho aqui que é um, é um membro da família do Fabinho Valongo que também tá nessa prova o André Mota aí mencionando que essa volta aí, esse upwind tá bravo demais aí, tá mesmo André, tá brutal, as condições de vento aqui estão sinistras, 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 lembrando a todos aí que cinco brasileiros estão nessa prova, uh, os cinco brasileiros são Fábio Valongo, representando a Itaipu Surf Roy, o Leonardo Pirozolo, também da Itaipu Surf Roy, o Gustavo Jacob, 
da escola de V1 Jacob, o André Gerbatim, o monstro André Gerbatim, clube da, é, Itaipu Surf Roy, e o nosso fenômeno brasileiro, o campeão brasileiro de VA, de V1, o Robert Almeida Dias, o nosso Robert é, Top 100, Top 100 na De Aito, está classificado para a Super Aito esse ano, Uh, esse pessoal veio para competir na Super Aito, todos eles aí competiram na Super Aito, tiveram resultados maravilhosos aí, a comunidade brasileira que veio aqui representar o Brasil no, no Tahiti, tá de parabéns as meninas aí que vieram para cá, uma, uma, uma galera grande do Brasil que veio para cá, andei conversando muito com essa galera e eles me falaram, André, uh, espalha isso aí, o quanto é importante uh, a gente estar tá aqui e, e viver essa, é, 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 o que é a, essa cultura da, do VAC na, na, na Polinésia Francesa. Uh, e a ideia desse canal é, é exatamente essa, é trazer mais remadores para competir fora do país, para estar tá, é, compartilhando e vivenciando essa experiência, experiência maravilhosa que é estar tá aqui, não só na Polinésia Francesa, mas também na Europa, nos Estados Unidos, é, divulgando essa comunidade brasileira do VAC, que é... Sem dúvida nenhuma, a maior comunidade do VAR hoje no mundo é a VAR brasileira, é a, VAR, é, é, é a comunidade que mais cresce no mundo e todo mundo está de olho nessa comunidade aí. O pessoal do Brasil, é, vocês estão de parabéns aí, é bonito ver o quanto a VAR cresceu no Brasil e o potencial do remador brasileiro. Tá? Vamos divulgar esse link aí para a galera, vamos dar um valor para esse, esse time de cinco brasileiros que está aqui. É um time sul-americano, para falar a verdade. É o primeiro time não tahitiano a estar participando dessa prova. É uma, estão remando numa canoa histórica da Shell. Treinaram com a Shell aqui. Conheceram o, o, o treinador da Shell, dividindo experiência. Vão trazer muito, mas muita bagagem para o Brasil. Tá? E, eu tenho que mencionar aqui que eles estão dividindo a canoa com quatro chilenos. Que é o Juan Bostelman, o Fernando Zegers, que mora... O, o, João, o Juan mora aqui no, no Taiti, mora em Moré, o Bruno Zalatar e o Matias Ortegas. É, juntos eles formam esse time sul-americano, competindo pela primeira vez na Vodafone. Essa que é uma das maiores é, provas de V6 no mundo, a prova da Vodafone. Uh, Scott, now uh, back to English. I was just telling uh, the Brazil Ferris the importance that they are doing. Those Brazilians, plus those four guys from Chile, are doing right now this historic moment for the international VA uh, community. Well, I, I can't I can't agree with you more, Andre. It's an amazing opportunity for uh, our friends from Brazil and Chile uh, here. Uh, to compete at this high, high level with some of the best paddlers uh, in the rest of the world. And uh, here we're looking at Hino Rorea. I don't know if you were um, noticing our viewers at home uh, earlier, but uh, we were looking at uh, Manihi. And Manihi uh, was was uh, popping their ama a little bit. It was, uh, it was a near thing. We saw almost a huli right there. But... Um, These boats are, are filled with paddlers who are like well acquainted with waters like this as we see uh, Tahiti in the background as they're getting closer and closer to the pass. They're going to be protected a little bit by the by the, the remnants of the volcanic cone as they are getting closer to the island here. So the waves will start to decrease a little bit, not a lot. They're going to have to deal with this wind all the way as they as they reach the pass and the and the relative calm of the uh, the lagoon as they come come through the pass. Yeah, and here we see Hina Rea. A strong team also. I think in this team we have at least two or three paddlers that was finishing top 50, top 40 in the, in the Aito. Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, we have Manatea, Manatea Bob Dupont in this boat. I think he's doing seat. Let me see right now. Probably seat two. Look at the pickup yeah. right there as they head into the wind. Yeah. Yeah, I think with Manatea Bob Dupont seat two. It's a strong team. Super strong, strong team from right there. This was the team that was uh, had had to head with Shell in the beginning of the race, right? Yeah. This is the team. They're still in it. They're still in it. Still in it. The Peperu doing an amazing job having here. Having to having to pull that pull that 
steering around, steering around. But here's the thing: I want to, I want to, want you to take a look. You mentioned the Peperu. He's definitely paddling. He's doing what he, he needs to do. But if we look at him and say Dabi Tapaba, Dabi Tapaba rarely pokes. He's rarely posting. He's mainly, mainly paddling, and he's doing short little steering strokes as he paddles. And that's the big difference. He has, he has trained himself to do almost no poking. It's an amazing thing to watch. Yeah, and that, and that team teams together so much. They're so uh, time perfect. Now we're going to see another change here for this boat. I see some paddlers jump in the water, Scott. Hina Orea. Yeah. Count paddlers for yourselves at home how long this takes. Three paddlers going to switch. Three paddlers in the water. And you can see how they go. Oh, oh. Seat one, four, five. Up. And they're back to business. Barely three seconds. Barely three seconds and off they go. Yeah, it's a Ferrari pit stop. Listen. <laughs> Formula One Ferrari pit stop. There you right? go. They okay. might show them a thing or two. That AMA popped up. That's a dangerous moment. It's a dangerous moment as people are jumping out of the boat. And you see, Scott, the, the difference that those type of transmission and, and motivating people does uh, not only the transmission but the fact of you come here you're a paddler from another country you come to Tahiti and you enjoy this vibe you share with people uh, in your country your, uh, people get motivated and we already have comments here from from PCD uh, it's insane I want to be there next year yeah it's so good you should be here next year é isso aí PCD insano Uh, a gente estava falando sobre o teu comentário aqui, prova irada mesmo, é, uh, você mencionando aqui que quer participar da prova ano que vem. Essa é a importância, é o que eu falo aqui, a importância da gente dar um suporte para esses atletas que estão aqui. Uh, eles estão fazendo, divulgando e aumentando o conhecimento da VAA no Brasil, porque eles vão voltar com muita bagagem, vão motivar outros remadores a vir para cá, ou outros países para não só é, com, é, compartilhar a cultura da VAR no Brasil é, e, e aproveitar, é, absorver também parte da, da cultura da, da VAR taitiana, da, da VAR polinésia. Scott, we here see we, action here on the screen. We, uh, we're looking at some of the pursuing boats right here. We've got a, we've got a boat sort of bunching up. This happens, as you know, uh, when you race, you'll you'll sort of um, get into a group of three or four, and it's uh, it's important to try and find your way out of this grouping and to the head of that, so you can can find your way up to the next group and and sort of step ladder your way up through the pack. These boats have spread out considerably since the launch here. There's probably as much as a 45 minute gap from shell to the to the tail end of the pack at this point. Yeah, we have a team Manihi. 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 Again, out from the Tuamotos. They're used to used to these windy conditions and they're making it making it clear as they make their way up to more towards the front end of this pack. You get a sense of the size of the swell here. It's got a long period. And now we're being notified that we've got women starting to come back into the bay as they finish. So we may have uh, the, the TNTV getting this, this girl, the girls arriving. We already have some people walking around here, running to see the, the finish of the race, the men's division. I wonder who is leading that so race. So, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a bet right now. It's Ilani, Team Ilani Va'a from Tahiti. But it's anybody's guess right now. And we have, uh, we have another team that has two of the top three paddlers of the, the Aito. Right. We have uh, Ilohe Chen. The Phantom Ilohe Chen, and we have... Ah, uh, uh, yeah, Ilohe. here we go. He, Team Ilani coming in first. Team Ilani, you're, you're right, Scott. You can see them coming in. Super strong, super strong crew. Battling these winds, you get a sense of what... The, this is what the bay is like. <laughs> you can see see the headwinds that they're battling right here. Yeah, this is, this this is, is just easy the... easy water for them. This is the, the enclosed bay. 
Team Ilani Va'a from Tahiti in first position right now. Então aí pro pessoal do Brasil, aí nós temos, pra, pra vocês que estavam pedindo a prova feminina, nós vimos ali que o time Ilani Va'a tá liderando essa prova, tá chegando perto do fim, eles já estão chegando perto aqui da, do local onde a prova começou. É, lideraram a prova, uh, pelo que uh, nós tivemos informações aqui da, da TNTV, que eles lideraram a prova o tempo inteiro e estão... Uh, próximos do final da prova do time feminino, o uh, time Ilani Vá. Uh, temos outros times muito fortes aí com remadoras de, de, de alto calibre. E uma delas, inclusive remadoras da Flórida, remadoras do, do Hawaii, remadoras francesas. Uh, prova feminina aí, infelizmente não tivemos a imagem da prova, mas já consigo ver aqui a movimentação e parece que o barco aqui, o feminino da Ilani, já está a menos de uma milha da chegada. Scott, I would say that they're like less than a mile to arrive here, the females. Listen, they're they're right in front of us. Um, as as we uh, as we see their chase boat, they're coming around. Basically, they have roughly uh, half a kilometer left. They have to uh, circumnavigate the bay, and they're going to come with the homicide into the shore. But they're looking very strong as they as they are uh, going across the pass here, right in front of us. It's a very smooth team that uh, has been uh, put together. Members of Team Medoc. We've got. Uh, Vaimiti uh, in this boat. We've got uh, we've got uh, our own uh, friend from Hawaii, Eliz Elizabeth Willie, is in the boat, and it's just a really, really smooth, beautiful look to this team. They're they're looking extremely strong, extremely strong as they're heading up into the wind here. They don't look like they've paddled 32 kilometers at all. Yeah, they're coming really strong, passing right in front of us. At uh, two hours and f almost 50 minutes. Two hours and 50 minutes and remind, no change. Nope. The so you can see them right there silhouetted on your screen. You can see that they've got a beautiful cadence, beautiful cadence. Their Peperu is is also paddling. Is great, Scott, cr is great Scott look. Miller is excited too because his wife is actually steering a boat. Well, here. she is. I'm, I'm waiting to see where she comes in in, in this lineup. She's got a very strong team that she's with from Reitea. She's uh, very excited to, to steer for them, paddle with them. But here, let's just take a look at this amazing team, Team Ilani Va, and uh, enjoy enjoy what true a uh, true beautiful paddling looks like. Strong team, strong team, and Pam Butler making history again. Yes, in Polynesia. the first it's the first time for the Vodafone that they've included women, and um, and he's steering a Polynesian uh, team. Yeah, it's truly truly remarkable to to watch them. And you, you, can you, you and them has a, a great connection with people in that island, right? The it's right true. We we've, we've been welcomed by Eric Tane and and uh, actually the team for which. Uh, Pam is steering. She met them at the Vandivaha in, in France, and um, they were very welcoming. And and um, Tatiana Vogel and 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 her husband William Vogel uh, from the Cook Islands, and and um, the rest of the team. Uh, we've got uh, we've got Layla in there. She's a beast. Sarah. She's got a paddle like a like a pizza paddle. <laughs> it's the biggest thing I ever saw in my entire life but she she wields it like a champion so we're gonna we're gonna see where they come in super strong team but they're in a in a crowd of other super strong teams yeah and like uh, you guys if you know Scott Miller if you want to come to how to Tahiti if you want more knowledge about all those Polynesian islands here maybe he can hook you up with some people here definitely he knows definitely. a lot of people here He's one of the first uh, people who coming from U.S. here to paddle in, in uh, De Aito. Pam was, I think, maybe the first female from U.S. to paddle here. Let's I don't know that that's true. She's she's not the first North American for sure. I know uh, Leanne Stanley from Canada paddled uh, a number of times in, in the Aito. Um, there, there might have been, but uh, she's one of the first. Definitely US, one of the first. From the U.S., maybe? Yes, definitely one of the first from the U.S. 
And here you see uh, Team Iolani, they're, they're coming around the bend. They have to make this horseshoe bend. Um, it's not a straight shot in. They're going to they're gonna be coming around the corner. They've got about 750 meters left. And at the same time, you see Shelva. Huh? As they were approaching the pass. Uh, approaching the pass. And they're going to pedal uh, good miles inside that lagoon. And that's, th good. that's true. Just because you've made it to the island doesn't mean you're anywhere near the finish. They're well to the southwest of the airport uh, uh, in Fa'a. Uh, as they enter the pass here, they're going to be uh, coming through. There's a bridge that they have to navigate. Um, and um, tide is actually coming on to high tide, so it's going to be a low bridge with a, with a vicious headwind. Um, all I can say is... Um, Whoever thought up this course was 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 making making a problem for the paddlers. That's for sure. E agora em português aí o pessoal uh, do Brasil pode acompanhar na imagem aí do seu canto direito o time Ilani Vá eh, liderando e passando aí acho que na última na última boia já vindo aqui para 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 encaminhando agora para a linha de chegada o time está liderando com uma vantagem grande do segundo time aí que tem Ilon Retiene no, no outro barco, vai Mitch Maione, mas esse time do Ilan Ivaá, ah, como o Scott estava dizendo aqui, é um time famoso aqui da Polinésia Francesa, por ser um time muito forte, é a primeira vez que nós temos mulheres competindo nessa prova, então as mulheres elas estão fazendo, uh, uh, fazendo o, 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 o seu momento aqui, né? na, até no, Tahi, no Tahiti, na Polinésia Francesa aqui, para ser reconhecidas uh, de igual para igual com os homens. Uh, quem sabe no próximo ano a intenção é termos essa prova, uh, uh, o mesmo percurso para as mulheres, fazendo um, um nove main race uh, com, com, as, uh, com as, as mudanças né, durante a prova. Uh, nós temos aqui remadoras da Flórida, a Pam Butler, que ela é a esposa do Scott que está comentando a prova aqui, ela está fazendo o leme numa, numa das, das, dos times polinésios de, de Hayatea, uma remadora fantástica aí da Flórida, Pam Butler, uh, outras remadoras, uh, a Eloha representou na França, também está aqui, remadora uh, do, do Hawaii, a Elizabeth Kalama está nesse mesmo time, então as mulheres aí representando. E Scott, now yeah. back here we're the finish line. Yeah, they are crossing the, the finish line well, well in advance of the, the second place team. We don't even see the second place team yet. And they have just, look at them, the winners of the first women's team in the first women's competition for, for Vodafone, Iolani, coming across in style, showing unity, showing beautiful form, lots and lots of power. What a demonstration of that's power. some monster paddlers you right can, there. You cannot even see the second team. No, no, no. They they're they're in a class by themselves right now. Yeah. Congratulations to yep. Hilani I mean, Vaha. We've got Iloha yeah. Ishan in that boat. We've got Vaimiti in that boat. Our friend Willie's in that boat. All the paddlers in that boat are truly tremendous paddlers. The first the first champions of the Vodafone race. Yep. That's the first uh, first women's champions ever. Ever. Hilani. Oh, here Hilani. comes the second team. Second team. Second we can team. See right now, but they have a long way they've to got, go. They've got. We've got two teams out there right two now teams. battling for it. Two teams battling. It's hard to see. Hard to see who we have here. Can't see the numbers on, on these boats. The glare is pretty, pretty intense on the water here, but. Th so we have the battle here on the right side of your screen. Second and third place are really, really battling it out. And it's Scott, I was telling here in, in, in Portuguese, the, the, the women are battling to be recognized as a true power for the sport. Absolutely. And, and treat me equally yep. like men, right? Exactly. That's what they're looking for. Um, there's there's constant conversation about uh, the the length of the of the the races being equivalent, the uh, the the prize money being equivalent. Much like World Surf League has brought equivalency to surfing, they're hoping for the same thing in in the Va. We're hoping the same thing too. These are premier athletes out here 
working and um, overcoming a, a lot of uh, gender bias, but but also just you know showing that that women are are equivalent to men in terms of their their capabilities and athleticism. And take a look uh, in front of us. You can't see it on your screen here. Oh, there they are. There you go. We've got the two teams out there duking it out, duking it out. It's anybody's race. I try to read the boats. It's almost impossible to read. Meanwhile, you get a view of Team Iolana here. So it's it's beautiful, like uh, what the Vodafone race is putting, like uh, allowing uh, the women's to compete in this in this race. Yep. You know, like uh, bring the women's to to the to yep. the to this race. It's such such an amazing uh, thing. Maybe maybe we can see they are fighting to do the same uh, route for the Hawaii Kinui as well, right? I was talking to Iloha, Vaimiti, even Pam. They're that, hoping for it. Challenge. That's what they're fighting for, right? They're hoping for it. There you see on the left of your screen, Vaimiti. Oh, that's Vaimiti? Yep, that's Vaimiti. She's uh, a champion paddler here in Tahiti. Oh, so that's the team. That's the team who won, like with Iloha Chen, Vaimiti. And Elizabeth Kalama. Great. This is Vaimiti Miami, Vion Mayoni. I think she was the captain of this team. She was. I was talking to her, and she usually is a stroker, but for this race, she was seat three. She put this team together with Iloha, with uh, Elizabeth Kalama. It's a, such a great experience for Elizabeth coming yeah. from Hawaii and participating. A younger in, paddler. Right? But up and coming, up and coming paddler. Yeah, she's she's a good, good, very good paddler. Like a shout out for my friend Mike Kalama in, in Hawaii, who is the husband of Elizabeth, who runs the Rudlers in Hawaii. Uh, Scott, he runs the Aloha Ito. Oh, Hawaii. that's right. Yeah, that's an amazing, amazing team. Like. Uh, Congratulations, Iloha, and your team for such an amazing group. For sure, we're gonna bring you guys here to the screen. For absolutely, sure. absolutely. And you can see, you can see they're taking the plaudits down there on the on the the sand. Well deserved, well deserved champions. And more comments from people here. Uh, Scott, I'm gonna jump to Portuguese. Please. That's Hawaii. Uh, Esse foi o time aí, Ilani, uh, Ilani Vaá, um time formado aí, duas, essa, essa atleta que vocês estão vendo aí no canto direito chama-se Vaimiti Mayomi, Vaimiti Mayone, ela terminou a prova da Ito na terceira colocação, mas no mesmo barco nós temos a Iloha Chen que ganhou essa prova, que está aí aparecendo na imagem, ali a mais alta ali no meio, a Iloha, tem um, ao lado dela ali mais para trás, a Elizabeth Kalama, que veio do Hawaii, um time muito forte que foi colocado para essa prova aí, então de parabéns, a Vaimiti, ela é uma atleta aqui do Tahiti, que está espalhando essa cultura do, do Tahiti pelo mundo inteiro aí, indo para Califórnia, para Flórida, visitando outros países para espalhar a cultura, a Iloha, que vai roubar o microfone agora ali, é um fenômeno feminino do esporte, está botando o esporte num outro patamar, ela aniquilou a, a, a prova feminina da De Aito, e é, eles, elas lutam para divulgar a cultura da VA, mas numa, numa forma de igual para igual com os homens, elas querem ter o direito de participar das mesmas provas que os homens fazem, no mesmo trajeto, é a primeira vez que a Vodafone uh, uh, põe essa prova para o time feminino participar, então é um, é um feito enorme, são as primeiras campeões, campeãs da, da, da Vodafone uh, Race, uh, é um... É um, é um, um é uma sensação, eu imagino que deve ser uma sensação maravilhosa e elas estão fazendo história também aqui, uh, divulgando a mulher no esporte da VA e botando a mulher no, 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 no mesmo degrau de igual para igual com, com os homens aí. Scott, I was telling uh, about, we were talking about right in English, about the women being uh, in the same, uh, having, having the same opportunities as men yep. for, for yep. the, the VA community, right? So now you see now you see the second and third boats making their last turn around this uh, this turn buoy here in the little bay, 
of uh, Pere. Still battling it out for second and third place. But it would appear the white boat has, has eclipsed the red boat. They're coming in strong. It's a sprint to the finish. Our fourth our fourth place boat is coming. Fourth fourth place boat is is coming in um, right into view right here. So we've got 14 women's teams. First four are in the bay. We just have here like Norman uh, giving us information that there was more than 10 minutes of difference for the first That's place to second. It's quite a gap, and they still have to make it the last. 250 meters here to the finish at least the winds at their back right but let me tell you the battle for the second place is beautiful yeah beautiful S still They're on still on you can't give up right now Girls we don't want it to be like Ozzy man where people right. celebrate too early exactly, they can't celebrate exactly. too early that's totally true that's really beautiful to see the women's competing in this race here and making history. Fantastic and athleticism here. And you see on the left side another change for the men's. And it's Shell. Shell now. Shell will start to change out more frequently as they as they enter into this final phase of the race. They're not yet inside. Seat one, two, and four. Oh, look at okay, this here comes our second fan. place finisher. Hard on their heels and, is the fourth. And look how those guys bring in floating and bring like a water, right? For the for second place and third place for the female. Second place inside. Amazing, amazing. Amazing. And here comes the third place boat. Right across the finish line. And yeah, I can see that they're like a giving interviews for the... TNTV. I want to so see if I can Ruhata those, to, those Tahiti is here. your second place boat. And now you can see from the course map that we have our paddlers that are entering into the pass, into the final final entry into the lagoon. They're going to be inside the lee of the island right here. It's not going to be as windy for quite some time until they make the, the right-hand turn up around the airport. And then they'll get the full force of that wind in their face again. So they only have a small respite here. They've got to really make it a sprint as they enter into the, into the pass. And, and you can... You can see Shell is right there, right there. Look at that, beautiful. You can see the water has calmed down quite a bit because the island is blocking that wind. And Scott, let me ask you something. <laughs> they make this Shell bar team make me look ridiculous right now because I calculate my my calculation was completely different. They took one hour and a half. Right. To reach Morea. Yeah. And now we see three hours of uh, race. Right. And they just came back in so that upwind. Three hours, but now they've now now they've got to basically grind it out through the flat right here. No, so, but, but like it sees like a, their upwind was really strong. They absolutely. They see they did the same time. They pretty much sprinted into into the wind. Yeah, Shalva just reaching Tahiti right now, getting in the lagoon, and we're gonna we at least. Now I would say like a one hour paddle uh, would be around four hours. It's, prob it's probably going to be about a four hour paddle. Four hours, yeah. All, four when hours it's all said and done. Yeah. But I, we, can't, we can't say anything, uh, anything without talking about uh, the women's team. They're coming right now. They only have a few minutes. Right. they got to put their boat back in the water. And all right. And so they're coming. So we just, uh, we just have our reporter here, Norman, getting the girls for a, a quick interview. Right. So they're gonna they're gonna run up. So we're gonna have here Vaimiti Mayoni right. and Elizabeth Kalama uh, to talk with you guys and share a little bit of their their experience during the race. Thank you, coach. Hey, Vaimiti. 
Congratulations. And, 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 and we have here the captain of that female team, that historical moment, first time ever the women's race in the Vodafone race, Vaimiti Mayoni. Vaimiti, congratulations. Vaimiti Mayoni, representing Tahiti. She put this team together, uh, an amazing paddler. She finished, she finished top three in the Aito, third place on the Aito, Vaimiti. Tell me about this race. What, the, what an experience uh, the, your experience during this race, uh, the challenge that you have uh, during the race, the wind. Uh, tell me about your, uh, how to put this team together. How you feel happy now? Uh, women's completely completely on this race, the Vodafone race. the right coach so it was an amazing race uh, at the start we we make a, uh, a nice start and after we, we surf uh, the surf was so perfect for for the girls there was it was fun funny and but uh, at the end of the race the, the wind was very hard so was uh, the mental the mental, <laughs> race. Yes, mental race mental race so very nice and thank you thank you the girls that's that's terrific Vaimiti, congratulations you put together a very strong team so what do you th what do you think was uh, the one thing that made your boat uh, strongest out of all of, all of the competition what is what made you best what made you best Yes, for this race. So what, what's the difference that you, like, your team had because you woke in a distance so big for, for the second place? Oh uh, yes, not because we have a good feeling between the girls and we take pleasure. And I, I, know, I know that you usually pet you're a stroker. Yes. But for this race you're paddling C3 and yes. you're the captain of the team. Yes, because my captain Congratulations, Vaimiti. Vaimiti is doing such a great job in spreading the Tahitian culture around the world, going constantly to the U.S., other places, uh, to, uh, Hawaii. Uh, Vaimiti, congratulations. It's yes. a pleasure uh, to have you here and see you winning. You know, you know that? <laughs> we're, right. we're Team B. I'm not going to say the word, but we're Team B. That's right. Okay, congratulations. Uh, All right. And now, we're going to have it here also. Another amazing brother that was part of that team. We have here Elizabeth from Hawaii. Elizabeth Kalama. That's right. The, Elizabeth, the microphone is yours. Congratulations. Shout out for your family, your hubby there in Hawaii. <laughs> Tell me about what was this experience, amazing experience of competing here in Tahiti in this team and winning the first girls ever ra That's right. racing for the ball. First women ever. to all your people in Hawaii. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Streaming live from Tahiti. How is he smiling? You see this girl? She's doing an upwind and she has a smile on her face the whole time. <laughs> Another big name for the sport for the girls here fighting to to make the women's division put the women in the deserved spot that is be like competing doing the same race, being recognized equal uh, as the men, you know, in this sport that is the VAHA. Elizabeth, it's a pleasure to have you here. Congratulations. Congratulations. You know, hope to see you in Tahiti again. All right. All right. And Scott, Scott Miller, who doesn't know, the new voice of the VAHA community. <laughs> Back in action, team at Tahiti on the, on the screen, Scott. That's right, but as we saw some, just a moment ago, Shell continues its lead. They're well within the, they're well within the, uh, the lagoon now. 
and so it's a an opportunity for them to increase their lead they look just as fresh as they were entering the lagoon as they had when they left the bay here it's a it's an amazing accomplishment an amazing athleticism that that's in this boat but as we as we look here this this team pursuing them also has a beautiful long stroke they're well within the the lee of the island you can see the water's flattened out here at three hours and 11 minutes so scott uh, we have here people in brazil make some questions i'm gonna ask the question in portuguese and then i translate for you so o andré mota aqui tá mandando uma pergunta muito interessante aqui ele tá perguntando Será que quando as canoas entrarem no canal, as condições de vento melhoram? Ele, uh, o canal aí, para quem não, não conhece aí que o André está falando, uh, quando as ilhas aqui, elas são geralmente cercadas por um, um recife de coral muito forte que breca, às vezes, a onda de entrar ali. Então, você tem certas entradas para esse canal e aí você rema dentro de uma lagoa, certo? Mas essa lagoa tem ondulação ali dentro, tem ondulação, não é uma ondulação tão forte como às vezes é fora do, da, 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 do, da lagoa, no, no open water, mas ainda existe a ondulação aqui. Eu vou fazer essa pergunta em inglês aqui para o Scott, mas já te agradeço desde já, André Mota, pela, pela pergunta aí. O Leo, Leandro Pirozolo aqui, parabéns às mulheres guerreiras, isso aí, Leandro, mulherada tá, tá botando aí uh, 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 o valor do, 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 da mulher aí no esporte para ser reconhecida de igual para igual. O André Prates aí que está acompanhando a transmissão desde o início. Obrigado aí, André, nosso xará e meu xará do Brasil. So, Scott, André Mota is asking here, like, uh, he's asking us if when the canoes leave the channel and starting getting into the lagoon, the conditions, the wind conditions are going to get better, uh, how they are going to be performing inside the lagoon? So it's basically a sprint up the lagoon. The lagoon is a relatively shallow body of water uh, around here. There's, um, there's a well-marked channel. It kind of snakes through the lagoon. On the, on the west side of the island, it's going to be very flat. Um, it's going to be very placid. As the, um, as the canoes make the turn up around Fa'a, all of a sudden they're going to get a full uh, brunt of the headwind again. So uh, it's going to chop up the conditions that our viewers saw with the, the women here in the bay is pretty much what they're going to have for about the last last half of the lagoon paddle. So the first half they can, they can take full advantage of their position, sprint their way forward, try and make up ground on the lead boats, but then as they, as they uh, come around the, the bend, it, it, again it's going to be all that conditioning and they're going to they're going to get the full force of the wind even though the water is a little bit flatter than it is out in the open water they're going to see that it's uh it's it's i mean it's it's a full blast headwind it's, yeah. and, and this wind is doing nothing but getting stronger and stronger and stronger yeah i was explaining for people who doesn't know here the french polynesia most of the islands are surrounded by those uh, reef corals exactly that they block a little bit of the the, the swell coming they do but you still have like a swell inside the lagoons and you still have strong winds inside the lagoons. Es especially as you come near a pass obviously you know it's not going to block any of that any of that ocean swell coming through that's where a lot of the surfing can happen uh especially when you're doing a v1 but it's uh it's uh it's truly uh, uh it can be a very flat almost lake-like existence inside the lagoon and you'll have a huge huge swell breaking on the reef just to the west of you or the east of you depending on where you are on the island and then inside barely a ripple until you get closer to that reef so cardio is more than important inside this lagoon uh, the fitness condition strong to finish this strong race the conditions continue like a brutal Aí, falando aqui para o pessoal em português, como o Scott estava explicando aí, apesar de você ter essa proteção dos, do, 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 dos corais de Recife, as entradas das, das, das lagoas ali, da, da, do canal dessa lagoa, continua passando ondulação por ali e você tem muito vento lateral, né, uh, uh, atingindo essas canoas, né. Porque a gente tem que lembrar que são, são ilhas no meio do Pacífico, no meio do Pacífico, então... Uh, 
é constante a mudança de vento afetando essas ilhas, é, é constante, então as condições sempre é, são desafiadoras e aí o que faz a diferença mesmo é o time estar tá bem afiado, ter um leme bom para estar tá lendo essas condições de mar, mesmo dentro das lagoas, que ali algumas áreas da lagoa tem muita profundidade é, e outras partes você tem uma, uma, uma shallow water, que é uma, uma parte bem rasa da lagoa, né? Então esse conhecimento dessas áreas e, e do, 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 do vento, como ele afeta a condição da canoa ali, é muito importante. Now back to English here, uh, Scott. Here's a perfect example of what the water conditions are like inside the lagoon right here. You can see barely a ripple on the water. Um, you know, that big hill behind them is, is blocking, the, blocking the wind. And so it's a, it's utterly fantastic uh, uh, opportunity for canoes to make up ground on one another. Um, and we're looking now live, uh, we ca you can't see it on screen, but I'm looking at the boat from oh. Pire. I might know somebody in that boat. <laughs> she might have steered that boat coming, oh, in, you know this boat, coming in fifth. So I'm going to give a shout out to the, to the, to the boat from Pire. And there's uh, Pam Butler who uh, steered her first open ocean race today. Pam Butler just finishing here top five. So he look at look at this. He's a, a, a Tahitian team lead. Yes, look at this uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, example of of inside paddling here by Air Tahiti. They're lengthening out. They're gonna they're gonna try and put a little distance over their pursuers. They're also gonna try and make up what ground they can on Shell. Shell is well out in front of them. They entered the course minutes ahead of, of this Air Tahiti boat, but if anybody can catch Shell, it's going to be this boat right here. You can feel a lot of power in this team, right? The way that they hit the water, they, they attack the water, it's a lot of power for this team at Tahiti. Hutipare, Hutipare, they, they are like going deep and hard and long. So you can see though, like there is like a, a, a an explosion at the catch, and then that, that snap out of the water, and that's gonna propel that boat. Even inside though, look, there's a little bit of wave. It's not glassy, glassy on, on the lee side of the island. Team Air Tahiti, second place overall on the Vodafone race, channel race. So far second place, three hours and 18 minutes of this uh, challenge race. The weather is really, really uh, challenging here in Tahiti. We had some strong conditions, strong downwind at the beginning of the race, going to Morea, uh, very hard upwind, and now you can see there, Shelva. There's your lead boat, and you can see it's it's riffles on the water right now, but when they make that turn, they're gonna they're gonna pass out of this mooring field, and they're gonna make the turn, and once they do, full force of the wind again. So it's it's really really and truly. Uh, uh, of it's it's a it's you just got to gut this race out there's no no two ways about it so you can have an idea right now where they are in the race we have three hours and 90 minutes 48 kilometers into the race 48 kilometers during the race so we had a misprint earlier we were being told it was a 50 kilometer race it's actually a 60 kilometer race 60 kilometer race that that's and this because they reduced the, the the length of this race they did reduce it so it was even longer last year right. they went to the north side of, of morea and then they would travel down around the coast and then come back and actually uh we're right here next to the to the to the medic tent and some of our paddlers have given their all we've got a we've got a couple people that are being treated here next to us and we're hoping they're all right so yeah, it's it's very it's a lot of uh, for your body, right, Scott? A lot of uh, pain that you feel during this race. Yep. Uh, you have to hydrate, or you're gonna be cramping the whole time. Especially the women's here because they are doing this race uh, iron. No exactly. Chains. Thirty-two kilometers. That's no joke. In those conditions, it's no, no joke. No it's joke. No joke. No joke. If you're join just joining us right now, we're here live from the island of Tahiti, French Polynesia. Thanks to TNTV for bringing us uh, along with them for the ride. 
Bom dia to our friends in in uh <laughs> in Brazil. In Brazil and hope you're having a great day wherever you are in North America and uh bom it's probably in the middle of the night for uh for our friends over in Portugal. So Okay. Another question here coming from Ronaldo Com Comforti. Uh, for, for you, this one is for you, Scott. Uh, I'm gonna ask again in, in Portuguese and translate for you. Aí outra pergunta aqui do Ronaldo Comforti, que está participando bem ativamente aí do, do, dos comentários. Obrigado aí, Ronaldo, por estar tá dando essa força. Ele pergunta aqui, André. Essas V6 são mais leves que as fabricadas aqui no Brasil? Esses iacos são de carbono, não é? Uh, então, André, uh, eu, Ronaldo, eu vou passar essa pergunta para o Scott. Uh, eu não tenho a ideia de quanto que pesa. E se você puder me passar essa informação aí na tela de quanto pesa essas canoas no Brasil, uh, para eu saber. Mas eu posso te dar essa informação agora. Vou perguntar para o Scott para ele já interagir com em inglês também vou trazer essa pergunta em inglês para ele uh, Scott now here we have Ronald, uh, Ronaldo he just asked those V6 they are like a lighter than the ones producing in Brazil and those Iatos they are like a carbon fiber so uh, uh, we don't know I told uh, Ronaldo to put the information of the, the how much the Brazilian canoes weigh ah, okay But I think you can talk about more the, the weights of those matahinas here. So the the weights are standard here. Um, it's 400 kilos, and um, the uh, the yatos are uh, wood actually. So they these are not uh, like a, a composite yato. Um, so I don't know what the comparison is. What's how much are the canoes weighing in Brazil? Oh, that I'm gonna have this information right now. But actually, okay. the 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 yatos and the new matahinas are carbon. Oh, the new the new ones are carbon. Okay, yeah, so they're, but they're carbon, but yeah. to race in to race in the in this race, um, the, you can have a composite or or a wood wood yato. The some of the boats are s still using the wood, but all the boats are 400 kilograms. 400 kilograms. Yeah. Então aí Ronaldo, respondendo essa tua pergunta aí, uh, o peso dessas canoas aqui elas para competir nessa prova elas têm que ter it's kilograms not, uh, not pounds okay. o peso dessas canoas aqui uh, elas têm que ter um peso de 400 quilo, eh, quilos tá elas são pesadas uh, se não atingir esse peso a gente tem que botar peso na canoa tem que botar lastro na canoa para todos assim atingir o mesmo peso aí de 400 quilos 400 quilos aí a canoa montada já né Uh, o, o rig aí completo, uh, completo da canoa os iacos dessas novas matarrinas uh, nessa prova ela só canoa matarrina nessa prova aí uh, todos os times aí estão aderindo a essa canoa uh, praticamente a Ferrari aí da, das V6 uh, e o, as canoas novas matarrinas novas elas vêm com iaco de carbono mas você tem nessas provas nessa prova aí algumas com o iaco de madeira ainda, inclusive a, a tradicional zona aí que é a, a mãe de todas essas matarrinas, ela tá nessa prova que é uma canoa de madeira que o Jorge Constred e o Milão Manoté estão tão remando nessa canoa e ela é toda de madeira, iaco de madeira e a, cano, a canoa toda de madeira, se eu não me engano essa canoa, que, não, essa canoa tá na tela aí, uma canoa vermelha, mas vocês vão reconhecer uma canoa toda de madeira que tá aí. So Scott, I was just uh, telling them, but they say here the the six men in Brazil uh, usually is 170, 170 kilograms. But this is probably just the hull, right? Probably just the hull, yeah. Not fully rigged. Yeah. And again, they're having to make the weight of, of what the wood boat was. Yeah, all right, all right. So a lot of these boats are carrying extra weight. Yeah. We had to we had to put in an additional 50 kilos in the for all of them to be yeah, yeah. equal. Yeah. yeah. And here you have uh, another. T do you do you know? Can you remember? Uh, can you give me the information about the team who paddles the wooden matahina? Oh, that's Matae. Matae is uh, down uh, around the coast. It's almost to the isthmus uh, between uh, Tahiti Iti and Tahiti Nui, the large and the smaller part of the islands. Um, it's uh, 
actually almost where they ran the Aito. It's just a little bit north of where they ran Aito uh, this year. It's um, There's a couple of clubs down there, Matea and uh, I can't remember. Uh, there are actually two other clubs that, that are right there. Um, it's a beautiful kind of uh, enclosed uh, area of the, of the lagoon. Um, actually, incredible surf comes in the, in the pass. I had an opportunity last year to surf uh, with uh, some of the guys from Matea. They were very generous and took me out, and uh, we had a we had a great opportunity to surf. So, yeah, it's a uh, Bora Bora, not it, or the team for Bora Bora. Team again. from Bora Bora, doing fantastic. This is Popora Tehoi Mamu from Bora Bora. You can see they're in that mooring field. Oh, the, the, they are the leader of the... Well, they're at the head. They're one of the one of the main boats at the head of the course. Of the seniors division, right? Yes, they're right here at the seniors. So they are the leader and those are the chasing... They are chasing the Bora Bora team for that division. We are here now almost three hours and a half of, uh, of race. Uh, I would bet that this race is going to at least for what 30 minutes for Shelva to finish this race probably at least uh, we have still have Shelva leading uh, as a leader the leader team followed by team Air Tahiti battling connection was in third place but now uh, they were holding the fourth place if I wasn't mistake right Scott that's right so we're looking we're looking at them as they go by the beautiful shoreline here in Tahiti. You can see that it's just nothing but power and they're trying to maintain the glide of the boat as long as they possibly can before they hit that headwind again. We don't have this image on camera, Scott, but right in front of us, the, the, the girls finishing those race, the teams, the, we see some women getting out of the boat completely exhausted, you know, the, the, the conditions were really brutal. Uh, I see some patterns receiving like massage and special treatment to to get back together. Right, we so, have someone administering oxygen to one of the paddlers here. I mean, there's you can't sort of negate the effort that these women have put in. 32 kilometers is an amazing distance to have to paddle in any event and then to race and race in these conditions, race downwind and then upwind again. That's just, it's it's an incredible feat. So we cannot we cannot say enough how remarkable these these female paddlers are. E o pessoal aí, ó, essa imagem não tá na tela, mas bem em frente à nossa cabine aqui, nós estamos acompanhando o time feminino chegando e com muito desgaste, algumas geradoras tendo suporte aí de auxílio de oxigênio. A prova foi bem exaustiva, as condições foram bem bem desgastantes. Shell Vice still leads uh, Scott Indeed. with and, a beautiful pace. And they're at the airport now. They're at five, uh, right around the corner here. So it's a it's a five minute drive from the airport. We'll see how long it takes them in the canoe in this headwind. But let me just say that uh, it, clearly they're wrapping this race up. Air Tahiti in second paddling connection now making their way to third. They uh, to third. They've moved ahead of Pepora de Mo Moimau. Uh, Hina Rorea still in fifth place. Mataea in sixth. Toaiva Nui Mihere Manihi in ninth place. And EDT hanging tough at ten the whole time. These are great, great teams. And look at this, though. I mean, Air Tahiti was looking like they're trying to make a move on Shell, but they're nowhere in frame right now. And he's, as you said, David Pava is still paddling and <laughs> not even poking one second. Listen. The guy never pokes, or if he does, it's like maybe for a stroke. So he's just he's gonna he's gonna maintain his boat's lead with all of his effort paddling. Davi no pokes te pava. <laughs> <laughs> and Scott, tell me more about the your experience here in Tahiti. Not only Tahiti, but all those old uh, other islands from the French Polynesia. Yes. Uh, and you leaving this this culture is your second year already here. Second time here, yeah, second that's time right. Here, uh, in in uh, and the the French Polynesia. What what did like, bring this brought this for your paddling or even as a person since your 
since 2022. Uh, so I, I have to say we came here ostensibly just to paddle last year. They were um, and uh, you know no intention of racing whatsoever. You know the fact that the race opportunities were presented to us is is pretty amazing. The fact that uh, you've got. Uh, uh, opportunities to paddle both as a as a competitor as well as just a a, a community member is, is amazing uh people will take you into their homes and into their hearts and um we we found um a lot of welcome here on tahiti of course uh down in matae and up here in pidre but also on Raiatea and then uh Ta'a and um I, I'm sure that the same would be said for any island that we that we went to. That uh, you know, people would welcome you into uh, into uh, their homes and into their arms. Um, and so, uh, it's just been a remarkable experience for us. So, um, we have a we have a guest joining us right now. Um, I'm going to introduce her here. This is Pam Boatler, and. Oh. Uh, We've, we've been talking about her a little bit. She was in the fifth place boat that came in with the Raetea women. And here. And here we have Ben Butler from Ben Florida. Butler. Ben, tell Hi. us about, first of all, congratulations. Congratulations on yeah. a great, great race. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it was a privilege to race with the with the Raetea team, and they're amazing. And uh, this was my first time steering at a big race like this. And um, it was really tough conditions. Yeah. And uh, it's just a privilege to be a part of the first Vodafone that included women. And uh, so that, no matter what, um, really trumps everything right now. Yeah. Yeah, but a great result. You all came in fifth place, I want to yeah, say. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. We, we fought so hard. The conditions are really tough, and I'm just really proud to be a part of this crew. Yeah. So what, what was the hardest thing about steering this race? Uh, first, first time, open ocean conditions, downwind. <laughs> it what? was downwind. First time in the, in the Ari, and it's a beautiful canoe, by the way. Um, but it's definitely different than what we have on the East Coast in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, but I, I really loved it. There's so much to learn here it's such a it's such a gift and a privilege to watch the really good steersmen here uh, so you got to learn you got to get into tough stuff and just uh, suffer a little bit right. um, but but the team just stuck with it and I just gave it my all in the back top five, top five I'm, I'm really happy about that top five. we're making history again that's right second year back to back yeah better first time uh, the Aito last year and now he's steering not only steering, but he's steering the first Vodafone race for women ever, finishing top five with a Tahitian crew, like a 100% Tahitian crew, and you being the paper of this, this, this team. I can feel your energy, how happy you are. And uh, then tell me more about what this brings, what how important it is to come here and, and, and live this experience and uh, what you bring in for for us what you bring back to florida every time that you come back come to tahiti uh you know it, it is so important to come here to experience firsthand the culture and what this what these canoes mean to this culture and and just um the connection that they have with the water and with each other um to hoy you know i'm jumping into a crew that's already established um but i, I just advise anyone to just um, come to Tahiti, come to Raiatea, go to the different islands. Every island is different. They all have uh, amazing paddlers, amazing clubs, um, but it's, it, I think I have a lot more to bring to back home, um, to the East Coast. Um, I really look forward to getting, an Ari, uh, getting into an Ari on the East Coast in Miami, and um, I just am continuing to absorb, and I just look forward to connecting with other women and men, um, boys and girls, uh, when we get home, just to share just the wonderful energy and mana that we experience here, and experiencing Tahoe, and um, and I'm just still kind of on cloud nine with the race, a little worried about my teammate over there, right. um, who was up front, seat one, Layla. See Layla. Yeah. With the uh, medics she, now. She had the, the hard seat today. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but thank you, uh, thank you, Vodafone and TNTV and Ba Vibes, uh, just for all the support that you give and the shout-outs that you give. And you know, it, it's it's not all about winning, 
and it's all about just giving your best and learning as much as possible and I just want to express that too that you know it's it's not all about winning it's about the process and the journey and this is <laughs> quite the journey today that's right. true that's true I'll and say. like for you guys who doesn't know beautiful couple from Florida <laughs> is Scott and Pam both are like beautiful first of the pioneers couple. of the V1s the, the, in, in Rutgers in, in Florida uh, they shared this with me last year, make me passionate as well to come to Tahiti. We are here working together. Right. Scott Miller, the new voice of the Vlad community, <laughs> Van Butler, the Phantom of Florida. Yeah. Like, uh, guys, really happy to be here with you, enjoying yes. this environment, enjoying Tahiti, and being part of this. It's Thank been you amazing. so much, yes. and it's just so exciting. It's been amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Pam. All right. Back to the game now, Scott. Yep, back to the back to the live feed. And here, like Scott is giving a big kiss into his wife. Uh, now he's gonna go back to the microphone, and Pam is gonna take care of her teammates. And three hours and 36 minutes of race, we see a lot of women, Scott, getting out of those canoes with assistance of like a, getting oxygen, getting like a oh my gosh, uh, yes, it's any just type of treatment to get back to, to the normal and so you, you see that the, the 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 conditions were brutal for those girls and they did this race uh iron 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 no change no changes whatsoever that's what i'm saying is what we we mentioned this earlier in the broadcast that in a lot of ways the women are being given a harder task uh, even though it's a shorter course, it's not 60 kilometers, it's 32, but they, no change outs whatsoever. That's, I mean, I don't know who amongst our, our viewers has done a 32 kilometer paddle, but, but uh, 32 kilometers is absolutely no joke, especially in these conditions. And you can see now coming around the airport here, look at the, look at the headwinds and the waves. This is inside the lagoon we're looking at right here. And it's got just a quick correction. Uh, it's 400 uh, pounds, not kilograms. Oh, you're right, 400, 400 pounds. 400 pounds, not kilograms. Yeah, thanks for my friends in Brazil. That is around 180 kilograms. That, that's, right. yeah, that, okay. that's true. Uh, uh, isso aí, pessoal do Brasil, vocês estão correto? É, é 400 pounds. Se transfere para quilograma, vai dar por volta de 180 quilogramas. Uh, obrigado aí por estarem participando. O Paulo Roberto Gatti, aí, transmissão impecável, comentários precisos. Foi a melhor que já assisti. Pô, meu irmão, obrigado aí pela força. Esse canal é para vocês aí. Uh, vamos, uh, uh, é para divulgar e dar um suporte para os remadores aí. Vamos, vamos espalhar mais aí. Estamos no final de prova. Nós vamos ter os brasileiros chegando mais tarde. Vamos espalhar. Olha, nós temos 46 pessoas ao vivo agora. Vamos tentar chegar assim aí. Vamos espalhar cada um de vocês aí espalhando para mais um aí para a gente ter uma visualização grande dessa, dessa prova. Conto com vocês aí para para fazer isso agora. O Cauê aí mandando uma mensagem, as V6 tem que ter no mínimo 150 quilos. Uh, o André Prates, concordo com você, a transmissão é sensacional. Galera, obrigado demais aí por, por, por você estar dando esse suporte aí. Nós montamos esse canal aí de última hora aí no mês de abril, uh, mas nós estamos aqui para ficar e vamos ter muitas provas aí, cobrindo muitas provas, estamos fazendo essa parceria com a TV Tahitiana, mas tem muitas provas acontecendo aí no, 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 uh, nos Estados Unidos, uh, sou brasileiro, remo há muitos anos, mas moro na Flórida, uh, provas para acontecer, muita novidade aí, já de antemão, já... Já estou adiantando uma, uma mensagem aí que nem o pessoal nos Estados Unidos está sabendo, mas nós vamos ter a De Aito em Miami no próximo ano. Quero contar com a presença desses brasileiros aí todos na De Aito Miami. Por volta do mês de maio nós vamos organizar essa prova em Miami. Uh, William Jacob, eh, notícias dos brasileiros, o irmão Carreta Pimentel, amém. Uh, Ronaldo Conforte. Então, achei que aqui a Malolo V6, pô, aqui é a peça assim, uh, apresentação da canoa que fala... Então, a Malolo é uma canoa da, da Poaqueia e ela, ela é uma canoa que ela é um pouquinho mais leve, só que eu conversando com, com, com o, o time da Shell e outro time, o time Air Tahiri, eles preferem a canoa com um pouquinho mais de peso para manter esse glide da canoa. Uh, a Matarrina é uma canoa que ela é específica para o surf também, ela, 
ela realmente surfa de uma maneira diferenciada, mas a Malora é uma outra canoa muito boa, muito boa também. Uh, o William Jacob falando aqui, o Voia Mahalo pelo, for, pelo update, a filha dele está remando uma, numa dos times femininos aí, o André Mota Xará, o melhor, melhor de todos, parabéns André Mota, obrigado aí por estar tá participando dos comentários aí. Eu sei que o André Mota agora vai espalhar esse link aí para uns 20 brasileiros aí, como o Cauê também. Uh, Scott, I was just uh, talking to the people here, they're commenting a lot of the Brazilians, talking about the weight of the canoe. Oh, yes, yes. And Cauê uh, saying that the minimum weight has to be 150 right. kilograms. Uh, so you're right, it makes uh, totally sense what we're talking about. Um, some other people are talking about our transmission that was the best that they, they got uh, over oh, there in Brazil. So fantastic. I just say thanks. That's Scott's, great. Scott's part of that. Uh, and some of talking about the difference of the canoes, we have these people, uh, the, this guy 808 Voyaja. Mahalo for the update. His daughter is paddling. On, oh, uh, with the junior the girls. Yeah. Oh, from Hawaii. from Hawaii. Well, we hope to have the coach uh, mm -hmm. after he gets off the chase boat uh, we already come up here. Him to come here. Yeah. That's right. We we had an opportunity to, uh, to meet uh, some of them yesterday and. and um, They look fit and ready, and uh, God bless them for going out in these conditions. This is this is something else today. Uh, Aisa, uh, Aisa saying congrats to Pam. Which, uh, yeah, she's uh, she's riding on cloud nine, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, Keith, uh, Scott, I'm gonna give an update also what Pam said because they're asking what Pam said in Portuguese. O pessoal, aqui nós trouxemos a última remadora que estava dando a entrevista aqui, ela se chama Pam Butler, ela é esposa do, do meu parceiro em comentários aqui, o Scott, são um dos, um dos pioneiros aí a, a remar a V1 na Flórida, e a Pam é uma, Pam é uma atleta que já remou quase entrou para o time americano aí de, de, de canoa, canoagem olímpica, Uh, na década, há uh, 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 uns anos atrás, e ela é uma das principais uh, incentivadoras da V1 na Flórida. Ela fez o leme do, do time que terminou em quinto lugar aqui, um time, um time daqui do Tahiti, e ela teve o prazer e o privilégio de ser convidada para fazer o leme, de ser a peperô desse time. Uh, a Pam que estava falando o, o quão desafiador é, é para as mulheres participar dessa prova e elas fizeram de uma maneira iron, fizeram a prova solo sem, sem trocas, ela tem duas, duas uh, participantes do time dela aqui, a Stroker, que estão tendo algum atendimento médico aqui, porque as condições estavam brutais, segundo a Pamela aqui. Agora eu vou voltar para o inglês aqui, Scott, back to English, because now we're gonna getting close to the end of the race, 3 hours and 43 minutes three hours and 43 minutes and um, as you saw on the feed earlier they're coming around the airport there um, those fuel tanks are a good indicator of when they're when they're crossing around into the headwinds there's going to be a, a narrowing of the channel as you can see right up here you don't see it on this map yet but there's a bridge that they have to navigate and we've seen in the past people actually run into the bridge because the current is so swift running through it so uh, it's the last sort of like major hurdle to get underneath the, the the bridge you got to go through the second archway people have tried to go through the first it's a little too shallow there and um look at this this is this is view right outside the the tower here at the airport look at the waves that they're having to 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 take on this is inside this is not outside this, this is inside, inside, the, inside the, lagoon. the lagoon so this is this is where like You think it's over, and then it's really not. <laughs> it's really not. I had, a, I had a friend once who used to call it the never-ending story going upwind, and this is the never-ending story the right never here. never-ending story. The never-ending story. Uh, pessoal, aí o Scott aqui estava mencionando aqui que eles, uh, alguns dos times, os principais times aí masculinos já estão na lagoa, aí o time da Shelva A já passaram pelo, pelo, pelo aeroporto ali de Pai, que esse aeroporto, uh, para quem conhece aqui, ele é de carro. Do aeroporto para cá, para onde nós estamos fazendo a transmissão, que foi o início da prova e é o final da prova, é cinco minutos de carro. Cinco um pouquinho mais de 5 minutos de carro 
Mas as condições de vento estão tão brutais que a gente tá, vai, vai ver quanto tempo vai demorar para eles terminarem essa prova. A prova já está se encaminhando para 3 minutos e 45 de prova. A Shell vai na liderança é, e as condições, como eu disse, brutais, mas o, o time está numa sincronia uh, que só a Shell tem. Só a Shell tem aí, você vê aí o, o preparou desse time, Davi Tepava. O grande, o grande leme dessa canoa ele dificilmente tu vê esse cara fazendo um pouco uh, tá sempre remando o Davi, o Davi Tepava uh, as condições como eu disse, uh, repito condições de vento muito forte, muito forte o vento tá aumentando e aumentando uh, cada vez mais aqui, nós estamos até com um problema durante a transmissão, de ter que estar tá cobrindo os microfones para não atrapalhar essa transmissão, Scott uh, we also have people from Brazil Brazil here, William Jacobi, his brother is one in one of the in the Brazilian boat. His brother, his name is Gustavo Jacobi. He is the scholar uh, V1 uh, Jacobi School. Brazil making history yeah. if, together with Chile, being a South uh, first South America a team competing in the Vodafone race. I would I would love to see where they stand right now in the standings. It's they were looking very strong earlier when we saw them and. Um, It's quite a credit to them to, to take on this course in these conditions. As you saw earlier, just a second ago, Shell is looking really strong, really strong. I think they're opening up their lead here as they're as we're coming towards the end of this race. Um, they're they're using that faster cadence again to get into that headwind. But even they are having a little bit of difficulty in, in this headwind. You saw their boat bucking around a little bit. That's that's for an inside course. Anybody who kind of wants to negate uh, the lagoon paddling, come here and try it. I think I think you'll be surprised at, at how difficult it could be. We see kind of white capping rollers going going by here as this team team enters into the final phase of the race. It's and you see, you see more canoes arriving here in front of us. This is the camera is not getting right now, but more girls arriving. And now it's all of them in the same, finishing the race with a big smile, but exhausted. Yeah. Exhausted. Exactly. And uh, Scott, tell me more about where this race is happening. Where this is, this is, uh, before was the Aito was uh, last year, place here, right? Last year, this was the launch point for Te Aito. And um, it basically, um, in years past, um, It, it started up the coast at Point Venus, but they brought it here to Pire last year. I was talking with Charlie Maitre, the race organizer, last year, and he said the, the real problem was that you have to clear the race with each constituents, each constituency, each uh, like each mayor of each little town has to grant you approval. You have to go through the process with the police there looking at, at Shell battling into the wind here. It's, it's, again, it's no joke. Um, but he, I think the issue in part was um, having to deal with so many different municipalities. And uh, so they took it um, down to uh, 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 um down the coast and um, dealing with one mayor, one, one organization. And so it was just easier for them. Also, I will tell you, um, I think it was easier for uh, people who wanted to watch the race. It's a little difficult here to, to watch the race. Once once the racers leave, um, you're basically kind of seeing nothing, whereas there you get a good chance to view the entire course. We see here our standings now. Shell Va'a in first place, Air Tahiti Va'a second place, Paddling Connection. Moving up to third, Popora Tehoi Mamu in uh, from Bora Bora in fourth place. Yeah. And they and still have a long way because yeah, I they can do. see the, fo the, the port way ahead. That's Papete. That's Papete's they have port. They go around that. They have to go around that. And then there's a bridge that they got to clear. And once they clear the bridge, then they still have about three kilometers into this headwind. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, 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 it's a bit of a crazy race. And they keep the same pace from the beginning of the race. They are. They are. You see that they've got their paddlers on the back there ready to jump off and, and looks like they're making ready for a change shortly. Probably drying out as well. E aí, pessoal, vocês veem a condição de vento aí. Isso é dentro da lagoa. Você viu o time da Shell liderando a prova ali. E 
naquela imagem da, da, que você pode ver uh, a Shell, vocês viram que na frente da canoa, lá, bem para frente, bem para vocês podem ver o porto, aqui, aquele porto onde tem os navios ali de, de cargo ships, ali é papete. Eles têm que ir ao redor, ao redor daquele ponto. Então nós estamos falando ainda, ainda tem um, um bom tempo de prova para terminar aí, com essas condições de, indula, de ondulação dentro, e esse upwind dentro do, 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 da lagoa aí. São condições ainda brutais ainda para ter o fim dessa prova. A Shell abriu uma distância boa no começo da prova. Tim Ertahiri, um time muito forte aí. Eu arrisco a dizer que hoje. Hoje é o segundo time aí no mundo uh, atrás da Shell Vaas somente. E é um time que inclusive no, no, no ano passado bateu a Shell Vaas duas ou três vezes aí. Uh, a grande diferença é a Shell teve um, um início de prova muito forte, muito forte. E abriu essa diferença aí e tá, tá, ainda está abrindo ainda mais e mantendo essa diferença para o time Ertia Hiri que, que vem atrás deles. Now, Scott, you mentioned here uh, on, the, on the right side of the, the screen. That's EDT Vaha, and something we haven't mentioned before, but that's a junior team. A junior team. Junior team in 10th place. So the EDT this year is competing with juniors on. Yep, they've got their junior team out there, and if this is any indicator of what they're going to be like later, it's going to be nothing but success for EDT. So uh, congratulations to them uh, to be a 17-year-old paddler or... or beneath is uh, and still compete at this level is pretty phenomenal 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 and more brazilians ask uh, asking here if we know uh which position is the the, the team in south america we haven't seen them um lately we know that they were doing very well at the beginning of the broadcast and um we you know we presume that uh We're going to be seeing something of them shortly. I know that uh, TNTV is very interested in them and wants to to sort of show them. Uh, obviously, once the once the pack spreads out, it's a little bit more difficult to, to show them. Uh, but I know they're favorites of, of the Tahitians here, and um, they're very excited to have uh, the South Americans, the Chileans, and the and the Brazilians here. And uh, you know, it's it, it's been a very welcoming environment for them. And you were here with me early in the morning when we were talking with Patrick. Yes. And he mentioned that like uh, he invited the team to participate and he was so happy that he even allowed, they never allowed someone to pedal the shell, the shell canoe, boat. And they allowed the Brazilians and the guys from Chile to pedal that boat. Basically they said that it was a favor uh, to the Brazilians and the Chileans. They wanted to, to give them this favor of the shell boat. And he was pretty sure it wouldn't happen again. So, <laughs> you know, Take, take full advantage of it, gentlemen. History, history being made. That's right. Pessoal aí do Brasil aqui falando com o Scott e já respondendo aí o, a pergunta do William. Uh, nós não temos ainda a informação de, de que posição que está o time brasileiro. Eles começaram muito forte a prova, muito forte. O time brasileiro estava muito bem no início da prova. Esse, não é, uh, corrigindo aí, não um time brasileiro, é um time sul-americano. Cinco brasileiros aí. Fábio Valongo, Leonardo Pirozolo, Gustavo Jacobi, André Gerbatin e Robert Almeida Dias. Mais quatro chilenos participando desse time. Juan Bostelman, Fernando Zegers, Bruno Zlata e Matias Ortegas. Eles formam o time South America. E o que eu o que eu estava comentando aqui com o Scott que Antes da transmissão, a gente estava conversando aqui com o Patrick Mox, que é o organizador da prova, que é o dono da Vodafone aqui no, na, na, na Polinésia Francesa, e ele estava me falando, André, estou uh, muito contente aí com, com os brasileiros, uh, com a participação dos brasileiros, feliz uh, uh, com, com a, o crescimento da VAA no Brasil, e eles estão, permitiram até os brasileiros usarem essa canoa da chão, que ninguém rema nessa canoa, ninguém é autorizado a sentar nessa canoa, praticamente é tocar aqui. Quando, hoje de manhã, quando eu estava vendo as canoas uh, uh, paradas aqui na praia, era a única canoa que estava num estande coberta, ninguém chegava perto da canoa, ou seja, é um, é um, é um monumento para eles, é, um, é, um, é, um, é uma relíquia essa canoa, e eles autorizarem remadores de fora tá remando nessa canoa é um negócio histórico histórico o Brasil aí tá fazendo história uh, 
na, na VAA aqui, na, no Tahiti, na Polinésia Francesa. O André Mota aí falando surf Roy fazendo história. Concordo, são três remadores da surf Roy nessa canoa aí. O, 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 grande, o grande intuito dessa transmissão é trazer mais brasileiros, deixar mais brasileiros motivados para estar aqui uh, no próximo ano. Eu tive conversas com, e reuniões constantes aí com eu, eu, os organizadores da prova, não só da Vodafone, o Pratic, mas o Reinaldo Tamari, que é o, o organizador da DEA Ito, que ele fez um trabalho maravilhoso, é um novo organizador aí, a Ito mudou a organização e ele fez um trabalho maravilhoso com essa prova, prova realizada em dois dias, com somatória de pontos, mudar a localização, o evento onde a Ito está sendo organizada, é um, um, uma maravilha de lugar, lugar maravilhoso, uh, e o intenti, o, a intuição é essa, o, 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 o é trazer mais brasileiros para estar aqui ano que vem, com certeza nós vamos ver mais brasileiros quem sabe uma canoa 100% brasileira nas águas da Vodafone aqui na, na prova da Vodafone no próximo ano Scott, I was just telling uh, people from Brazil uh, what we talked about before the privilege to be better in the Shelva uh, race not, uh, not only that but what this brings to the VAC community in Brazil and all around the world Next year, for sure, we're going to have more people from all around the world participating, not only at the Vodafone, but the Aito race. I was telling also that we have constant meetings, constantly meetings with uh, the Patrick and Reynald Tamari that is organizer for the, the Vodafone, uh, the, the Aito, that did amazing job as well. Absolutely. Um, so, for next year, what we can expect for those races this This is becoming like a three, uh, three, uh, three weeks. Uh, It looks event. like three weeks in paradise. <laughs> three weeks in paradise. That's a, I better start saving up <laughs> because it's it's the kind of thing that once you experience it, you don't want to stop doing it. So um, it's absolutely a, a, a great place to, to come and compete. It's a great place to, to come and paddle as a as a non competitor. Um, it's it's a it's the sort of thing if you want to surf. Surfing is surfing is your bag in a V1. This is a this is the place to do it. This is the water that is built for. As we look at Air Tahiti here, doing very well, coming around coming around the bend, also following up after Shell. We're looking at at uh, these competitors still looking strong after almost 60 kilometers of, of paddling. Um, I'm I'm here to tell you that uh, three weeks of paddling here seems like a dream. That's seems like true. a dream that's true that's true that's true it's got any we see here team air tahiti come with their strong pace yep very similar to shell and you see how light that ama rides they're really the these boats are balanced beautifully the the ama is just sort of skimming over the water right there so you're lifting up lifting up and but it's not out of control at all each of these paddlers is is balanced. Uh, absolutely balanced beautiful i don't know if you saw earlier but um David Tapava actually had to poke. <laughs> I right. was I was surprised to see it, but but uh, clearly the winds can the winds can even get the better of a of a master like uh, David Tapava. So um, after three hours of race, he poked. <laughs> you know what? That I think he deserves it. He deserves a break. And this team, Team Air Tahiti, uh, solid second. Great coach, Coach Matahi. Yep. Coach Matahi. So uh, for the last two two years, we see Shelva and Team Air Tahiti visiting U.S. Scott, and uh, what this brings for the for the U.S. community uh, in general. Do you know? I want to say that that um, you get to see paddling at at maybe a different level than you're used to. Uh, I know that that uh, a lot of local clubs uh, are interested in competing both nationally and internationally. Um, and so getting an opportunity to um, go up against uh, some of the best paddlers in the world, to see how they perform, to see um, what sort of regimen they, they do, but also to get to know them because, you know, that's that's the great thing about the, the, the Polynesian paddlers is they're not standoffish. They're very forthcoming. They're very giving. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, absolute uh, joy to sort of be with them. Have yeah. you seen this image here, Scott? They're riding Papetti. Yes. Riding and Papetti. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. Literally hundreds of canoes lining the shore. <laughs> this is the kind of place there that um, if you want to paddle, 
you have opportunity to paddle. So as we see these two boats riding right next to one another, it's as much a mental game as a physical game when you get into a situation like that. You don't want that c competitor to get ahead of you, but still you want to you want to give your all. The boat that you really should worry about is the boat that you're in, not the boat that's next to you. That's true. And you can see that the face is very similar between those teams. They're battling. I uh, wonder if this is seniors division. Let's see. Both 374. Both 374 and both both 411. That's Inviter Paul. And this is top 10. So Inviter Paul and what's our other boat? 411 Vini Vine. 411 Vini battling it out. Yeah, I battling think it out. For the second position and the seniors. This is incredible. Incredible uh, effort on both these teams. To think that you've gone almost 60 kilometers and you're and you're still having to battle in a head-to-head -head race that is nothing there's nothing like it anywhere else in the world and actually the seniors division yeah this is, is the, the one with the most open division competitors. yep the open division paddling right here so as you can see each of these peperu they're still paddling they're still contributing to the forward momentum of the boat it's not just poking all the time Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful effort on both these teams, in Ryder, Paul and Vini. So this is like open division, top 10. Rosa Trainer, parabéns pela transmissão. Obrigado, Rosa. Rosa Trainer is here saying congratulations for the, for the streaming. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure as we see the second place boat, Air Tahiti, here. Looking very strong, very smooth. This is the part of the race where you are hoping it's going to be over, <laughs> but you know you still have plenty of time in the race, and you have to really concentrate on your form, really concentrate on ensuring that everybody's entering and exiting at the exact same time. Any sort of slip up here means the boat goes slower, and at this point in the race, you do not want your boat to be going any slower. You want as much forward momentum as you possibly can get. And I was noticing here, Scott, uh, how different you see the pepero here how when he pokes he pokes not with the full blade in the water right right you don't need to bury it fully you just need a little correction if your boat has its forward momentum the more the more deviation from that main course uh, the, the slower your slower your boat's gonna go but look here it comes you, paddling you see the gap for uh, team at Tahiti to paddling connection, paddling connection. But I'll tell you right now, do not count out paddling connection. No, the, uh, honestly, I think that the, the gap was bigger. It was much bigger, and this is where paddling connection gets people, right here at the tail end of this race. We've seen it before. They, they did it a couple years ago to Team EDT. EDT looked like they had second locked up, and paddling connection came and just snatched it from them. So... Air Tahiti really needs to uh, make sure they keep their their full power on because they've got they've got a lion at their heels. Uh, Pat was paddling for paddling connection be, uh, before it was uh, Tupuria King was paddling for paddling connection. Right? He's paddled with him in the past. Of course, our good friend T paddles for them. Uh, he's not here this year, but uh, uh, they have incredible paddlers with uh, just amazing physicality. We're gonna see another change. Got a change out coming here. This never gets old. Team Air Tahiti. Air Tahiti. Quick change. Very, another very quick change. Quick change. Drinking some water. Okay, passing back water to the Peperu. And off they go. This is a grueling, grueling race. In this environment and with this kind of wind, uh, my hat is off to all of these paddlers. They've just done a remarkable job. And we just passed four hours, four hours and four minutes of race. So I want you to take a look at the difference of the ratings of these two boats. There's Shell. They've still got that, that quick rating. So they're really, really working their way in, windward. Whereas Air Tahiti seems to have a little no. bit longer, a little bit slower stroke, and I feel like that this is probably um, retarding their advance. 
So we've got Shelva uh, hard in the port here. They're going to make a hard right turn and head under the bridge. And so how many miles would we would guess for Shell to finish this race? I want to say they're about uh, two and a half miles down the course from us, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. A little bit more. You can see as they're coming in past the ships here, there's going to be a bridge. And here, here's here's where we are. We'll, we'll get a good opportunity to see how much actual distance there is left. This is where Shell is. They're just entering that port yeah. area. They just finished the Papetti leg and now Papete, now they have to turn right. So 58 kilometers, this is a 60 kilometer race, so 2K down the course. But it, now it's going to be more than 60. If they did 58 right now, yeah. it's going to be way more. And here's this bridge we've been talking about, and you can see the wind is being funneled through the bridge. So <laughs> if you've ever experienced this yourself, under the bridge is where the water is worst. It's, t it's a terrible environment to be in. They're going to take that. They should be taking that second. They look like they're taking the first. Man, look, look, look this pepero. Yep. That's Davide Pava, guys. Davide Pava. Up. Let's see his line. What line he's going to take. Oh, he's going to take the first one. Okay. All right. Race organizer said, oh, and look at that. Look at the rocks. That's why, <laughs> that's why you want to wow. take the second one. So that's nothing but a washing machine. Great drone footage coming under the bridge here. Wow. What wow. Wow. And now wel welcome to the full-on headwind, gentlemen. <laughs> so now it's a strong upwind. Yep. And so they're basically going to, like, they're going to work their way up to us here in Pire. And Scott, that's where the shelf art practice It's near to this area here. Because um, we know that, like, a Tahiti is a big island, and yes. some teams are like a training only in a specific area where they keep the canoes. But Shelva, I know that it is around Papeti, Pire. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're more down towards uh, the port area where they are right now. Um, is where their boathouse is. Uh, Pire is around the corner from us uh, to the to the east. Where, from where we're broadcasting and you've got uh, OPT there, you've got uh, the Pire Canoe Club there. Um, you've Actually, there's just so much paddling uh, sort of crammed into this area. It's, it's, it's remarkable how many clubs there are. But both clubs that you know of and you've, other clubs that you've never heard of. So. Yeah, I'm asking this because it may, maybe makes a difference also in this end of the race. Just looking how he did that turn, that was really changing. He's coming like in a fast pace. He knew, he knew where to go. If you knew where to, uh, to he knew where to go. If you knew you were a good steersman, you're going to be struggling or uh, desperate when you see those he's, concrete he's, walls coming that close to you. He's probably taken that line a couple hundred times a couple before. couple hundred times, right? <laughs> he knew right where to go. Here we've got the EDT Juniors again making their way up around towards and that port area. Look how far they are already from the, the bridge. Yep. They just passed the bridge and look at how far they are already. Yeah, no, he's 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 now in the final stretch. We're going to be seeing them come in front of us live here very shortly. So I, want, I wonder how fast they are going right now, the, the Shava team. I, it's difficult to gauge, especially with such a, a heavy wind, but probably 11, 12 kilometers per hour still. We see. We saw that they made the channel back in almost the same amount of time that they took it downwind. So that, to me, shows just pure, pure physical strength in this boat. Okay, what we see right now, it's already Pire. Heading up, heading up the course. They're going to make this turn and come around to us. É isso aí, pessoal. Vocês veem o time da Shelva aí que acabaram de passar ali naquela ponte ali, o, o trabalho do leme deles aqui, o Peperoto, do Davi Tepava. Impressionante como ele, como ele fez aquela curva, aquele contorno ali, na, uh, 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 passando embaixo da ponte. É um cara que conhece essas águas aqui, né? Como ele rema. Uh, o, o time da Shell ele, ele é mais centrado aqui no, perto de Papete, Pire. Então ele conhece muito bem essa, essas águas, né? Mas é impressionante você ver a demonstração, o talento de, desse leme 
é, como ele controla essa canoa remando o tempo inteiro sem fazer muito pouco Uh, Davi Tepava dando um show Um show de, de leme aqui pra vocês A, a prova já tá chegando Perto do fim Já passa quase seis, é, 60 km de prova uh, Nós vamos fazer, contornar Aí a direita do, da, dessa imagem E vamos Pra... Uh, de, em direção já ao final da prova dessa prova, eles estão sendo perseguidos aí pelo time da Team Air Tahiri mas a distância é grande e o Petlin Connection, que era o time que estavam em terceiro caíram para a quarta posição retornaram para a terceira conexão e sempre lembrando o Petlin Connection que é um time muito eles aí na tela, é um time muito forte, que eles terminam tem, tem essa tendência de terminar a prova muito forte, já surpreenderam muito time, muitos times no final de prova, quando já estavam, outros times acharam que, que já estavam ganho e eles vêm sempre surpreendendo no final, então mantém aí o, 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 o atenção aí para esses dois times aí disputando o segundo e terceiro lugar, Team Erta Hill e Impedding Connection. Scott, with you guys here, ready to the end of this race, uh, was just mentioned the, how impressive is the Tavite Pava steering in doing those turns, He's controlling the, the, the Matahina in the way that only he, he knows how to do it. Absolutely. I mean, you saw him actually really struggling to keep that boat straight in that in that crosswind as he's coming around the corner there. You know, a lesser steers person is going to let that boat veer off wide to the left and they're going to have to overcorrect. So it's those sorts of things that, that make him just uh, the greatest of all time. He is the greatest of all time in terms of steers people. He just... What would uh, other great uh, steersmen from Tahiti, from, uh, from the French Polynesia, would you like to mention, Scott? I just don't know anybody who compares with him. <laughs> you know, no. honestly, I don't. I don't. Kevin, Kevin is a great steer. Uh, Manoteo Mion is a great steer. He steers for his his home club from time to time. Reteb is a great steer. Reteb is. A, I mean, you've got you've got other people who are very good at it, but he's just he's so next level. It's just not even. It's, it's tough to talk about. It's kind of like Michael Jordan, who's, who, you know, yeah. Scotty Pippen was great, but Michael Jordan was just in a class by himself. So here we see amazing effort here at the end. Look at all the va in the background. Look yeah. at all the canoes on the shore. Are you kidding me? This is like a dream come true for someone who loves to paddle. Dream come true, dream come true. And Andre Mota mentioned here, Canoa da Shell mantendo o ritmo e, e, e sincronismo, bonito de se ver. Absolutely. Obrigado, André, pelo comentário. Like you say, like the, the, shell, the shell team keeping the, the same pace and the same timing. It's beautiful to see the, the, they, this demonstration. They are just, it's, it's almost machine-like how precise they are with their strokes. Just, yeah, there we go, through the bridge through the bridge paddling connection I think we're looking at paddling connection here it's hard to see how close they are to Air Tahiti now but uh, you know again you're looking at great paddling here in both of these boats the shell boat the paddling connection boat the Air Tahiti boat these are these are like top paddlers at the top of their game it's such a pleasure to watch it's a pleasure to be here with you in Tahiti see, doing this live and uh, once again a big shout out to TNTV and Olivier and uh, all I gotta say is Norman James is my hero because he just brought us something something amazing chicken burgers oh chicken burgers and iced tea fantastic Norman Norma is our guy here our like a uh, reporter in the field we, we like to say that we have like you're the man we, 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 like, we like to say Norman let's give a shout out here for the camera we have like let's bring Norman that's right a quick comment in the camera uh, Norman so Norman was our boat captain uh, down in, in uh, Chopo the other day. Norman, come on in here. So here, guys, this is Norman James here. He's a Hawaiian dude. He lives in Tahiti for how long, Norman? Uh, 22 years. <laughs> 22 years living here in Tahiti. He's a captain, travel all around the world. And all the Polynesian islands, all the islands around the world, South America, everywhere, this guy has been to all those places. So, if you're coming to Tahiti, this is your reach guy. Out. This is your guy. This is your guy he's right here. Connect you <laughs> with uh, Adi. He's gonna connect you with uh, teams here. He's gonna tell you the best place to go, taking boat rides, 
Just took the idea yes, to see Tehupo. Tehupo, yeah. Tehupo. Tehuapo. 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 Or like people say in Brazil, Tehupo. <laughs> <laughs> so, pessoal no Brasil, Norman James here. Um grande nome aqui no Tahiti, havaiano que mora aqui no Tahiti já há mais de 20 anos. Se você está vindo para o Tahiti, me manda um contato aí, eu passo o contato do Norman. Pode arranjar tudo para você aqui, canoa, passeio de barco, pode te botar em contato com os melhores times aqui. Ele é um capitão de barco, levou a gente para ter a roupa lá para ver as ondas. Norman, talk more about it like you experience and, and, and congratulations for Felipe Toledo, El Salvador. That's the right. That's all right. the yeah. Brazilian, you know all the Brazilian guys, Felipe Toledo, uh, Gabriel Medina, Norman James, uh, Va Vibes here, not only about paddling, but sharing, sharing the Va community, sharing the Va Vibes, the Va energy, for sure, Norman is part of that. And for the premier Tabo time, you know there's an octagon right over there. All right, oh, all right, right, all right. Yeah. Those, yeah, guys, yeah. those guys try to put me in trouble <laughs> to fight MMA fight here, right? Yeah, all right. Taekwondo, Jiu-Jitsu. All right, right, right next, next to you, Andre. All right. <laughs> a pleasure to have you here, Norman. Okay, as they next say in Tahiti, bon, uh, tama, tama Mai Tai. Enjoy your lunch. Thank for you. Next year, for next year, <laughs> we're going to have now Norman doing the taboo time with Norman. That's right. <laughs> We promise you no wind. <laughs> <laughs> he can't make that promise. All right, we're getting re uh, reading to Thank the you, end Norman. of this race. He ran up the race, and and Norman continues here with us. Uh, the race is getting close to the end now, Scott. Much I closer. Know, I know that you want to eat your sandwich, but let's wait. Listen, I can't eat it. It's so exciting here. We're going to see Shell coming across the the line here, uh, very closely. I mean, we are right at the end here you can see the reef starting to come in a little bit more closely the reef is only about a uh, half mile offshore so um, and you can see the depth of the water from this view just to the right of their boat to the left of their boat it's it's actually quite shallow so they're in the only channel that they could could go um, we've got a lot of canoes that are being sort of taken out of here back to their home clubs so these guys are going to have to get out of the way of a very fast moving shelva as we come up the coast here to Pire, all, all at the end of a, an amazing four hours and 17 minutes. I think it's going to roll in right around 4.30. That was your prediction, wasn't it? 4.30 was my prediction in the beginning of the race. Yeah, and you're right, Scott. We are now four hours and 17 minutes for this race. Shelva is getting close to win this race from... The big, head to toe. Yep. Head they, to toe, like the same pace, amazing time, uh, incredible, and his steersman demonstrating a lot of knowledge of those the waters. And look at this. Look, look at the how pickup. they finished this race. Even yeah. now, they're picking up. They're not gonna. They're not gonna take any chances. It doesn't matter how far back the second boat is. We're looking now. At Shell, we probably can see them. Here come the first boats. There, we've got we've got sight lines on the boat. They're coming around the corner here. They're going to make it into the Bay here in Pire. So, our winner today is, of course, Shelva. That was probably obvious about an hour ago, but now we can we can call it for sure. They're making their way into the open water of the bay. They're going to make this big horseshoe turn and come up come up live in front of us here any minute now. As you can see in the image, we are close to the end. You see those escort boats that are following a chase boat. They are all arriving here. So we see a lot of movement here at the beach. So I'm pretty sure that the, the shell canoe is getting close to... They're to just right the around the corner here. We've yeah. got we've got the, the, the lead boats with their flags indicating where the course is, which is a nice convention. And I see the canoe. We see now we have visual of the Shelva canoe. It's four hours, 19 minutes. If they go, if they're gonna do the same turn and the boys where they, with the women did, I would, I would say that this race is gonna end close to four minutes, four hours and 10 minutes. minutes. Four hours and 10 minutes. Yep. Shell canoe, e from the start to the end of this race, leading the race, a huge demonstration of the power and, and control 
and you see David Pava is cheering one side and paddling with his hand in the other side. Absolutely. Well, that's his trademark. Right? Honestly, he's he's got nothing to lose here, but he's acting like like he's got everything to lose here, and that's that's what makes him a champion. What's that's what's making them champions. They are not letting up. Look at the rating as they're coming into this headwind. This is pure paddling right here. Pure, beautiful, beautiful paddling. And they're coming fast, Scott. They're coming fast. We already have visual. Yep. Uh, they're right in, passing right in front of uh, the, the transmission uh, cabin here where we are with the TN, TNTV. Uh, also, again, thank you, TNTV, for providing us this amazing feed, this partnership with our vibes. Uh, me, Andres Souza, Black Belt Pedro, and Scott Miller, the new voice of the Vibe community, doing this for the phone channel race. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, Scott. It's thank a historic right. moment for us for the for us as a p1 uh, paddler or fine enjoyer and also for people in brazil people in chile uh people all around the world we have people even from europe here doing comments it's true. And commentating um, it's such an, a pleasure to be here and, and look see, at see the, the all those amazing athletes performing in the the they're the right Indonesian waters. right in front of us now right in front of us and as we see them live going across the horizon there they're just absolutely fluid beautiful strong together the synchronicity is amazing these are paddlers who are not not side, ever going to relent side by side you have the image from the leader of the race in second place Shalva and Team Air Tahiti. Team, you, know, you have to mention Team Air Tahiti, the Absolutely. amazing job that they are doing. Yep. Those guys, incredible. Uh, 2022 was an amazing year. 2023 has been an amazing year as well for them. They competing head to head uh, with Shelva in some way races here. Even like being able to beat Shelva in a few opportunities. A strong team. Team at Tahiti, uh, a team here from, from Tahiti, uh, I know personally you know, uh, some of those guys, personal friends of you, you Scott and me, uh, Kyle Tarafo, Tani, Ray Rodin, Ray Rodin, uh, amazing guys that like I, I had the pleasure to meet those guys in California, they all went to to race the Va California race, a, a big shout out for Kelly right. Thompson that Absolutely. put the race together yeah. and, and promoting the V1 uh, in California. It's a US. great race series, great race series set up in California and if you're interested in racing V1 that's where you need to be, so at least in the United States. Here in Tahiti it's a whole different story, so we we have no visual yet on Air Tahiti but they're right around the corner, so we're looking now live at, at um, Shell as they're getting ready to come around the final bend. They'll be right here in front of us, uh, and I think you're right. I think I think we're looking at about seven minutes to make this final loop, and you'll get your four hours and thirty minutes, Andre. Four hours and thirty minutes. I was sharp in the time, man. They surprised me on that upwind. I thought it was going to be more, but they, that upwind was insane, Scott. They, they, they came in a fast pace, put a, a demonstration of power. Yes. Yeah, it's 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 sort of a remarkable thing that you can make a boat go as fast upwind as it goes downwind. Pessoal, o pessoal, a a canoa da Shell mandando bala aqui na na terminando chegando perto do fim, contornando aí o que eu vejo que é a penúltima boia, essa boia aí da Sprite, essa boia verde. E eles vão agora em direção a uma outra boia vermelha aí, uma, termi, passando essa boia vermelha, a próxima boia vermelha já é uma reta para a linha de chegada. Uh, Canoa da Shell que do começo ao fim vem liderando essa prova. Uh, uma, uma demonstração de superioridade, de poder aí de, de, desse time da Shell que realmente é um time diferenciado, como o Scott estava mencionando antes aí, 
parte uh, desse, desse sucesso deve-se também ao Davi Tepava, que é o leme dessa canoa, o peperô dessa canoa, o Davi Tepava, que faz um trabalho fenomenal com o time da Shell, tratando esses remadores aí como família, é, são remadores aí que ele, 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 eles vivem, para a Shell, vivem pra, 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 juntos com a Shell, e aí eu consigo ver também aqui a canoa da time Artaíris, já vi na atrás aí, e aí eu vou trazer o, o Scott aí para os comentários em inglês, Scott, as, as we see Shell doing the last turn That's for right. the Red Bull, and now it's a straight line all the way back to the end, we can see also the team Artaíris. Team Artaíris here coming in right in front of us, so not very far behind. Not very far behind, only a couple of minutes behind Shell. That's a very close race for a Shell team. Shell sometimes will put like 10 or 15 minutes in front of their competition. Not this time. Air Tahiti's kept it going strong, and we see them entering the bay here. They're looking very strong as they come in, but look at the pace that Shell is putting on here right at the finish. They're leaving nothing to chance, and why should they? Because they, in order yeah. to be a champion, you got to race all the way through the line. You don't give up beforehand. I would say 500 meters to the end of this race, Yeah. and Shell va coming in a insane pace. They're paddling like there's a boat right on their heels. They're Not the case, but listen, this this Air Tahiti team may as now well be right on their heels. They're right here. They're the right same here. Same side now, all of them. Yep, it's like they're that's their traditional uh, same side paddling. Look at them offside. The amount the amount of precision, the amount of power, it's just beautiful to watch. Let's watch it. In the historical moment for all the Vaco, I mean, historical moment for us, Scott, you and me here participate of this stream. Absolutely, the and here TV. they come crossing the line. Shelva. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. At 4.26.26. Ah, 4, 26. they I got you by, by four, four minutes. minutes. Four minutes. No, three and a half. Three and a half. All right, so I'll give you three okay. and a half. That's okay. That's Shelva. Someone told them that there was, I told 4.30. There was a Brazilian making 4.30. Yeah. Right. And here comes, as you can see, right in front of us here, right in front of the camera here at TNTV. This is Air Tahiti. And now I'm curious to see how much further back is our friends from Paddling Connection. E aí, ó, o time da Shelva A terminou essa prova aí de uma maneira espetacular, uma demonstração de poder aí, de força, sincronismo, uh, terminando essa prova aí com uma vantagem muito boa para o time da Team Artahiri, terminando a prova num sprint maravilhoso, uh, time da Shelva A que está de parabéns pro, pro, pelo que fizeram aí nessa prova aí, o time da Shelva A. Uh, vou tentar trazer uma imagem aí com, uma, com a nossa câmera aqui, desse time da, do, do que eu consigo ver aqui na frente de, de, da transmissão. Scott, Team Shelva A demonstrating that it's no joke to compete against them, right? Absolutely, absolutely no joke. They're, uh, <laughs> They are, they are the gold standard of, of outrigger paddling, as we know it right now. But I'll tell you, I'm impressed with this Air Tahiti team, and not, not far back, not far back from them, we're seeing them start to come around the corner. I've got visual on them right now. There's paddling connection. They've clawed their way back to a close third. So this is a very, very tight race. 60 kilometers and to be within a couple minutes of the lead, that's that's an amazing effort on the part of these boats. So, yeah, we've got Air Tahiti getting ready to make the, the first bend and right behind them, there's paddling connection and then the fourth boat right behind them. So we are not that far strung out here. Ordinarily, we see much, much greater uh, uh, leads on the part of Shell, and we don't see, we don't see that now. And you see here, the, the, giving this interview for Shelva, that's Chow, second place on the Aito. Right. On the last race, right. Chow from Team Shell, him and his uh, uh, teammate Breeze. Breeze won the Aito. Yep. Um, and Chow in the last race was the second place, both battling for Shelva. I'm pretty sure that the, 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 the reporter from TNTV, um, I'm gonna try to reach out to Breeze. Uh, but let me tell you something, Scott. I did an interview with them um, three days ago, and it's really fun because they're very, very humble, very simple people, and they get really shy of the cameras. They don't, they don't like to talk to the cameras. No, too that's much. true. That's true. 
so it's fun it, even to me to see right now he's talking and talking to the camera it's it's a challenge it's a challenge to make the, those guys uh, share uh, uh, not share their knowledge but like a talk to the camera talk to the camera yep, they're very simple humble people they just they see it as a matter of course they're they're all they're doing is paddling they're not they don't look at themselves as superstars they just see themselves as as Polynesians who happen to paddle here we see Air Tahiti coming around the first buoy not very far behind them paddling connection this is strong strong showing for these two teams and we have here in the comments it's got more people Leandro Pirozolo from Brazil he say it's amazing transmission Ana Ana from Florida that's uh, Conrad's wife oh yeah yeah Ana my friend Ana Ana Garcia Cuban Ana Cuban Ana she always like bring coffee I know I know where's our, we finish. where's our cortadito Ana <laughs> thanks for participating uh, we're gonna see uh, gonna see you soon when I go back to Florida team Air Tahiti doing the last turn squad the, the red buoy you can see what it looks like from their vantage point with this drone coverage as they're coming into the final final 500 of the finish so now they are going to have to sprint it out because they have a very strong pilot connection team in mid turn right behind them i want to say the f the fourth team is our team from bora bora this is their this is that's their owner that's the owner of the team shelva it's Patrick's father. That's Patrick's father. Patrick's father. So now it's a straight line to the end for Team Air Tahiti. Here we Finishing go. Finishing this race. It's four hours, 31 minutes. And uh, yes, less than 10 minutes behind Shelva. That's a, that's uh, nothing for a race like this. Nothing for a race like this. We're getting close to what? More than 60 kilometers. Yeah, just race. about. Just about. Paddling connection coming to the final turn buoy making their way around so the difference is not so far from not very connection. not very far we're looking at about maybe a minute behind maybe a minute behind yeah it was a very hard competition between team air tahiti and paddling connection right paddling connection that went to fourth place came back to third place uh after the second part of the race uh, i've always been impressed with their paddling uh, they they bring an aggressiveness and a rawness to their paddling that uh just can't be denied yeah you're right here's air tahiti nui approaching the fu the finish line now they right here they've locked it up for second place on this 10th anniversary yeah for vodafone fourth anniversary for the vodafone race so congratulations to Air Tahiti. Congratulations to Team Air Tahiti. Wonderful race. Coach Matahi, Tani, my friend Tani. Tani, look, and the paddling in C2. There he is. Tani, Hey Ro, Ray Rodim, uh, Kyle Tadafo. Amazing paddlers, Team Air Tahiti. A lot of good friends in, in Team Air Tahiti. Uh, congratulations, guys. Aí, pessoal, time, time Team Air Tahiti terminando na segunda colocação. Menos de 10 minutos aí do time uh, da Shell. Para falar a verdade, aí foram foram uh, seis minutos de diferença, o que não é nada numa prova dessa. E a Paddling Connection uh, terminando a prova em terceiro lugar. Scott Paddling Connection finishing this race in third place. They came really strong on the, yes, second, uh, on the second part of the race uh, on the upwind. Upwind is clearly their bag. They, they they do really well into upwind as they cross the line here. Uh, it's just a championship. We got a shout out from Juan Pablo Anzola. Oye, Consuelito, que pasó? Hey, Juan Pablo Anzola, my friend, Juan pa the Phantom, the, the Colombian Phantom. The Colombian Phantom. The, the, this guy is one of the fast paddlers in Florida. Juan Pablo Anzola, personal friend. I share the water with this guy like basically every day. Good to see you here, JP. Uh, Thank, thanks for participating with Anna and all the Hui Absolutely. and all the guys from Florida. Thanks for like joining and 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 joining this live stream. is really really important for our Vaha community to keep growing. Hey JP, we were wondering where you were. So now 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 we find you. JP JP is fast. He is fast. He is fast, fast in the canoe. He just need to sit up in a V1 now, Scott. I'm trying to convince him to spend some time on a V1. You uh, know, don't you do don't that. need to stop paddling OC. You have to. That's right. Enjoy new uh, watercraft. That's Beautiful. right. That's right. 
I'm sure he would be uh, Leandro Pirozolo, that. Leandro Pirozolo from Brazil. Meu irmão Leo Pirozolo, vamos. So Leandro, he's the brother of Leo Pirozolo, who okay. is in the South American team, the first team from uh, outside uh, the Polynesia to compete in this race. Wow, it's amazing. And, and what we see here is uh, Vini. This is the, this is in fact uh, the Bora Bora team coming in fourth. Bora Bora team. The Bora Bora team. Kevin CJ given an interview, he was steering for paddling connection. Paddling connection. So third place in this race the, was amazing. The world class paddler Kevin Serranjurusa Lemi. Steering for paddling connection. He did he did the uh, DAI to V1. He finished top top 20, but also he won the Aito OC1. This uh, year they 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 the changed. Next day. Yeah, they did the second race with OC surf skis. Uh, also, guys, for you, um, the Aito has changed. Now uh, you can have like OC ones, surf skis pedaling at the, the Aito. So if you're like, a, if you don't pedal a V1, but you want to be part of this event, now it's your time. We, they have surf skis, they have OC ones, so we, we have like a surf skis guys coming from Europe, from Australia. Tupuriakin was racing surf ski on the second day. That's right, that's Kevin right. Kevin Jerusalem was ra racing OC one. So come next year, come paddle, come participate of this race. JP, come come here, come participate of this race next year. We'd love to see you paddling on a V1, or if you don't want to paddle V1, come paddle OC one. Conrad Garcia. Conrad Garcia. Conrad is saying there's cafe waiting when we get back home. Conrad Garcia, my friend, my personal friend, Conrad Garcia, he's a, I love he's this a great guy. guy. It's uh, uh, an enthusiast of the bar. And throws a good barbecue. And I, I would risk to say that Conrad has more canoes <laughs> than Ozone and Ari together. <laughs> that might be true. Right? Look at this race coming down the course here now. These two boats are still battling it out. And that's this the, is the canoe, the original Matahina, right? The original Matahina, and then right next to it, the, the EDT Junior boat. So people from Brazil asking what position is the, 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 the Brazilian team right now. I can, I can reply this one in Portuguese for them. Go ahead. Pessoal do Brasil aí, ó, que tá perguntando. Nós temos um time, um time sul-americano. Primeira vez que um time sul-americano tá participando dessa prova. Uh, um time que tem cinco remadores brasileiros nesse time. E quatro remadores chileno, chilenos. Time convidado para fazer parte dessa prova. Fazendo história, fazendo história uh, aqui no Tahiti remando a canoa, a tradicional canoa da Shelva A, canoa amarela da Shelva A. Uh, Fábio Valongo está nesse time, uh, Léo Pirozolo está nesse time, entre outros nomes. Uh, um, time, um time que começou a prova de uma maneira muito forte, mas você sabe que o nível aqui, aqui na Polinésia Francesa é um nível tremendamente agressivo, também muito forte o nível. Nós estamos aqui esperando a, a, a TV Taitiana ter essa imagem aí do, do time brasileiro, onde está o time brasileiro e com certeza nós vamos tentar trazer esse time aqui para dar uma entrevista para vocês. Então vocês aí, ó, Leandro, que, que é irmão, a mãe do Léo, se falarem com eles, manda eles virem aqui e dar um alô para a gente aqui na, 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 na cabine de transmissão. Uh, Scott, I know that you're trying to eat your sandwich right now, Not even. but I'm going to bring you back to the transmission. Not even. This is an you amazing know? opportunity to I see great canoe. I was just telling that Brazil is making history with Chile together being like having this team participating of the Vodafone race for the first time. Absolutely. Absolutely true. We're looking forward to seeing them cross the line here strong like they started out <coughs> as we see our fifth team coming across here. This is the Hino Rorea team that was uh, duking it out with Shell at the very beginning. In the beginning of the race. So top five. Top five. Top five. Amazing, amazing. Four hours, 39 minutes. Yep. From Rorea. Ah, look at this. So oh. the junior boat's coming around here now. And then right out hard on their heels, the traditional Matahina. So this is the junior boat from Hawaii? From EDT. Ah, from EDT. 
And behind is George Gronstadt. Uh, maybe not. Hang on. Maybe not. No, definitely. No, George is not paddling, but his brother Johan is. So. But on this team, on the uh, regional Matahina, you have Manoteo Mion paddling. Exactly. Team. You've got Manoteo Mion. You've got Rete Ebb. You've got, you've got some of the, the greatest paddlers. Uh, of all time. Of all time in this boat. And as we see them come down the, the course here. Look at this image just caught. Absolutely. Look at this. Look at this. He's making a move on the outside right there. Uh, now he's getting sucked in right behind him, right up the tailpipe. It's going to be difficult to overcome that with so little. And we have image of the, we have visual of the, uh, this finish. It's incredible. Like, it is incredible watching them come across this line. But I think they got stuck on the... He got swept in by the by the wake and and, by the wake. and wasn't able to sort of overcome. There's now less than 100 meters. There's no way that he's going to be able to overcome this start. So you have here on the, on the right side is Manatea Bob Dupont giving an interview for the for the Tahitian TV. Another another Tahitian peddler that was part of the Vodafone the Vaa California series. Manatea Bob Dupont. He raced in California, the third race of the series, with a lot of big team of Tahitians that went to California Scott. All right, Ana Ana Garcia says she's going to be paddling Baa soon. I can't, I can't wait to see this. This is awesome. And I, uh, I'm pretty sure that she will because that's a woman that she paddles OC1. She came from some some standard paddle, standard surf. surf that's right. Surf, standard paddle boarding, OC. Uh, now paddling surf ski with Conrad. That's right. For sure, it's the V1. It's what is missing for for that's this right. for this lady. It's the last arrow in the quiver there. Right. And you can see the effort on the part of their Peparu here. He's 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 done. And yeah, that's the wooden matahina. That's right. The original, the original matahina. Who's that? Reteb? No, 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 no. This is, I think, Johan Kronstadt. Oh, that's the brother yeah. of George. Border. That's true. Yeah. I want to see who's who their uh, who their steer was. But Manu Actually, is Manu right Tam, behind him. Manu Tam Mion. So Manu Tam Mion is was steering he, this He boat. steers. He's an excellent steers steers person. Excellent Peperu. Fatima Piro Zolo, happy. Oh, okay, yeah. Hey, we're gonna bring to the screen here. Patrick Mose, the, the the guy who put this race together, That's right. the name of this race here, the the guy who's changing the sport. The, the, uh, we're gonna bring him here to the, 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 the for to give a shout out to US right now with Patrick. Patrick. Welcome, Patrick. Yes, I got you. I got you. Okay. Patrick, we have here Brazil. We have we have like a we have U.S. Brazil. A lot of people commenting, give a feedback. Portugal. How amazing Portugal! How amazing this race is. Very impressive with the route that he did. The course, the conditions, the weather was very challenging. But they were very happy to see the women's competing in this. Like a, yes, you, I said, like Patrick is changing the sport. He's giving opportunity for the women to prove their value. So tell me about more about of uh, what are you doing for the VAC community? What do you for the sport? Putting the those amazing paddlers of the women's uh, to to race in, in equal conditions with the men's uh, in those challenging conditions. First of all, I want just to say again, thank you guys. To thank come you. So far away thank you. And to uh, it's our pleasure. To promote our country and and say hi to all the Brazilian, American, South American people who are watching us. Really, thank you. Thanks a lot. And thanks to the team, uh, to the South American team. I don't know where they are, but I will uh, wait for them. Yeah, we have like a mom, like a uh, Fatima Pirozoli is his mom. His oh, brother, brother, yeah. they're oh. waiting. Oh, we wanna see uh, they want to so know where they are. The show, uh -huh. And I was telling for all of them that 
that Brazil and Chile, they're making history here because, the, as you said, to come here, it's a, such a pleasure for uh, people to come to Tahiti, come to French Polynesia, come here and enjoy this vibe. See, French Polynesia is beautiful, you have the beautiful, but what attracts more is the people here, how they are welcome. People here open their house to receive other people here. They, you don't see that in any other part of the country. It's a tension away. That's why I love so much my country. Is the people are really friendly, they tip from their hearts, and uh, we like to share our culture. And we are very happy to see foreign people who are very interesting about our culture, about canoe, about Baha. And to have those guys, you know, I see the, the, the Amer South American team yesterday, and when I see how passionate they are about what they are doing, I just say, just, just go, just I'm proud of it. And uh, I'm very happy that we have this first foreigner team on uh, Master Man, which is quite a challenge. I will wait more for the other years, but already congratulations. Yes. Now, now regarding your previous question about the woman, you know, uh, the previous years we were organizing the mixed category, which is a mix of men and women. Then uh, we have seen that it was too much limited, and I have so many women that are complaining. Oh, guys, you know, we have a team who want to race, even if we are not so much as a man, but we want to prove ourselves uh, to be in some way equal on the sport. And with my team, we say, okay, let's let's try to organize a little race for women, and and that's what we have done it. And uh, I think he is now is is here for a long time. We are here like a, it's already almost a week we're here. Me and Scott, and Scott actually, it's a husband of uh, Pam Butler. Pam no, Butler, Pam no, uh, with the Haitian team. Okay. Pam Butler, and she was his cheer, and she was the member of that team. So. Uh, and I talked to a lot of women uh, this week. I talked to Vaibiti, I talked to Elizabeth, I talked to uh, Iloha. Iloha. And they are taking the, the same thing. Like They want to prove that they can do the same that the men do. So my question for you is like, uh, Patrick, opening the doors for the women, what are you doing right now? You basically changing a little bit the sport, like you're putting the women in another level. Uh, maybe we're going to see other uh, race organizers bringing more women or giving the same uh, uh, treatment, or not treatment in a, good, in a better way, but like letting them race the, the, the same course of the men's race. We can see that and expect maybe Hawaii Nui. Uh, uh, Hawaii Nui women race as well, which is a bit different than the men, as well as us. But it's true that when you look at the condition that women are paddling, which is a very long 32 kilometers, that's tough. That's really tough. Iron. And you know, uh, <laughs> and I used to be partying a lot in previous, previous years, right. but it's, it's very long, trust yeah. me. I'm happy that I'm only commenting. That's, I'm not, that's I'm not sharing true. the water with this woman. That's you right. You, you, are, you understand where is the good place to be. Exactly. exactly. Patrick tried to put me in trouble. <laughs> he knows that I do jiu-jitsu and I'm a black man, jiu-jitsu black man. He tried to convince me we were in a meeting for this race. And he is with Olivier and Baptiste was participating in this, in this meeting. And for one moment he was talking about uh, the Vodafone become a bigger event. It's not only Vaha, you have like a Jiu-Jitsu. I just saw a brown belt Jiu-Jitsu guy here that I saw in a Tahitian magazine. Uh, you have a cultural dancing, you have other sports on the participant. And through it he was explaining uh, to me about the, the, the event. And he, someone mentioned, oh, this guy does jiu-jitsu, he's a black belt. And he was talking French with them. And in my mind, he was inviting me to watch the event, the jiu-jitsu, but honestly, he was putting me to fight against another guy, a Tahitian guy, right? Exactly. So, for next year, we're going to try to bring, like, a people to do MMA, to do uh, jiu-jitsu here in Tahiti. Patrick is your guy. But take your guy here and come inside the cage. Yeah. I will, I will, I will. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. But it's such a pleasure to, to have you here. Uh, actually I was talking to Scott Dimension. It's it's different that the treatment that we have. We have the, the, the feed from that uh, uh, Tahitian TV channel. Right. This doesn't happen anywhere. On the YouTube channel. Thanks uh, to you. I, Right away, I'm saying 
text for TNTV and Patrick to hook me up with uh, the TNTV and allow us to do this live streaming and do the comments in English and Portuguese. Pessoal do Brasil, Patrick, vou rir. Patrick, ele roda a prova da Vodafone aqui. Essa prova da, 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 da Vodafone é uma das maiores provas de V6 do mundo. Tá? O Patrick ele botou esse time brasileiro para competir, é um time sul-americano, cinco brasileiros, quatro chilenos, estão remando na canoa da Shell, a canoa amarela, o Patrick abriu a porta da Shell para botar os brasileiros, um momento histórico para a canoagem brasileira, para a canoagem brasileira, Patrick, você está animado para o Brasil? Eu estou um pouco mais, eu posso adicionar se eu não estou errado, mas eu acho que você é o primeiro e talvez o último. As a, a, a South American team to, uh, to race on the old shell of our country. I was telling that to battle shell, like Brazil, country. Brazil is making it, like you saying how nice it was for you to provide the shell of our canoe. People in Brazil are going crazy. They don't, they, 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 they sit to sit in that canoe, it's like a city, like in a, in a, in a piece, piece of, of art, a piece of history. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's true, that's true. Thanks again, Patrick. Thanks uh, again. Hope we can be covering this race yes. next year. Uh, You're welcome. Always welcome. Thank you very thank you very much. Any help, anything, I'm with you. Please. Thank you, and Patrick. Guys. That's Patrick's name. A pleasure. Uh, the man. And the thanks, phone. everyone, to watch our race. And of course, all uh, South America are welcome to come. Come, come, right. come for next on year. We you heard it. see from people from Europe, Australia, in the uh, USA, South America, maybe a full team from Brazil next year racing the Vodafone race. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Thanks a lot. If you have anything, don't hesitate to ask, okay? Thank don't you, Patrick. Hesitate. Okay, guys? Okay. Thanks. See you later. Thank you. That's it, guys. That was Patrick Most, the owner of Vodafone, the organizer of this race. His, uh, his father is uh, on show, right? Uh, Scott? Yes. His father owns Shell. Yeah, his father owns, uh, Shell, and he was the one who was honored by uh, paddling in the fifth fifth seat of Shell in the Vodafone a couple of years ago. So, um, paddling clearly runs in the family, and uh, race organization runs in the family too. And so, uh, thanks to Patrick for uh, being such an amazing host to us, for being um, so helpful. And what um, he said, what he said, that like. Maybe it's the last time that someone sits in that canoe. Honestly, that that to me indicates that nobody else is going to sit in that canoe ever again. So uh, I want to I want to tell your friends from Brazil and, and Chile that they are really uh, fortunate to have had this opportunity because it's not just anyone that gets to sit in the, in the shell boat. You ought to be because you ain't going to sit, sit in that boat, brother. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Uh, well, Scott, I'm going to talk just a little bit, explain what uh, Patrick said in, in Portuguese. O pessoal do Brasil, esse foi o Patrick Smokes, ele é o dono da Vodafone, o filho do, do dono da Shell, que tem a Shell Vaan, e o Patrick, ele é o, o organizador dessa prova, e ele estava falando aqui, ele entendeu um pouquinho do que eu estava falando, que o Brasil estava fazendo, o Brasil e o Chile estavam fazendo um momento histórico aqui, sendo o primeiro time fora do Tahiti a estar tá, uh, participando dessa prova, mas não só isso, não só isso, ele disse que talvez seja o único time, o único time, os únicas nove pessoas que sentaram naquela canoa da Shell, não sendo do time da Shell. Então aí ó, o Fábio Valongo, Leonardo Pirozolo, o Gustavo Jacob, o André Kerbatin, o Robert Almeida Dias e os quatro chilenos aqui, o Juan Bostelman, Fernando Zegers, o Bruno Zalatar e o Matias Ortegas estão fazendo história nesse momento aqui, uh, remando essa canoa da, da Shell, a Shell, essa canoa amarela tradicional, que ele estava falando, é como estar tá sentado numa, 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 numa parte da história, numa parte da história da Shell, da história uh, taitiana, da história polinésia, de, quantos títulos aquela canoa uh, já venceu, Uh, e pô, tô, esses remadores aí, esses nove remadores tá participando dessa prova, dessa prova e, e, e competindo de igual, igual para igual com os taitianos aqui, uh, dividindo as águas de igual para igual com eles. 
e remando na canoagem. Está um momento histórico para a canoagem brasileira, não só para a canoagem brasileira, a, a, a Sul América, o Chile, a, momento histórico para o mundo inteiro. Scott, back to English, I was just explaining the historic moment and uh, the race is coming to an end. We have more and more teams coming back. We will hopefully going to see the Brazilian team uh, coming I'm sure soon. we're going to see them soon. There's such a powerful crew. Um, all of them competed in the Ito event last week and um, you know they showed that they were up to that challenge and, and clearly they're up to this challenge as well. Um, I think it's I think it's funny that uh, they were they were hopeful that the the shell boat was going to put them put them out front and I said probably you, can, you need to paddle it just a little bit. So they're really um, they're really going to be um, I think happy to come across this line no matter what place this is quite quite an effort on all the paddlers parts and I would say that uh, my hats off to all of our uh, Brazilian paddling friends and and uh, Chilean paddling friends and I agree with you next next year let's see if we can get a, a full Brazilian crew here and a full US team wouldn't that be something full US team I would like to, to would love to see like a, a team with like a Danny Chin or a, even an NAC strong team from NAC is got oh yes yeah no I think I, I feel like uh, we have exceptional paddlers in the United States who would do very well here NAC is a perfect example of a of a a club that has a, a strong tradition of, of outrigger paddling and this would be a, a, a fantastic uh, fantastic opportunity for them to really test their metal in, in mid Pacific waters The race is getting. Uh, how, I wonder how many more teams are gonna be arriving here. I don't know. As as we were interviewing Patrick there, I, I saw you know team after team come across, and you know, and each each of these teams has a huge smile on their face as they come across. You see the two buds from Mataya, the original Matahina, and a new Matahina right right next to it. Here we've got this amazing amazing I mean just take a look at these paddlers for a second they are they're still strong after 60 kilometers still strong and a hundred percent of the boats here is called uh, those are Matahinas uh, yes yeah it's a it's it's the class boat that's used here and so there's no other sort of unlimited class boat or or standard standard class boat like the Bradley or the Malola they, these are all Matahina and like uh, it's proving that there's a uh, all around uh, uh, conditions boat right it's a, but very very good for surfing specifically Seem, seems like a perfect boat for the open ocean <laughs> seems like a perfect boat to go up wind uh, I, I have to say today's performance shows exactly what this boat can do those boats are going to be performing also in the World Sprints, right? They will. That's right. World Sprints will be using the Matahina. Yeah. And, and in fact, more paddlers you... coming. This is uh, another... I wonder if this is a senior zone. Can we ha have the number of this boat? Or is it a veteran's man? We'll take a look in a second. I was going to say, if you go down the road... Um, down to Mataya, where Ari has its factory, you can see all the boats that are to be used in the World Sprints lined up in the in the yard there right now. There's about a dozen Matahina up on blocks, sitting there ready ready to be paddled. So uh, I don't I don't think Baptiste would mind if I took one. Do you? Right. No, me neither. <laughs> I don't think so. Baptiste, if you're listening, I'll be backing up my truck tonight, and. Um, <laughs> Just to, you know, once you get to number eleven, stop counting. For who people who doesn't know, Baptiste Baptiste Gosha is the owner of Ari Tahit, and he is the he owns the Matahina. He, the mold, he right? manufactures the Matahina. He's the yeah, an amazing uh, designer. Uh, yep. Those, uh, he has, like putting some good canoes. Uh, we saw like a good uh, performance of the Ari on the. Uh, the Aito. Absolutely. We saw the, the Mara and the Mako uh, taking top honors in a lot of classes. We There were at least uh, 
five of five of his performers on the podium. And as I said, Scott, it's always an all good boat, right? You have the team Absolutely. is like a team is winning like a first and second place right. on the Aito. Right, uh, right. Five, five, like five is always like a. Uh, uh, good boat, the Huri Tower. The Huri Tower is a good no boat. Such a thing. I always repeat, there's no such a thing like a better, uh, this boat is better than that. No. Um, both, all good boats, it's just a matter of you spending time on your boat and, and, and understanding uh, how your boat behaves. Learning your boat and, and um, if you've got the right boat for you, it doesn't matter if it's an Are, a Timi, a, a Fire, or a Te Huri Tower, or some other make, it's, it's whatever boat works for you. All right, Vicky. Nice. Thanks for the thanks for the shout out. It's nice to see your your name there. Victoria. Uh, I wonder if uh, we can bring some paddlers here for an interview. Uh, let me see if I can find our uh, uh, main reporter, Norman. To, uh, <laughs> I think Norman has has scampered off. I haven't seen him for a while, so. É isso aí pessoal do Brasil, uh, prova aí chegando no término aqui, a gente na ansiedade aguardando o time brasileiro, o time, o time sul-americano, corrigindo aí, me perdoa os chilenos aí, mas são cinco brasileiros, quatro chilenos, uh, Fábio Valongo, Leonardo Pirozolo, Gustavo Jacobi, André Gerbatim, Robert Almeida Dias, esses são os brasileiros, cinco brasileiros fazendo história, remando aí na canoa da Shell, Nessa prova da Vodafone, prova gigantesca, um, um, um curso, um percurso uh, com mais de 60 km, em umas condições de vento muito forte, um downwind muito forte para Moreia e a volta de Moreia para o Tahiti com um upwind brutal, brutal. Os brasileiros aí de parabéns, de parabéns por tá, caírem para dentro aí depois de terem o final de semana de Aito, da, de estar tá terminando Aito, que foram, esse, nesse ano Aito foram dois finais de semana, o pessoal vem aí bastante de, desgastado, já pula numa, numa, numa V6 aí e faz uma travessia dessa fenomenal, mas a experiência, a, a experiência que eles estão vivenciando aqui é, é um negócio, é um negócio fenomenal, é um negócio uh, que me dá vontade até de estar ali na água participando com eles aí. Momento histórico para a canoagem brasileira. Leandro Pirozolo aí, obrigado por estar participando aí, o irmão do Léo. Uh, sei que a mamãe dele também está aqui, a Fátima, uh, outros brasileiros aí que estão participando da transmissão desde o começo aí, o André Mota, uh, o William Jacob, o irmão, o irmão aí do, do Gustavo Jacob. Uh, mais pessoas aí, do irmão, irmão Carreta Pimentel, do André Prates, fenômeno aí da canoagem, Cauê Serra, Cauê Serra aí, não precisa nem explicação, um, um dos maiores nomes aí da canoagem, da canoagem brasileira aí da V1 no Brasil, entre outros aí, entre outras uh, pessoas participando. Agradeço desde já aí, pessoal, o, o suporte de vocês aí, a prova ainda não acabou, então... Se puder compartilhar esse link aí para o pessoal ver aí os brasileiros terminando essa prova aí. Vamos, vamos, vamos espalhar, vamos fazer um, uma corrente agora, vamos espalhar esse link aí, cada um para um, um mais, para a gente assistir o final da prova dos brasileiros e ver esses brasileiros aí fazendo história, cruzando a linha de chegada aqui. Momento histórico, pessoal, momento histórico, vamos participar. Scott, back to English, just like people in Brazil, just saying thanks. Uh, for them participating constantly here doing the comments. Absolutely. Thanks to thanks to all of our viewers, whether in the United States or Brazil or, or Europe or wherever you are, it's been a pleasure to to have you with us. It's been a pleasure to to be broadcasting this to you and um, as we see the competitors continue to come across the line, Tahitian Paddle just came across uh, uh, before them uh, Pire from at Stevie Boys Club right around the corner. <coughs> I mean, the thing about these races that I love is that, that people cheer for, for you no matter what place you're coming across. And in fact, the biggest cheer last week at Aito was for the last competitor. The, the person who came, 
in, imagine it's and it's not sort of the everybody gets a trophy mentality it's the you've struggled and you've shown that you're up to the struggle so that's the that's the whole notion of the Aito that's the whole notion of, of these races it's to test yourself against the elements and admittedly it's fantastic to win it's fantastic to make a podium but it's equally fantastic to uh to have accomplished something so momentous so momentous so so as we see these boats come across realize that even though they may be 10th 13th 15th 20th place that really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things what matters is that these people have tested themselves against the elements and they have they have overcome yeah it is our, i always usually say is this for me it's just more pleasure to be in the water with those athletes it's like sharing a basketball court with uh, lebron uh, lebron james yeah. uh, kobe bryant that's true michael jordan you know and they are simple people humble people they share the knowledge they they come to talk to you they open their house it yes. doesn't matter if it's if it's a stevie boy kevin CJ, those people like a, a accessible they accessible. want you to succeed exactly they, they want you to succeed they're happy when you're doing well at their sport because they love it so when you're on a wave with them and this is the coolest thing when you're actually surfing a wave and you've got you've got Tahitians or Reitans next to you on a wave they will be excited for you oh I experienced will, that there Scott I already been experiencing this yes so like they're they're just super happy to see that the, their sport is being adopted and and you know like Patrick says he's just excited that that you got an opportunity as an audience to participate in this we're very glad to have had you along with us the ride and we hope to make this ride happen again and again and again this is a, a, a terrific opportunity to to introduce the sport to a wider community across the world yeah and i was actually saying here now guys this is scott miller the new voice of the Vaha community that's your new guy here scott miller <laughs> actually i'm feeling like the old voice <laughs> of the Baja community. <laughs> People are going to say, who was the old voice? Yeah, who the, was the old voice? I don't know. I don't know. But I, I like this slogan for you, but okay, I'm going right. to say that forever now. Okay, my business card now says it's the new Scott voice. Miller, the new voice of the Baja community. I don't know about this. We need to work on this. All right. So anyway, as they come across, look, we you can see some of these crews, especially further back in the pack, they've put out tremendous effort. This looks like a junior crew coming across here. Hats off, gentlemen. This is a this is a tremendous experience for you. And here you have Patrick giving an interview for the with for Olivier the, at TNTV. Yeah, TV. The TNTV, Olivier. Olivier is the guy with the blue shirt who is providing this this feed for us. Uh, thank you, thank you for, uh, right away for the TNTV for give, doing this partnership with our Vibes, Black Dog Peddler for this live streaming of the. Vodafone Channel Race. We did this partnership with also the, uh, the Aito. We did. It was actually um, sort of my first opportunity to work with you and, and get an opportunity to work with TNTV and, and uh, it was an amazing experience. Uh, it's it's great to, to, to be in a chase boat behind, behind uh, competitors. It's great to be here with you and um, you know here at the finish line and watching these boats come across it's um, for those of you at home it's everything you imagine it would be it's it's uh, and, and more and much more so so start booking your tickets now and let me tell you something it was a great great surprise and it's been to share the, the, the this streaming with you man yeah. uh, let me tell you you're not running away <laughs> I don't care where you're going. You're not running away, bro. You're part of the Va Vibes team. Unfortunately, uh, you unfortunately, you know where I live. I know where you live. You're not running away, buddy. You're not running away. This is Scott Miller, the new voice of the Va community. So 100% Va Vibes. Yeah. Well, listen. I, I have to say thanks to Va Vibes Television, to Black Belt Paddler, to Andre here, who uh, who has uh, welcomed us into this. Um, to, to this what is this thing that we're doing here this is just it's remarkable so as we see as we see another team rolling across the finish well-deserved accolades people cheering on the sides sidelines it is I, I have to always say the the last hundred meters of these races is the hardest hundred meters 
Scott, you're gonna love this comment in Portuguese. You're a teacher, you work in a school, you, you, you deal with that. Leandro Pirozolo here, he's telling things. Um alô para os alunos do Colégio Paulo Freire, do professor Léo Pirozolo, South America. Aí um, um, um alô para vocês aí do Colégio Paulo Freire. O professor aí de vocês está representando o Brasil aqui no Tahiti, representando bonito a bandeira brasileira aqui, com orgulho a bandeira brasileira aqui no Tahiti. Uh, Scott, Leandro Pirozolo, who is the brother? Of Leo. Leo Pirozolo, who is the, in the canoe, you met Leo right, right. buying all the pedals in, in, yes. in Viper. <laughs> so he's saying here, Andre, please give a, a shout out for the his students from college or from school, Paulo oh, nice. Brady. Yeah, where Leo Pirozolo is a, a teacher. Prof over there. Professor, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. No one's going to mess around in his class. <laughs> pessoal aí, Colégio, uh, Colégio Paulo Freire. Um alô para vocês aí, um abraço, uh, saudações aqui do, do, diretamente do Tahiti. O professor Leozão aí está uh, junto, com, junto com o Fábio Valongo, junto com o Gustavo Jacobi e junto com o André Garbatin e mais quatro chilenos. Estão representando não, uh, não só a bandeira brasileira, mas a, a América do Sul. Looking at our, our finalists here, you see number six EDT was in fact the junior boat. So a junior boat came in sixth in this race. A junior boat. So um, if you're a junior paddler in the United States or in Brazil or in Portugal, uh, there you go. There's your there's your target, folks. That's that's the benchmark. So junior boat comes in sixth in this amazing 60 kilometer race. And you can see the wind has not abated. This bay is looking like a, a pot on boil. And uh, it's it's sort of remarkable to me that uh, they're looking as strong and as fresh as they, as they come across this line as they do. Yeah, as we were talking earlier, uh, to be here in the water and share the water with these people is such an amazing experience. But it's totally be, it's, you can do it, Scott. Yes, you, you can do you it. You don't need to be a high level no. paddler to be here, Bailey. That's what people, that's the main uh, message that I want to tell the people is, you don't need to be a world champion to be here paddling in Tahiti with these people. That's true, you know, that's you true. Don't, you don't need to be, uh, of course, if you, uh, you always want to increase your level, but you don't want to, you don't feel shy uh, of coming here, oh, I'm gonna be competing against Kevin CJ or Steven. No, eh, you can do it. Uh, it's an amazing race, an amazing experience, and you grow, and you're gonna grow, and you're gonna grow up as a paddler, not only as a paddler but as a person. It's true. It's true. Everyone is welcome on the water here in French Polynesia. Everyone is uh, is accepted, and like we were talking about earlier, if you if you have a love for their sport, they're going to want to share their sport with you. So it's it's incumbent on you to to take that step to make your way out here to experience Vaha in the place where it was born, and. Um, Hats off to the Tahitian people, to the French Polynesian people in general, and, and uh, I want to send a big shout out to them and, and thanks. It's been an amazing welcome again. Um, once you once you are friends with them here, you're family. Oh, you're family. You're family. It's like, uh, I don't know how many houses I slept those, those days, like changing houses. It's the true. People, oh, come here, come and sleep in my house. Come on, come here. It's, it's true. It's, it's true. incredible how, it's true. how they they open the doors of their house for you. The reception is amazing. You're not gonna find this type of reception uh, anywhere in another place. It's an amazing people. Um, everyone should be here enjoying it. It's the cultural aspect of the Vaha also attracts a lot because you're gonna learn about a lot of the, 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 the Polynesian culture, what is an amazing culture amazing culture like uh the polynesian the uh, uh hawaiians uh, the new zealand and uh, scott we're getting close to an end we see more and more canoes arriving it's true i, I keep the looking for team is coming it's team, yellow canoe. team south america i believe might be coming up to the finish right now let's I see i think maybe the team south america i want to Brasileiro. say Eu vou dizer o time brasileiro terminando a prova agora. 
com 4 horas, yep. com 5 horas e 21 minutos, time brasileiro aí, yep. uh, pô, a, a, a TV Taitiana não pegou essa imagem, eu vou tentar trazer eles aqui. Big applause for the Brazilians from the from the local crowd here. Um, um, um the, time brasileiro oh, look, there's the Chilean flag, the Brazilian flag the being flown. The Brazilian team just got the finish line right now. Pessoal do Brasil aí tenta trazer o entrar em contato com os remadores, se você tiver, para trazer os brasileiros aqui para dar um alô. Eu vou tentar trazer eles aqui para dar pra dar essa entrevista. O time brasileiro acabou de terminar a prova com 5 horas e 20, 21 minutos. Esse é um, é o, um, um replay do, do início da prova. A transmissão da TV Taitiana aí tá terminando, mas eu vou continuar aqui. Uh, na câmera, vou tentar trazer os brasileiros aqui para dar um alô antes da gente terminar essa transmissão. Scott, I'm gonna try to bring the Brazilians to before the, the, the transmission ends. Very good. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, bring them on up here. So, Team South America just crosses the line. They're very excited. You saw them flying the Brazilian flag, the Chilean flag. We're we're looking to get a couple of them up here. Uh, Andre is running like a nut to the boat. They need to get this boat up and out of the water, but they're very, ex very excited, and we're excited that that they have come across in such spectacular fashion. They look very strong as they cross the line. This is a an opportunity for everyone to uh, to come and paddle here, as Andre was saying before, and um, this team has shown in in true fashion what can what can happen here to people not from French Polynesia, and the reception of the crowd was in, incredibly warm. There were people applauding them all over. It was exciting uh, to see, exciting to see. I see Fabio Valango with the with the Brazilian flag as he's running up the beach, running running up the beach after 60 kilometers of, of paddling is is an impressive feat by any means. So. We're going to give him an opportunity to speak here in a second, and I'm going to leave you uh, with that. Hey Scott, we still here. We're going to change for the for the main camera here, and continue the, the streaming. The, the Tahitian TV just uh, end the, the the transmission, but we have a. A Brazilian for guy, Fabio Valongo, Fabio just Valongo. finished the race. Uh, pessoal do Brasil aí, a TV Taitiana terminou a transmissão. Uh, as últimas canoas terminando a prova aqui. Mas aí nós continuamos aqui com a minha câmera. Pra gente, não quero, eu não quero terminar essa transmissão sem trazer a nossa bandeira brasileira aqui para essa transmissão. O Brasil, América do Sul, Chile, fazendo história nessa, na, nessa prova. Fazendo história na volta, foi o primeiro time não polinésio a fazer parte dessa prova. O Fabinho está aí, um dos cinco remadores brasileiros que participaram dessa prova. E não só isso, uma das nove, um dos nove pessoas no mundo que sentou naquela canoa amarela da Shell. E eu tive um, uma reunião com o Patrick agora e falou que provavelmente são os únicos que vão remar naquela canoa. Está muito feliz. Fabinho, ó, um alô aí, dá um alô para a galera do Brasil que está te esperando. A família do Pirozolo tá aí, do Jacobi, tá todo mundo esperando vocês comentar sobre essa prova. Me fala aí o microfone é de vocês, irmão. Eu sei que eu, eu sei que eu, eu sei que o sentimento vem à flor da pele. Toma o teu momento aí, respira e compartilha essa energia com a galera do Brasil. Velho, é difícil saber. Acabamos de terminar a prova. Uma emoção, velho. Sinistro, vai porra. A galera estava muito focada, é, prova difícil demais, muito dura, mas ao mesmo tempo assim, tivemos um problema na saída, demos um rule chegando lá, na, lá em Moreia, mas nada abalou, a gente veio passando muita gente, a gente passou bastante canoa, foi, foi muito legal porque a gente teve uma prova de recuperação, a gente começou muito bem lá atrás, é, tava no barco, eu vi que a gente ficou atrás, eu não sei o que, que houve ainda, eu vou falar com eles, mas a gente saiu bem atrás, não foi uma largada boa. E quando a gente começou a fazer o surf, realmente muito espalhado, né? É difícil você até identificar, eu sei que foi o primeiro pelotão, meu irmão, foi embora, foi embora. Mas havia muita canoa perto. Então quando a gente chegou em Moreia, 
é, você não pode fazer troca lá dentro. Cara, tinha umas quatro canoas na frente, a gente buscou, buscou, passou as quatro, depois conseguiu passar mais duas ou três nesse contravento bizarro. Contravento muito forte, assim, é, lateral e contra, lateral e contra. A gente foi a favor e voltou nesse lateral e contra, cara, todo mundo exausto ali. Muita água na cara, muito sal, batida o tempo inteiro. Água na canoa demais, então, mas assim, te falar, qualquer, a todo momento que eu ia pro barco, eu gritava pra ele. Galera, vocês estão vendo onde vocês estão? Vocês estão no Taiti, cara, remando na canoa da Shelva. Não se esqueçam disso. Momento histórico. O tempo todo que eu pro barco eu falava isso pra ele. Falei, galera, vocês precisam entender, isso não tem igual, cara. A gente não vai ver isso, eu não, não sabia disso. Mas assim, pra mim, é a minha oportunidade, a oportunidade deles estarem ali. Se isso vai acontecer de novo... Meu irmão, pelo que o Patrick falou aí... Não naquela canoa. Não naquela canoa. Olha que, pô, que honra, cara. Isso é uma honra absurda, assim. É, eu que botou muito tempo no Vaal, vejo as coisas acontecendo, crescendo. Mas quando a gente chega aqui, que olha pra frente e vê essa quantidade de gente envolvida, é... Assim, a, a família tá aqui, os amigos, a cidade vive, a gente passava por, de, por lá atrás da cidade, você vem beirando a cidade, a ilha, né? Você vem beirando a ilha, a galera toda gritando, Brasil, Brasil! Pô, assim, dá, por isso que eu chego, chego, eu cheguei chorando aqui, porque, cara, foi, foi muito emocionante mesmo essa chegada. Falei até demais, eu falei, Robert, foi mal aí, eu falei até demais, que a gente tava num pega muito grande com uma canoa que tava atrás, chegamos, aí conseguimos manter ali... Mas, cara, assim, foi, assim, tá sendo uma... E tem, um prazer. Muito, e tem muita canoa ainda chegando, Fabinho. Muita canoa chegando. Eu não sei nem quando que a gente ficou, velho. Não Irmão, sei, mas... Não interessa o quanto não ficou, importa, o é, interessa, o que eu falo pra galera que tá na transmissão, o interesse é estar tá aqui. É isso aí. É exatamente. E é o, o que eu tava falando pro Scott, uh, em inglês pra ele, fala... A pessoa, o pessoal tem que ter essa consciência que é possível estar aqui. Não precisa ser o melhor remador do Não. mundo para estar aqui. Muito pelo contrário, muito pelo contrário. É importante que você venha até no começo da tua jornada na Bahá, já para cá, para tomar aquele entendimento é da isso. cultura. O choque de realidade da que a gente cultura, tomou. Da cultura, da cultura. E não, e não só lá que aprender a remar. Porque todo mundo sabe, meu irmão, se tu pega um remo e tu senta numa canoa, põe na água e a canoa tá indo pra frente, tu tá remando. É isso aí. O, o, o lance é a cultura que. O, 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 quanto, o quanto confortante é a, é a cultura taitiana quando eles a, te abraçam. Né? O cara, dono da Vodafone, Boa. abrir as portas da canoa da chão. Aquilo ali é como se estivesse sentando numa, numa obra de arte. É, é um momento histórico, ele estava pensando que é um momento da história, porque se você parar para pensar quantos títulos tem aquela canoa, o quanto aquela canoa já remou, e quanto aquela canoa já remou, quantos remadores já de sentaram nome ali. já sentaram ali, uhum. e só remadores a chão, da chão. ninguém senta naquela canoa, uhum. você está você aqui já há um bom tempo e você viu como eles tratam aquela uhum. canoa, como eles tratam as canoas, o respeito que ele tem pela canoa. Ah, ah, o respeito o... que eles têm pelo coach. Eu tô trazendo têm... mais brasileiros Pô. aqui, vou trazer o time brasileiro mais pra é. cá. Mas, Fabinho, eu vi que vocês tiveram um começo bem forte, bem forte. O Scott estava trazendo isso logo no começo, falando, André, o time brasileiro começou de uma maneira bem forte. E a gente não sabia porque que vocês tiveram esse problema durante a prova, uhum. o que é mais impressionante. Uhum. Aí, ó, galera, o Brasil é de chegada aí. Chega aí, Brasil. brasileiros, quatro remadores chilenos e meu irmão, de última hora caíram nessa matarrina aí e caíram numa condição de vento bravo, Ai, vamos, cabeças. bravo. Ai, vamos, cabeças. <risos> um surf <risos> pesado galera, como é que foi o surf como é que foi o upwind meu irmão, o, o, tele, o microfone de vocês <risos> Parece aqui que tem sua família, tá aí, ó. Tá aí, 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 né? Muito bom, valeu, galera, valeu, Brasil, galera, aí do Sofio Rui. André. Olha, 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 André. Valeu, galera.
vale, como o André falou, vale a pena vir. Vale a pena se jogar pro Tahiti. São três voos que vocês pegam, mas cara, eu vou te falar, você é muito bem recebido aqui. A gente precisa dar valor a essa cultura do Vaá aqui, ó, aqui. Porque, assim, a gente tem muito a crescer no Brasil com o Vaá, a gente tem muito a crescer no Chile com o Vaá. Então, assim, a gente está unido exatamente para passar, pra passar essa mensagem, galera. Passar a mensagem de que, pô, a gente consegue. A gente está aqui e a gente está aqui para aprender cada vez mais. A gente está aqui, pô, para poder unir esse vá todo que seja no Brasil, no Chile, no Tahiti, velho. Pô, obrigado, hein? Obrigado. Acredite nos seus sonhos. O vídeo que a gente via no YouTube, a gente estava dentro dele. A gente estava junto no barco, a gente estava junto na canoa. Muita emoção, muita emoção. E aí, ó, Fábio, ó, lembrando esses remadores aí, Fábio Valongo, Leonardo Pirozolo, Gustavo Jacob, André Gerbatin, Robert Almeida, quatro, quatro chilenos aí, o Juan Bosselman, Fernando Zegers, Bruno Zalatar e Matias Ortega. Agora a gente tem aqui, meu irmão, a muralha brasileira aqui, o Robert aí, top, top 100, top 10 da Deaito tá automaticamente qualificado para Super Aito, então aí patrocinador aí no Brasil, irmão vamos manter o cara aqui, remando no Tahiti para sair na porrada com os tahitianos Robert valeu André Satisfação. microfone é teu aí e aí galera pro virada demais tá maluco, surfou, eu surfou bastante hein? surfou muito, surfou muito que nem o Coelho falou realiza, realização de sonho o Zama Canu dos caras os caras gritando pra gente aqui no final, tava top demais. E é isso aí, vamos pra cima. Agora tem super hype. É o que eu tava falando aí, Robert, pro, pro, pra, pra galera no Brasil, galera no Chile. No... Isso é um. Eu tava com o Patrick aqui, ele veio aqui na transmissão. É um momento histórico pra canoagem mundial. É porque vocês são provavelmente os únicos nove remadores no mundo que sentaram e vão sentar naquela canoa. Aquela canoa não vai ser mais aberta para mais ninguém, Axel. Vocês têm o privilégio de sentar na canoa que tem múltiplos, múltiplos títulos ao, ao redor do mundo. É, vocês estão fazendo literalmente história na canoagem, na canoagem mundial hoje. É isso. Pô, foi herói demais. Virado. Gratidão. Só agradecer. Não tem mais nada para falar, não. Só agradecer. Chile. Ei, hey, Sena, shout out for, um, abre, uh, agora aqui um amigo de Chile, hablar um pouquinho espanhol para la, 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 las personas en Chile. Uh, Chile haciendo historia acá en la, en la comunidad de Leva A, pero que eh, se remaron una prueba tremenda, una tremenda dificultad tremenda eh, en, la, en la canoa de Shell. De, mira. Remar con tremendo deportista. Eh, tenemos también el campeón junior, eh, Bruno Slatan, octavo en el Teadito, eh, clasificado también al Superadito, se va a mantener acá hasta Samoa. Eh, y en Chile también está creciendo mucho el Baja. Eh, es un privilegio poder estar acá, es un honor poder compartir con tremendo, tremendo exponente, tanto de Tahiti como de Brasil y de otros países y de verdad sentimos la unión que el Tajoy que dicen acá que nos permite unirnos, ser uno, una palada siempre y estar ahí dándole con todo eh, fue muy emocionante, muy gratificante y esto es resultado de muchos años el va en Chile lleva 10 años y 10 años estamos cumpliendo un primer sueño un primer, una primera meta, llegar acá ya lo hicimos el 2018, estuvimos en Londres 2022, próximamente 2023 en Samoa y así vamos a seguir creciendo porque el Van Sudamérica está, está creciendo. Así que, haciendo historia, haciendo historia. Así que muchas gracias por todo, por el apoyo, por compartir con nosotros y darnos ánimo en todo momento. Gracias Galera, gracias Chile, gracias Brasil, vamos con todo, dale. Vá vibes na área aí, promovendo a cultura, a cultura da Vá no Brasil, a cultura da Vá no mundo aí, a galera aqui do Brasil, batendo palmas aí pra vocês aí, Scott Miller, Scott Miller representing the USA here, having fun with the Brazilian, ok, aí galera!
Vai, vai, Black Belt Pedra na área. Tamo junto, daí. And Scott, we're gonna end this transmission right now. Uh, enjoy this this vibe with those guys from Brazil. Such an amazing vibe, right? Uh, it was a pleasure to have you guys here. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, this is just the beginning. Pleasure. Thank you, Andre.